check, 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 check,
Bwyr da i chi gyd, y dynion sy'n cymryd y sylw i gyd y Penwythnos yma yn Stadiwm Principali tu'r rwndiau terfynol o'r pumed i'r Indigo Prem. Pob rwnd terfynol yn fyw i chi, yn un dechrau yn y bumed adran. Dinas Pawys yn erbyn blaen dilais. Good morning everybody, it's the men taking centre stage at Principality Stadium this weekend. All the finals from this Division 5 Cup final right to the Premiership Cup finalist. Dinas Pawys against seven sisters in the opening match of this marathon. Let's look at uh, the team, starting with Dinas Powers, Mitchell Jones, back from holiday, swiftly. Hooker, Justin Levy, and captain, uh, Mikey Jones, the other prop, uh, Ryan Mullins, Joe Lewis in the second row, Connor Coyle, Luke Cooksey, and uh, Owen Buckley in the back row. They're all where the backs, uh, Rhys Jones, Ben White, Andrew Zushnik in the centre, vice-captain, Iwan Davis, in the centre alongside him. The back three is Tom Stout, Kian Anderson, Matthew Williams. Arela the on the replacements, Blake Powell, Shane Broad, Gavin Fish, Brett Jewell, David Lloyd, Nicky Coles, Joe Davis. There might be another one added to Dean Aspowis. Our team are at the round of an all blind delight. Let's have a look at seven sisters. Jamie Rowley, Jordan McKay, Jordan Roderick in the front row. Vice-captain Craig Kendall alongside Alan Hopkins. Premiership experience there. Hugh Whitey, Jamie Elkins and Kai Smith in the back row. Our all wear the backs for seven sisters. Tavis Noyle, heard of him before? Anthony Llewellyn, half-backs, the centres, Ben Atkins, Captain Kyle Davis, 356 appearance for seven sisters. Geraint Edwards, Daniel Norton and Tom Norton, cousins, in the back three. Are right, the only blind delights that are the uh, placements for seven sisters. Craig Howell, David Tapping, Mike Smith, Cameron Thomas, Ricky Mitchell, Gavin Hooper, Daniel Challenger, Yayan Eltham. Blind delights, seven sisters. Yep, Burada, good morning. Everybody watching this one is the early kickoff of a marathon of a day. Owen alongside me and Adam, you know, this is going to be a long day, but it's a day, it's such a rewarding day, Ad, for what you working with the union, the community game, Div 5, right up to 2, fantastic. Yeah, more than all, it's, uh, it's a fantastic event. I mean, all the, throughout the whole road to Principality, whether you're 11 years old, I've seen a couple of 41-year-olds on the team sheet there. It's the same twinkle in their eye walking up those tunnel, walking down the tunnel and walking up the steps. So it's uh, it's a credit to everyone involved, and, and we just hope that everyone participating takes something special with them for the rest of their lives from this. Yeah, you can see the cap there, and that's what they've all been thinking of all week, uh, I'm sure. Um, and many of these players have been playing for the club since they were in the junior, six years old, eight year old, um, and you know, representing your town, your village. It means the world to these guys, and you know, starting with Dennis Powers, seven sisters, finishing with the Division Two final of Llanharan against Porth Cow. It's going to be a long day, a lot of rugby, but I'm sure it's going to be enjoyable for all. Eti Moyd and Domas, Arivais iconic of Principality. On the teams come to this iconic pitch at Principality. Roof is shut because, if you haven't realised, it's been raining in Wales quite a lot. Dinas Powys against Seven Sisters, two teams that have taken the plunge going from Div 1 down to Div 5 a couple of seasons ago to restructure, to rebuild. It happens in every rugby club, in every walk of life. Talent comes through, disappears, then comes again. And that's what it's all about today for these two clubs. Kyle Davis, ball in hand. Very good story. He's the brother and Lord of Tavis Noyle. And you can only marry my sister, he said, if you promise to come and play for seven for one season. And he stuck to his word. Here we go then. Division 5 Cup Final. Seven sisters kick off. Dinas Powis on the charge. Boom! What a carry from Mikey Jones. Two teams, East Central, Adinas Powys, West Central, a Seven Sisters. Back there is the Seven Sisters, number eight, Jamie Elkins. 
I think he was, he was looking for a penalty, wasn't he? The number eight, uh, Jamie Elkin, trying to place it into, was it the 14, Matthew Williams on the floor? <laughs> That's the first carry of Mikey Jones. Well, he's got number three on his back as uh, Joshton Levy. Thanks, Adam. Adam Taylor just pointed out that there's two number threes in the team. I'm only aware because I've been on the other end of a couple of them stormers <laughs> over the last couple of years, so... First line out pinched. Here comes seven. Option to put one up from Anthony Llewellyn. Chasing his own kick. Good take by Rhys Jones, the Dinas Powys scrum half. What are you expecting, Adam, from Dinas Powys? You know, they, they were right up there. What kind of game? They've got boys coming back, local boys playing. Slightly younger, I would say, than, than Seven Sisters. But what kind of style are you expecting? I think they're going to be a physical side. I think they're very abrasive. They've got some very big ball carriers. I mean, Josh Dunleavy set the tone there straight out of the blocks, and I think there's going to be a few more of them throughout the day. So I imagine they're going to want to keep it tight. They've got a couple of flair players out wide. I know the name Ben White. I've seen him a few times over the years. He's got a bit about him. So they've got that option, but I think their uh, their, their pack will, will look to do a lot of damage today. Yeah, Sam Sisters not holding back in defence, flying forward. But there are numbers out wide here for this Powis. Slightly isolated at break drown. Yeah, the man in the middle. Terry Dixon. There's another big carry as well from uh, Joe Lewis wearing five for Dinas Powis. Just got a bit messy, and I think it will be centre field scrum for Seven Sisters. You mentioned Tris, both teams in different divisions. Dinas Powis in five East Central, uh, Seven Sisters in five West Central, both top of the league. Dinas Powis unbeaten. Seven St Sisters with only one blotch to their name, so they're used to winning, aren't they, throughout the season. Right, usually someone has to lose in the final. Good scrum from uh, Seven Sisters, picking Jamie Elkins. Support just needs to get there. Noyle made his debut for Wales, that principality against Argentina. Now he's in the, the black and green. Oh, oh good off floor off the four. Noyle back inside. Here comes Seven Sisters. Geraint Edwards with that carry. Noyle back on his feet. Looking to see if there's gaps in midfield. Here comes Ben Atkins. Oh, super tackle. Good offload from the floor. Really open at the moment. Tavis Noyle with a carry. Still seems a bit strange saying Tavis Noyle playing for, for Seven Sisters, but they're on the attack. Oh! Almost an interception. And I think... The intercept was by Kian Anderson, but he also made the try saving tackle, getting back to his feet, getting back to into that defensive line. As we see Atkins with the break, chopped down, bump. Textbook tackle. Adam, if you're coaching rugby, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll have that uh, all day. But no, that was a good start. You mentioned Tavis Noel earlier, and he's already been everywhere in the opening few stages, to be fair. So I think it's uh, it could be a, uh, a good afternoon for him at the moment. He's got a fresh hairstyle as well from the last time I saw him. A little ponytail going on. But he's showing his physical ability, isn't he, Tavis? Ready to carry the ball. Showing some lovely touches. Am I correct in recalling one of the few who've played for all, the all regions. Welsh regions? Yeah, 11 caps for Wales as well, and this is what you don't want to see. An injury, an early injury. It's a big, big day. There's just minutes on there, and there's a replacement already for Dinas Powys. Bring you the information of who's gone off and who's coming on. It's because the classic shirt swap. Community rugby at his finest yeah. there as well, even on the bigger stage. Is it potentially Kian Anderson, the full-back, who's gone to, into a... No. He's drifting out wide, so it's one of the wide backs.
Good scrum for Sem Sisters again. They want to keep it in there. They have a penalty. They want to march this one over. Or do they want to carry it over? Oh! Jamie Elkins decided to pick. He's driven back. Maybe should have kept it in there. But they still have a penalty advantage. Jordan Roderick with a carry. Noyle had to change. No one else was there. Good carry by Jamie Rowley. Any space is opening up. Here comes the captain. Physical is Kyle Davis. Noyle. Tickle in. Pops it. Solid defence by Dinas Powis at the moment. Any white line fever? Not really. Here with the... Just short. A metre out our seven sisters. To Willen. Through the hands they go. As their numbers. Oh, Captain Davis on the outside. Looking to get into the corner. It's a thumbs up from Jeff Williams. The assistant referee, the captain, crosses for seven sisters. I'm the Hrea, the Gamni, with the call. Our captain, Drusto the Makai Skintab. He blind delights. What a finish by oh, Kyle Davis. That's a lovely step by Kyle Davis. Stands his man up. No chance for Matthew Williams on the outside. But I was thinking. Seven Sisters had to score, considering the scrum, they could have carried that on for potentially a try or a penalty try and maybe a bad option by Jamie Elkins to go himself. But that said, they've carried on the continuity, the multi-phase, and they've created a space out wide. Uh, they would have been very disappointed if they had come away with nothing. Well, a try, never mind three points there. You mentioned Jamie Elkins, he's gone way too high there and he's just got put back. But fair play to Dennis Powers, that was some very, very good defending, some big shots going in as well. So they, uh, the, it's going to be a, a, a very physical battle, you think. Yeah, and some sisters early on showing their scrum dominance. Conversion to come then for Anthony Llewellyn. 34-year-old, 242 appearances for Seven Sisters. Right-footed, struck it well, struck it well. Has he got the distance? Yes, he has. He knew it. Went for the tee early. Seven Sisters lead, seven points to nothing against Dinas Powis. Again. It's all about standing the man up. Matthew Williams would be so disappointed. He had two men outside him, so he just needed to take the space on the on the outside, trust the inside defence. So the news for Dinas Powis, they've lost Ben White, their outside half. Pivotal position, of course. And another bit of a double whammy there, because they were offside as well from the restart. It happens all the time. But... It rarely gets picked up, but who's come on is Nicky Coles. Due to be wearing 22, but he swapped the number 10 shirt. You want the number 10 shirt, and you're back, of course. But it's a big loss to lose your outside half early, Adam. Yes, especially someone of his quality as well. Um, he's an excellent player, so for him to go off such an early stage, it's, um, it's going to be a big blow for Dinas. Yeah, Nicky Coles. Part-time local fireman, and he's the uh, the club model as well. He's the uh, one usually sporting the kit on the websites. Well, they're under pressure at scrum time. I didn't really expect to see this, but uh, Sam Sisters completely dominating. But it's a knock-on at the base from Elkins, and it could work out very well for Sam Sisters. Here come Dinas Powis, the captain again, Dunleavy. Penalty taken quickly and away he goes. Reese Jones looking for support. Numbers out wide. Kian Anderson, long ball. Did he need that one? Good tackle from Daniel Norton. Ball shoots out. I think Kian Anderson might have stepped in to the 10 position. That was the forwards carrying Mitchell Jones. Yeah, better by Dinas Powers, allowing himself to settle into this uh, contest. It's turned over, but illegally. So it could be a, a, an easy early shot at post just to get something on the board. Well, who's kicking a goal now? Because Ben White would have been kicking potentially. Yeah, really more about Coles. Uh, completed the Ironman last year, so he's fit as a fiddle. 
So he's uh, got plenty of legs in the tank to sustain the 80 minutes. Well, he is kicking a goal thanks to this penalty. Just a little bit too slow getting out of the way. Jordan Roderick penalised. Well, he's a big man. It takes a while for him to move. It's somewhat fortunate, Dennis, to be in this position as well, considering the scrum on the halfway as well. Jamie Rowley uh, at his opposite number, Mikey Jones, fairly comfortably there and was coming through with uh, considerable weight. But they were a bit lucky, fortunate, and now they've got three points on the board. They have indeed got three points, thanks to replacement Nicky Coles. He is wearing the number 10 shirt because they lost Ben White. And as Adam Taylor alongside me said, lucky to get... Uh, the three points there but they will take them but they know they're under pressure at scrum time Jamie Rowley Jordan McKay and Jordan Roderick in the seven sisters front row doing some sterling work long restart and Dinas Powis won a play Dunleavy opens it up It's always a risk. They're out of the 22 now. They'll have to keep the ball alive. They're quite happy doing that. And numbers if they get the ball wide. Yeah, there could be space either side here. Messi at that breakdown. And the pressure is Reese Jones. It's always good, Adam, isn't it? You know. Well, I'll watch what they're going to do first, Dinas, because oh. they want to get a little bit isolated there. It's getting a bit risky now, isn't it? Playing maybe sensible rugby. There could be a boot to ball just to relieve some pr pressure. I'll wait for some dead time to you ask you a question. Well, they've got the penalty. An infringement there. So uh, an opportunity for this powers to clear their lines yeah fair play I, again I thought the kick should have come a, a, a fairly sooner uh, than the penalty come to be honest you you don't want to let the occasion get to you I, I suppose on something like this because at the end of the day it is still just a, a game of rugby um, albeit on the uh, the best stadium in the world but it's uh, it's something they probably maybe need to be a little bit mindful of because you don't want to uh, one simple mistake could cost them dearly as well and then like you say another try that's 14 points to three through something they could have uh, easily resolved yeah. Sometimes you just know, don't need to play that much rugby. But well, they have got a penalty. What advantage is that? They have got possession in the line out. Dunleavy finds his target. And here they come again. They certainly want to play. Oh, it's a high tackle in there. Has the referee seen it? Well, there will be communication, hopefully. Wasn't malicious. It's a little bit of a stray arm. Yeah, maybe the the comms not quite functioning between the uh, refereeing trio. What the Sem sisters need to be careful of is their breakdown work. Just a little bit slow getting away. Ooh, is he onside? <laughs> the answer was simply no, he wasn't. But well collected there. Seven being put under pressure. And they get the penalty and Tavis Noyle doesn't want to mess around. Noyle on a break, on his own, needs support. Still got a bit of pace, hasn't he? To get away behind that first line defence. Llewellyn into midfield. Elkins with a good step and an offload. Finds his winger. One more pass. Edwards, oh, gets it away, but it's intercepted. It's all action in this Div 5 Cup final as Coles clears and finds the security of the touchline. A definite chance for Seven Sisters. Lovely break by Jamie Elkins. There was, oh. there was no need for Edwards, though. If I was Seven Sisters coach, I'd be cursing him at the moment. For just keep hold of that ball there, set up and go again. Yeah, you don't have to score from the first initial slice of the defence, do you? You can just regroup, get your numbers around the ball and go again. That Dinas Powis defence, where our sixes and sounds just scrambling for their lives. And probably that offload saved the day for them. A bit of treatment for the captain, Kyle Davis. He's taking a knock. He's a tough cookie. Don't want to mess with Kyle Davis. He's getting some treatment to the, to the ribs. I don't think he's going anywhere. 
And there's Adidas World Cups, the classic boots. Yeah, maybe they're discussing what they saw there and if they can hear each other. Terry Dixon and uh, Khalid Falvi just having a chat there. Make sure that comms is clear. And I think I could see him talk to Dina Spouse. I might have missed the high tackle there, but comms wasn't quite working. Um, seven getting away with one. That's a great thing about rugby. I mean, the referee goes over, grabs a bottle of water from Sam, cheers. You know, as long as they... Refs get thirsty as well, Reese, don't they, as yeah. well? <laughs> yeah, well, they sometimes do more running than anybody. Good, Good line ball. out. So Will in, looking for runners. Finds the tight head, Jordan Roderick. What's the big man doing in midfield? So Will in, looking for options. Finds Geraint Edwards again. Scrappy at the breakdown. That's Hopkins with another carry. Everybody happy ball in hand for both teams. And he loves a bit of it, this Jordan Roderick. Big trundle. Gap starting oh. to appear. Just bringing Llewell in onto the ball. And he's quick at the base. That's one thing that you will get, but just dips at the feet of... Ben Atkins. Well, yeah, the pass just just dies a little bit, doesn't he? On uh, on Atkins, and that's the good thing, or what I enjoy, I should say, about these cup finals or division five, four, three, two, all the way up. They there's there are mismatches, aren't there, in terms of size and stature? You can get the big men running on the smaller guys. It's just working those opportunities compared to the professional game where, where everybody's a beast. Yeah, very much right there, uh, Owen. I think looking at the, uh, through the, the ref cam that we've just seen, the Seven Sisters front row are very much in the uh, traditional mould, I would say, a front row forward. So, <laughs> very, uh, very well put. So uh, I think, like you say, they, and you can see how Jordan Roderick especially has done some damage early on. Here comes Coles out wide. Ball over the touchline, but whose ball is that going to be? Which way? Yeah, they're supposed to be careful that they don't overplay from their own 22. They seemingly, their first option, their first mindset is run it, run it, run it. And then when they're not on, kick it. But sometimes just kick it could be the best option. Fairly young, really, front row. Four or seven sisters. Jamie Rowley, 30. Jordan McKay, 22. And uh, Jordan Roderick, Shambo, is 35 years young. Oh, something went amiss there. And Dinas Bowers <laughs> have the ball back. Yeah, thanks to Sam Sisters boots. There you are, boys. Have that one. Kean Anderson won that ball back. And again, they want to play. Oh, nice. Ball over the top. Yeah, high, high again. Just a little bit too high from Captain Kyle Davis. That's the laws now, isn't it? You know, this it's it's got to be below that kind of chest line, below the kind of sternum. No excuse, really, to be drifting up anywhere near where this one was done. Yeah, just over the shoulder. It's good to see the assistant notice that straight away, so there was no issue with this one. Yeah, the best poets are settling, haven't they? After that early score, got the three points back now in the Sam Sisters half. They haven't panicked. There he is, Justin Levy, wearing three, the hooker and captain of Dinas Powis. And they fancy a trundle. Can they get this driving line not organised? They've worked it, they need to keep it straight. Is this ball coming back? Could get lost in there, oh, and it has. Good work by uh, Seven Sisters. Holding that one up, they'll get the put in at the scrum, and I think I know what's coming. Yeah, they, they begin it well, they try to work the ball to the back, and this snakes, doesn't it? You know, it's difficult to see why they've lost the ball. It just doesn't work back, the ball has been... A hand must have been in there just to hold it at the front, and that's why they couldn't get the rolling ball going. They just couldn't 
secure possession. But looking at the results, Rhys, um, well, the team to get here, Dines Powis uh, got past Girling in round one, Mould, the second team from North Wales, 48-0. Then Bethesda, second team in the quarterfinals, Rigos, 24-13 win. And a tight one against Cwmturch in the semi-final, 29-28. Yeah, a per and low welcome to play the two of them. <laughs> and steal one of Clive Rowlands. His jokes there. Oh, Max Boyce, take your pick. Tavis Noyle at the base. What will he bring, Adam, to to Sam Sisters? What well, you know, he's an international. Uh, you can see his quality is is evidently on show. But you just think having someone like that around training. Uh, in post-game environments as well. I bet he's good in a social, but it's just having someone of a good character like that. It's only going to bring all of these young players and old players alike on. Good hands, well played. Oh, it's on here. All dependent on the boy bounce. Noyle is there, hasn't gone forward. This is going to be Dinas Powis taking the lead through Rhys Jones, the scrum half. Is there a little chat before the try is awarded? No problems. Says the assistant referee Jeff Williams and Terry Dixon has his arm in the air. Dinas Powis just like that at a head in this Div 5 Cup final. Well, from the kick here, I thought it was offside and Dinas Powis should have had a penalty, but they work it well out wide and superb hands here. The show the go, one handed take was it by Matthew Williams, an intelligent kick inside, and it was all down to the bounce of a rugby ball. I was going to say, just put the commentator's curse on Tavis Doyle. <laughs> praise, it, was, it was a terrible box. Pra <laughs> praise it in two seconds, but I, I don't think we can blame him considering the bounce of the ball there. No, but it was his box kick, wasn't it? <laughs> he was under pressure, but he, he skied it. Conversion by uh, number 15, Kian Anderson. So, uh, Dinas Powis now lead. Seven sisters, ten points to seven. As we see the try again. Anderson heavily involved. It's a good little nudge, that one from Matthew Williams. And the rugby ball bounces in many different ways. This time to the hands of scrum half Rhys Jones. I know Dennis have tried to have a, a real go, I mean, but they've never really looked threatened. I, I, it's fair to say the, the points that they've had have come from seven mistakes, really. So they're fairly lucky to be in front at the moment. Yeah, well, they've got a bit of momentum, but Sam Sisters have pinched that one, but... Slow again to roll from the base. Penalised was uh, second row, Alec Hopkins. Yeah, that, that's costing Sam Sisters a little bit as well, a little bit of ill-discipline at, at ruck time. Good touch finder as well. And Dinas Powis, all right where they want to be. Yeah, easy exits now, aren't they? You, you get a penalty, you win 20, 30, 40 metres, and all of a sudden, you're in an attacking position. And the big runners in the midfield waiting as well. Well, it wasn't exactly as planned, but they have got the ball. But is it coming back? Yes, it is, slowly, for Dinas Powis. Oh. oh, not gone in midfield. What now? Will Seven Sisters look to do? Decide to clear the lines. And a good clearance as well. But was that pass back? Yes, it was. Pass back into the 22. Just little errors. Four Seven Sisters gifting territory to Dinas Powis. And that's maybe an example of difference in philosophies of the sides. With Dinas Powers, I'm sure, on that turnover, they'd have carried, they'd have run, and they'd have gone wide and they'd have attacked. Where Sam Sisters look to um, to kick first thought. And, yeah. Well, it, wa it wasn't actually pass back in there. It was, it was a little kick, wasn't it? An accidental kick. So, a bit of a tricky one. I'll ask Adam Taylor. He knows more about the laws of the game than me. I'm just going to ring our referees department just to find out anyway. <laughs> But no, they, I think they could consider themselves a bit fortunate there, but it hasn't really made a difference because they've lost the line-out. Yeah, doing well. Seven sisters are picking the Dinas Powers line-out at the moment. A little bit infield from Tavis Noyle, that one. Good take by uh, Matthew Williams. 
Jones quickly to the base. Looking for gaps, looking for runners. Oh, Llewellyn did well to scrag him there. Still on here. They hold their depth. Oh, big hit, big shot. Good tackle from Ben Atkins there. Again, Dinas Powis are trying to play some rugby. Could be a shout for Nos offside in midfield, maybe. Dunleavy with a carry. Straight through the middle goes Jones. Llewellyn. Yeah, and they were offside. A wine using his uh, old former referee's hat there, picking that one. Solid hit by Ben Atkins in midfield. Well, there is a decision to be made here. And Dinas not electing to go for the post. Maybe not quite have the distance in in their armory. Decide to go for the corner and keep the pressure on Sem Sisters. But for Dinas, it's securing possession. That seems to be the issue now from set piece. Scrum time, they're under a bit of pressure. Line now, they've lost the last two or three maybe. Yeah, it's all good getting in these good positions, but they need to do something with it. I mean, they lost one a few minutes ago in an identical position on the other side of the pitch. So you hope that they're uh, they're going to be more uh, prolific with this one. Well, they're brave. And it comes off, throw to the back. What have they got planned? Behind the scrum, get the ball wide. Left winger. Oh. Ball back in field. Has that gone forward from Tom Stout? That ball back inside. I think it was Matthew Williams on his inside. But they're finding gaps at Dinas Powis. Yeah, simple backline move, really, isn't it? Works uh, the winger, Tom Stout, into space. It's a poor tackle attempt by Daniel Norton, must be said. And Matthew Williams should have, could have, maybe done better with that one. Well, definitely a chance gone for Dinas Powis. They started the game very well, but then it was all seven sisters. But momentum has switched. Thanks to a little bit of ill-discipline. One kick out on the full, and it's now Sam Sisters has turned to be under a bit of pressure. Their scrum has been dominant. That'll be a reset. If you're Tavis Noel or Anthony Llewellyn at 9 and 10 for seven year, you're asking that front row to really do a job. You try and nick a penalty and relieve that pressure. That's where the action's at. This is ref cam. Brings you a, a bird's eye view of what happens in the front row. Don't try and understand what happens there. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Have a cut, boys. But I think the, the front row, Sam says, to try to get some pressure going, but those uh, cogs not turning. Yeah, they, they elect to carry. Create a better platform for uh, Tavis Noyle. To find Llewellyn. And Llewellyn clears, but... But, but it is a question, look at Rowley, McKay and Roderick. Big guys carrying a bit of tin. You know, it's, it's easy maybe in the first 10 minutes to, to get those scrums wheeling forward. But, you know, 30 minutes into this contest now, maybe that energy isn't quite at the levels they were. And especially at the, the pace that Dennis want to play as well. It's, it's only naturally that's going to take it out of them. So could see a, uh, a, a bit of a change in fortunes for both front rows. Another line-up one for Dinas Powis. And you get a feeling that if they get possession, they are going to be dangerous. It was Ryan Mullins there up in the line-out. And here they come. Miss tackle in midfield by captain Kyle Davis. And Mikey Jones is hanging out wide in the left wing here. The uh, tight head prop. Was it Dunleavy? Yeah. Two number threes. It wasn't me, ref. It was the other one. <laughs> Ryan Mullins with another carry. But it's back again. Ill discipline, costing. Reese Jones, will he decide to take this one quickly? Or will they pop this one in the corner? Because their line out has sort of worked themselves out again. Same penalty, I think. Just slowly to move away from the base of the ruck. And they don't want to risk the line out, do they? Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised here. Are they going to run it? It's become more and more wet with the tap penalty closer to the line, maybe further than you'd you'd wish. Don't leave the oh, oh, flat ball. Shawillin has read that one well. Has he got the wheels? I don't think he has. 
He could have put boot the ball there, but elected to carry. The arm is out. And is there a penalty here? He has knocked on on the no, floor. Just isn't knocked it? on. But Anthony Llewellyn just asking the seven faithful, the blind delights massive, to get involved. Adam, should he have put boot the ball there? Possibly. You see the strapping on him. It didn't look like he was going to make it from uh, 90 metres out. He read it like a book, fair play to him, but maybe he should have just relieved that pressure again by just putting his foot on it. Yeah, decent scramble defence by Dinas. Four shirts surrounding him. And I think it's Luke Cooksey on the far side receiving some treatment in the number eight. He's uh, been a prolific ball carrier in the opening, what, 35 minutes or so. Maybe half an hour, not as much as 35 gone. Yeah, Ryan Malin's getting some treatment there in the blue head guard. He's uh, grown into the game. Big ball carrier. For Dinas Powis, but it is going to be a Dinas Powis scrum. I'm talking about Mullins, reading about him. He lives in London. That's a heck of a commute back to training. <laughs> well, it's Tuesday night anyway. Big oh, scrum. Man. There's the power again of, of Blind Delice. Seven sisters and Tavis Noyle wastes no time again. Looks for a runner, finds Ben Atkins. Noyle quick to the base. Here comes Jordan Roderick again. Offload to Willin. Swift hands. Get it to the wing to Geraint Edwards. Does well there in heavy traffic. Noyle looking for runners. Jamie Rowley. Noyle. Oh, that's gone forward. And knowing Dinas Powers, they will want to play. No advantage. I it could be a penalty for a tackle off the ball. Um, but back to Tavis Noel's quick tap. I'm starting to question. I know he won't maybe wants to spark his team into a bit of life. But considering they've got the superiority in the pack, maybe, in set piece, maybe they need to grind it down, put it in the corner and suck the energy out of this bland, uh, of this. Uh, Powers pack. He's spot on there, though. You just saw from the last scrum again, they got, got right on top again. So you want to utilise those big boys, right, slow it right down and, and play to their own strengths. Um, they're, they're three points behind as well. So, like you say, whilst they're still chasing the game, there's still plenty of time left. Must be a tactic employed by the coaching team. And it's uh, two, two teams here wanting to play a lot of rugby. Sem Sisters looking to squeeze a penalty, but they don't get it. And here come Dinas Powis. Playing out of the 22 again. Scragged his Jones at the base. Yeah, showing plenty of adventure. <laughs> yeah, but very risky. My heart is in my mouth and just on their behalf. Underneath that one, Daniel Norton under a lot of pressure. I think it's a high tackle. Kyle Davis, Sam Sisters captain, getting involved as well. Would be a referee. But we do want more referees, Adam, that's for certain. You know, we want to get them involved in the game. Chance to get to this kind of of day in your career as a referee 100 percent. there's some fantastic opportunities for our officials now i mean you you just look at some of our guys on the six, six nations circuit i know amber stamp dunston uh, one of our female referees is going to be doing the six nations game there's, there's so many opportunities and it's um it's 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 a great uh, a great thing to take up yeah the community game needs to remember that how important referees are Target found, just about. Arlen Hopkins has it for Seven Sisters, gets it to the deck. The front row union combine. Roderick and Rowley, Llewellyn, ball back inside to Elkins. Five metres out of Seven Sisters. Llewellyn carries himself. Noyle. Now they need the big man. This is where they can squeeze the game. They got a penalty advantage. Dinas Powis. Slow to roll away, Tavis Noyle, a bit of white line fever from Tavis. But seven are over, 
and it's the hooker, Jordan McKay. And he can celebrate, can the youngster? I've heard a story about him. He was down the rubbish dump. Kyle Davis, the captain, heard about him, went to talk to him, said, come and play for us, and look at him now, scoring at Principality for seven sisters. And they are back ahead. You mentioned playing to your strengths, and that was absolutely spot on there. Short ball, big boys, it's tough to stop when they're coming at pace. Yes, Sam Sisters back ahead. It's a, a seesaw battle on the scoreboard. But with half time slowly approaching. Anti Llewellyn could put his side four points ahead. Slots it. Yeah. Llewellyn has looked composed at 10. An old head on a rather gammy left knee. Dinas Powis, dig blind delight in dig pedwari we who you're in a hander can tava ma and game a go red gusted lay all down Dinas 10 7 14 late in this first half very competitive very good division five cup final long restart Elkins underneath it could do with getting a little bit lower in contact but his work rate is tremendous Noyal, long box kick. Dunleavy after this one. Decides to pass. Very unlike him. Reese Jones back on his inside. Yeah, it wasn't the best kick chase by Sam Sisters. Karen Edwards, only one chasing hard. Numbers again out wide for Dinas Powis. Long ball. That has gone forward. Just off the left mid there. Could have been Nicky Coles, I'm not entirely sure. But that's the risk you take, isn't it? Yeah, but again, being critical of Dinas Powers this time. If, how many times, Adam, they've thrown long passes, cutting everybody out? Use the hands, just hold a bit of depth. The space is there. They, they're identifying the space well out wide. It's just not utilising their numbers. I, I think you, you answered your question yourself there. No, I think it's it's very flat in our midfield as well. So it's it's going to be tough to sort of get any sort of momentum. And I think that's why they're looking, uh, these, these midfielders looking to go wide sort of at the early opportunity. And unfortunately, it's not paying off. What you see in the in the pro game, Adam, maybe is that cross field kick a lot. We haven't seen any of those yet, but definitely Dinas Powers are finding gaps out wide in the Sam Sisters' defence. Yeah, definitely. And it seems as though it could just be a matter of time because they they, they seem to be their own worst enemies. I mean, they're, they're definitely going for a credit to Dinas. They are they're running it from all, every part of the greater uh, sorry, excuse me, every blade of grass on the pitch. But it's bound to come off sooner rather than later. You think? Tavis Noyle goes down on this side and we'll have to reset that one and I think Sam Sisters will be happy to see it reset yeah I think they want to work penalties from these strums if they can good to see props filling their shirts Sandy Cruin there is As long as they're not made in China or Taiwan, they don't understand the shapes of props there sometimes. Noyle, Llewellyn. Captain Davis in midfield offloads to Noyle. Noyle with a kick, turning the Dinas Powers back three. Tom Stout back there. He wants to play. Great hands to get it out of there. Cools with a clearance midfield. Llewellyn underneath this one. Opens it up to Daniel Norton. Norton looking for a 50-22 and if he gets the run of the ball, he will have it. And that's better by Seven Sisters. Tavis Noyle, I think he started in a standard game, isn't he? He's maybe been guilty early on of trying too much himself, but running with the ball and carrying. But that all started from Tavis Noyle's kick, finding some space and then creating the space for the second kick, as it were. Yeah, it was definitely the right option. And talking about all shapes and sizes, you could see the Dennis pack, the chase from their uh, defending kick wasn't very good, which allowed the uh, the time and space to allow that 50-22. Genuine chance then for Sam Sisters. The throw not quite straight enough. Very fine margins there. Not much in that one, if I'm brutally honest. Maybe reaching a little bit to the outside. 
As you see, Jordan McKay say, oof, that was close. Neither side seems to have got a real handle on their own line out at the moment. It's been very scrappy. <laughs> Lots of smiles and banter out there. Aled Hopkins in the second row. He's the Seven Sisters head coach as well. And he had a quick chat on the scrum. Powerful again. Dinas Powers do exceptionally well. Luke Cooksey there. Went digging for it. But have... Oh, I thought Seven had turned that over. But it's a penalty again, Seven Sisters. You've got to feel for them a little bit there because they poured the pressure on at scrum time. They had Dinas Powers under the cosh. But uh, giving away a soft penalty, an easy exit. But fair play to Dinas Powers. I'm not sure how they did this. When you're under so much pressure, there's, there's nothing illegal about going backwards at a rate of knots. It's just they like, keep it straight and keep it down. I'm not sure how they did it there, but, but somehow they, they didn't give a penalty away. They obviously just aware that number eight needs to get that ball out as soon as possible. And fair play to them, they uh, they, they dealt with it quite well considering how, how quick the uh, sevens pack was moving. Channel one ball, does it still exist? Well, I think we've seen a little example of it there. Clean line-up ball for Dinas Powers in midfield. It's a Ryan Mullins. Arm out again, another penalty against Seven Sisters. Yeah, about a minute left on the clock. I think that's going to chance their arm and try and get another score before the half. Adam, you still are allowed sort of rolling substitutions at this level in the in the cup final. Are you? You can bring players on and rest and change, but you don't seem to see it at this level as much as we've seen perhaps in, in schools uh, rugby we've had over the road to Principality. No, definitely they're entitled to the full complement. Um, I think teams tend to utilise it look, probably a little bit later in the second half. I think both te well, looking at both teams at the moment, I think it, we could maybe see some sooner rather than later because I think they're both looking forward to the half-time break at the moment. <laughs> well, this man isn't because he's grown right into the game and getting them Din Dinas Powers over the game line, Ryan Mullins. What have they got to offer out wide again? Oh, it's been stripped in there, stolen by Sam Sisters. They have. And I think it was Ewan Davis with the carry, just lost it. And Tavis Noyle says, enough is enough. Let's go in, let's take a breath, let's have a chat and rebuild. Hanner Amser and Ron Dervanol, a cup Panama, and give her a team more than a bimed adran. Dinas Powis de Gui, Blind Delis Indig Pedwar, it is half time in the Division 5 Cup Final, and it's Dinas Powis 10, Seven Sisters 14.
his finishing, Jeff. I think they should, and he Reese. Possible, sorry. I, th I think so. Rail Haner and Danny Vesli round of an all. Bimed Adranama, Dinas Powis, Dig, Blind Delights, Indag Pedwar. And the way, second half of this Division 5 Cup final, Dinas Powis 10, Seven Sisters 14 at half time. He has a knock on into touch, so it's a scrum or line out option for Seven Sisters. Just on from the left hand there of uh, Ryan Mullins. I think there's been one change. I think number 19, Gavin Fish, is on. For number five, Joe Lewis for Dinas Powis. Right in the middle of this front row again. Mikey Jones getting the close ups. Tavis Noyle playing nine for Seven Sisters. Jamie Elkins with a pick. Llewellyn bringing Ben Atkins back on the crash ball. Noyle. Box kick, long and low. He finds Tom Stoked. And there is that cross field kick. Maybe they were listening to commentary. Because they get the ball to Matthew Williams, but he is under pressure. But what was said at half time? Boom! That was another big carry. It's a, a scrum advantage. Llewellyn scragged on halfway. I think that's uh, an example of what Dinas Powis tries to do in the first half. Move, move the ball through the hands, make that Seven Sisters pack and back line, work hard in defence, try and tie them out. Two different styles of play, Seven Sisters with the superiority in the pack, you'd say, in set piece uh, in particular. And the scrum was a potent weapon in the first half. And Dinas Powis just need to be clean and tidy with ball in hand. Well, will we see this ball come out or will they get the squeeze on again? They've got an 8-9 move planned. Noyle electing to kick. Trying to turn Dinas Powis. Oh, there's Nicky Coles back there. Elkins. A big man. Quick feet. Noyle back at the base. Runners. Craig Kendall. Llewellyn. Looks up and spots more defenders than attackers. That's one thing you, we picked up, I guess, Adam, from the first half. A little bit narrow defensively and in attack, I say, sisters. Very much so, and it seems to be a similar theme early on in the second half as well. Trying to turn Dinas Powis, but that's a great nudge. Oh, and it finds the touchline. Meters one, super kick. Oh, it was touched as well, into touch. So that's a, a Dinas Powers ball taken ahead of the mark. So the referee having to bring it back. The beauty of a kick, isn't it? I don't know pick who it was. I think it was Reese Jones, I think. The scrum half. That was back there. He's been very impressive yeah, for Dinas today, to be fair. Up quickly was uh, Gavin Fish. And it's been turned over. And here comes seven. Tavis Noyle spots a gap. No one quite on his shoulder. Quick ball. Tom Norton was in there. They've got a chance here. McKay, good pressure. Jordan Roderick. It's a messy break down there. Who's got the ball? Dinas Powers have got it. Dunleavy with a carry. Lots of bodies still on floor. And it's a penalty for Dinas Powers. A messy minute of rugby there. Clearance by uh, Kian Anderson. 
It'll be Dinas Power Sport, four points adrift at the start of this second half. Dunleavy. Not the straightest of throws. There's a little knock on Luke Cooksey with a carry for Dinas Powis. Offload. Nothing wrong with that. Almost collects his own uh, pass there. Where was he on the deck playing that one? It's uh, just a knock on. It'll be a scrum of four. Seven sisters will have their scrum. Was that Molly? Tavis Noyle. A little bit of pressure coming on from Dinas Powis there on the Seven Sisters scrum. Noyle. To Llewellyn. This is going to be a clearance from uh, Ben Atkins. Not the yeah. greatest of kicks, and it could open up for Dinas Powers here. Came slightly from the outside of the boot, the net stayed in field. But I do think the more Sam Sisters kick and kick towards the corner, the more traction they'll get in the second half. Yeah, some disagreement on that far side, maybe from the fans. Here we can see uh, some changes about to be made. Yeah, Matthew Williams is off for Dinas Powis, and number 21, Brett Jewell, is on. That's happening now. Early change in the second half for Dinas Powis out wide. this side of the scrum now get a close-up of Jordan Roderick there from ref camp let's come across to have a look at what's happening no real problems in the uh, in the first half at scrum time I think we had one reset but certainly seven sisters had the upper hand only changes Gavin Fish is in the second row well he had a bit more bulk in there well, that's the same effect powerful powerful scrum it's out, isn't it? Just about. And the pressure was Reese Jones. He did really well. That was a huge scrum from seven, to be fair. Absolutely massive. Not sure if they're looking at, you know, that seven trying to get a boot to ball here, but obviously caught a bit of body instead. Reese Jones is under pressure. The ball shoots out. Yeah, look at. Uh, are the ARs come in here, seen something on that far side. Was there a dive on the man on the floor, potentially? Was there some foul play that we've missed? It could be a penalty, you'd imagine. Yeah, against some sisters, maybe. They had the advantage of flooding forward, weren't they? Now, we can't uh, hear what's being said there. There's a ref cam, no ref mic. Wow. Here with he is being spoken to there. He's the blind side from uh, Sam Sisters. There's a card. That's a yellow card. For the Sam Sisters blind side. Not entirely sure what happened, but I did clock potentially adjust the, you know, he tried to kick the ball ahead, but, you know, it was more Willie John McBride kick ahead than he had, I think. Yeah. Difficult for us to see up here. Could have been on that far side of the scrum as well. But nevertheless, Dinas Powers now a man to the good 
into the Sam sisters' half. This is their opportunity to try and strike back, to try and regain the lead. Well, Whitney, 41 years young. They'll have 10 minutes to recuperate a little bit. Medina's Powers will put you on the front foot. And they lose the ball in contact again. Well, that's a penalty ahead of the kicker. Well, Surely. They, had, they had 10 minutes at half time, both teams did, to sort of reorganise things. But it, I've got to be honest, it's been really scrappy in this second half. Lost his shape completely. But here now, come Dinas Powis. Long ball out wide, stepping in. Quick feet from uh, Stout. Super defence there on Ryan Mullins. Is the game going to spark to life again? Jones to Dunleavy. It's gone forward. Noyle elects to kick. Maybe not the best option there. Well, that's a four pass, it looks like. Cool. Play goes on. Jones got to work hard at the base. This body's everywhere. <laughs> Solid run by Dinas Powis. Joshua Dunleavy. Looks for a runner. Owen Buckley with a carry. Yeah. Good carry again. Kean Anderson. There's Dinas Powis applying the pressure here. Jones, short ball to Mullins. Driven back in the tackle. Shuznik with a carry. He's sensing this is a big changing point in the game, and what a turnover by Seven Sisters. That was huge for Seven. They really needed that. You can see there's a fair few of them that are out on their feet at the moment, so that was a huge pressure reliever for him. Yeah, that's extra rolls on the floor, trying to buy some time for the Dinas Powers team to get over the ball. <laughs> a few bodies on the floor by Sam's sisters. They had to work hard, haven't they, at times in defence? Those big, big men. Safe to say the pitches up in Seven Sisters and Dennis Powers are not as, uh, as, not as big as the one we have here today either. Yeah, but it's uh, probably a bit heavier in general as well but this is the chance isn't it this is the burst that's a big big carry best in a hole they just needed some composure Clearance by Anthony uh, Sewillin. Changes in the front row for seven sisters off goes uh, jamie rowley <laughs> dinas powers pinch your line out again oh some afters off the ball maybe dinas powers are well aware that this is their moment in the second half to try and squeeze the Sam Sisters team to make that one man advantage pay. Well, the scrappiness of this cup final is continuing. It was a, an open affair in the first half. Good quality rugby. But I think the nerves are starting to show you. No one wants to lose this one. No points have been scored in this second half. Still, Tinas 10 7 14. Craig Howell is on for Sam Sisters in the front row. 
on the loose head. We're in uh, 16. Credit to big Jordan Roderick there. He just lined up uh, the Dennis number eight with a huge <laughs> shot, and he's milking it from the crowd as well, so he's enjoying himself. Well, win or lose, he'll be watching that about one o'clock in the morning on replay. And the run-up will get considerably further each time he tells the story as well. <laughs> oh, there was a chance there, but it's gone forward from Atkins. No, oh, I beg your pardon. It was uh, Daniel Norton there with a knock-on in, in midfield. Did well to get it through the hands. Yeah, should have taken that, shouldn't he, really? But it may be a case of tiredness, nerves creeping into the performance. Errors that we weren't seeing in the first half are, are creeping into the second. But somebody needs, needs to take control. You think with the likes of Tavish Noyle in the seven team that he has the experience, has the influence within the team. Right, guys, calm it down, tuck it up the jumper and, and play some tight rugby. We're ahead. They had a man down as well. Remember that uh, here Whitney, wearing six for seven, is in the bin. Good scrum again, but Dinas Powis come on the attack. Shook Nick there, coming down the blind. Replacement on now, is it? That's oh, Connor Coy wearing 16. Jones there at the base. There is Gavin Fish trundling on into the 722. Captain Dunleavy leading through example. Some lazy defenders from Sam Sisters. Need to be working around the corner a bit harder. Solid tackle by Atkins. That ball shoots out. Replacement Craig Howell. Good offload. Composure needed to clear now by Sam Sisters. Noyle, will he look for the touchline? Yes, he does. Takes a little bit of sting out of Dinas Powis. There's a lot of bodies, people getting treatment. Daniel Norton is down for seven sisters in the backfield. What happened to him? Yes, a decent jackal by Daniel Norton. Gets his arms on the ball and scrapes it backwards in the process, trying to lift it. You do feel we've been down this side of the half for a long period of time. And Dinas Powis have failed to score. And... Um, yeah, how costly is that going to be over the 80 minutes? It's been a very similar pattern the last few minutes where Dinners have had sort of half opportunities. They've made inroads into the Seven Sisters half, but it's been a silly mistake or an error or a drop ball, and, and it's allowed Seven to, to sort of relieve the pressure and, and get out of there. Yeah, Daniel Norton, I think his just shoulders gone. And you, you look, when he tried to take that ball earlier, was there a little hint of an... An injury then, but his shoulder has gone. He's replaced by uh, Yayan Eltham, who slots back into the backfield. Daniel Norton, he's a plumber. Hope his shoulder is all right and recovers quickly. Noyle kicks through, chases his own kick, all dependent on the bounce. Good pick Super up. pick up there by uh, Dinas Powis. And they're trundling in now to the Sem Sisters half. Jones there at the at the base. Dunleavy, a little nudge through. Could work out. Oh. Super pickup and nudge. And this is going to be a try. I think it's Tom Stout. What a finish. Joshua Dunleavy with a kick through and a chase, I believe, by Tom Stout. And Dinas Powis are ahead. Great play, what a nudge through by the uh, by the captain, Dunleavy. And there's that second kick, as he was going to stoop down to pick it on. You think, that was in a situation he was going to knock it on. He had the awareness to get the boots on the ball. And again, the bounce of a rugby ball can be so, so harsh, but sometimes so kind. Excellent speed of thought there, just to give that little deft touch, just to put it forward, and he was in there. So it was a very, very good try from Dennis Powers. And Dinas Powers needed that score. You know, they've been a man to the good for, well, nearly 10 minutes. He's pulled the conversion as uh, Kian Anderson. So it's, uh, it's a one-point game. Tavis Noyle pinched the ball. He kicked it through. 
Martin, I suppose, had a man down as well, but it didn't really matter for Tom Stout. Super finish by the blindside winger. Yeah, and some tired seven sisters' bodies getting back to the halfway line. And this is where being in control of the scoreboard is so important now. You know, we're approaching the last quarter of the game. Energy levels are dipping. I think that's a little bit more evident potentially in the Seven Sisters team at the moment. Yeah, they're back up to the full complement as well, Seven Sisters. <laughs> the pooping flung downfield. Super sportsmanship, not. Noyle under pressure. Backwards they're going at the moment. That's a ruck. A penalty that Dinas Powis did not want to give away. They will argue their case there. He's straight on to the ball is um, number 12. Shushnik there. I thought that was fairly legal. Yes, so well in. Winning 10 metres or so. Yellow card. Who Whitney returns for Seven Sisters. Yeah, there's a change for Dinas Powers as well. I think Nicky Coles, who came on at 10 instead of the injured Ben White, he's going to be replaced by David Lloyd. So it'll be a third fly half on the field for Dinas Powers. Although, saying that, Nicky Coles has been filling in that fullback as well. If it isn't an injury, of course, he can come back on. Dinas Powis pinch the Seven Sisters line out. Don't want to play, they kick it away. Eltham underneath this one takes it on the full. Doesn't want to get too isolated. Does well in heavy traffic there and support on his shoulder. And we've got another injury on this side. Slow to get up. Shushnik. David Lloyd, his first touch under the high ball, does well. Dunleavy with a, another carry. What a game he's had. Loose pass. And here they go again. They oh, just dangerous. love to play. Dangerous. That's a ruck. Hands away. Noyle coming through. Pinches the ball. And a needless penalty to give away. Isolated three man, three men on him. What's the penalty for? I think it's it's the strip, isn't it, Adam? I think these days you've got to keep the arms low and you've got to strip downwards more than upwards uh, towards the neck. It was a little bit unlucky there because the momentum, obviously, of the ball carrier is going down, so he's going to ride up. So it's a little bit of a tricky one, really. I mean, it's 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 fair under the law, but it's a uh, it's a tough one to concede, really, if you were seven sisters. Play goes into the Seven Sisters half then. Changes are happening for both teams. Kai Smith leaves for Seven Sisters. I yes. can see Cameron Thomas on wearing 19. Shane Broad also on for Dinas Powis, wearing 25. It's a one point game in the Division 5 Cup final. Brave throw to the back, straight enough. And here come Dinas Powis trying to find some space out wide again. He's just scored a cracker through again. Tom Stout goes, he's still going. Mullins with a carry in midfield. This could be the game right here if Dinas Powis get over for a seven-pointer. Are there gaps appearing out wide? Iwan Davis with a carry. Good contest there by uh, seven. But they are looking a little bit tired. Mitch Jones with a carry. Another injury. And it's Jordan Roderick down there. Dinas Powis not happy. But for a second, I thought he was completely out. So good decision 
but a super, super break, super play to find space. Yeah, isolating Kyle Davis. Isolating Kyle Davis in that 13 channel, getting outside him. Venus Power staying true to their philosophy and style of play, working that Sam Sisters backline and pack hard. They seem to really have the upper hand now. It's like they've had a bit of a second wind because uh, seven really do look like they're, they're out on their feet at the moment. Jordan Roderick getting some treatment. We're into the last quarter of this game. Changes happening as well for Dinas Powis. Owen Buckley, I think, is leaving wearing seven. Yeah, it's a one-point game. We've got a, an unpleasant injury by the looks of it to right knee on the floor there. Let's have a look at what's happened in this uh, Division 5 Cup final. First try was for Kyle Davis, the Seven Sisters captain. Nip and tuck it was, 7-3 they led, but then the bounce of a rugby ball for a score for Rhys Jones. The Dinas Powis scrum half. They were ahead, but back came Seven Sisters, Jordan McKay with their try, but this was a cracking score from Tom Stout. And that's why we have a one-point game. It's sad to see Jordan Roderick down getting some treatment and he's um, taking a bang to his, his right knee or leg, I believe. Stretcher is coming on. Never nice to see. And he's uh, Adam, he's had a great game. I was literally just thinking he's done well to still be out there because he's a big bull of a man and he's carried hard throughout the game, scrummage well. He's been very impressive. So, like you say, injuries are never nice at the best of times, but to do it on a on a day like this for something that, that does seem quite serious, it's um, it's it's dreadful for the for, for himself and the club, I suppose. Yeah, the medical staff taking their time as they need to. Well. I'll ask you both, what do Sam Sisters need to do to get ahead here? Because they seem to have lost momentum. Really scrappy first quarter with about 18 minutes left in the game while we have this injury. What does Seven have to do to turn it round? Well, Seven, they've been quite poor, really, in the second half. And they haven't offered much at all in an attacking sense. OK, they've been down to 14 for, for 10 minutes of that 20. But for me, Sam just need to play simple, basic rugby. Kick it and win the set piece, play for the line outs, play for the scrums. Uh, if they continue what they've had in the first half, that set piece dominance, and I think they could put the Dinas Powers line out under pressure, put the scrum under pressure, and pick up the scrap from that and build territory and, and, and position. It seems as though, unfortunately, what little decent possession they've had, they, they've lost as well, so they're, uh, they're never going to do anything if that continues to be the case for the rest of the game. Yeah, they were they were picking the Dinas Powis lineup. It's gone a little bit awry in the second half, and now they've lost their their attacking weapon at scrum time as well. In Jordan Roderick, Jamie Rowley is already off. What will scrum time be like now for for Seven Sisters? Certainly, the try of the game so far was the last one we had of Tom Stout. Talk us through this one, Adam. I don't think Josh Dunleavy's probably known for his deft uh, chip throughs, to be fair. But again, it was just just as equally as good. A uh, little deft touch from Stout before he's picked up and finished very well. I just watched Dunleavy celebrate there while chasing after the after the kick. But Jordan Roderick is on the golf buggy you now. His uh, his right knee or leg is encased in. Um, the splint. Two injuries. Two looks two nasty injuries. Because Daniel Norton, the fullback, was holding his shoulder. It looked like a, a dislocation there, and it doesn't look great for Jordan Roderick. There we have tight head coming up. Mikey Jones goes over. All right, mate. Hope you're okay. Tape it up. Come for a pint later on. 
But he looks in a lot of pain. Not the way he wanted to leave. The feeling the worst, and you would be in the ACL, some ligament or tendon damage in there. You just wish him the best and, and hope it's not as severe as it looks. Well, we hope that Shambo is all right. Right, restart with a scrum. A lot of new faces in the Sem Sisters scrum. And again, good pressure. Noyle, pressure on Jones. Driving them back. Now they have to stay on their feet if they do counter. You have to say, Rhys Jones, throughout the game, he's worked wonders on the back of that scrum. Retreating quick, but he's kept possession on several occasions for his team. Is that a knock-on? Yes, it is. Just gone forward from Kian Anderson. Just lost control of this one. <laughs> Thinking about what his next move was, potentially. Half looked like he threw it forward himself. Do you want it? Bit of frustration creeping out from him as well. Just a little shout to his opposite number, just to get out the way. And all plaudits to Kian Anderson and, and the Dinas Powers backline. They've had to rejig from early on with Ben White going off. You know, Kian Anderson was a full back. Then uh, Nicky Coles went to 10. They swapped positions. You know, the game plan from the off was thrown out the window. Oh, here come Sam Sisters and their captain, Kyle Davis. Ball is there for Anthony Llewellyn to use. On the run comes McKay, try scorer McKay. But he's under pressure. And that's a penalty for Dinas Powis. Super work at the breakdown. But has it cost him his hamstring? Who got up quickly there? Well, it was... Connor Coyle over the ball, but you could see him just hold his hamstring there. One part of the game, when you're cleaned out in the modern game, it's not stud marks on your back. It's uh, knees and hamstrings that go. But an important penalty for Dinas Powis. Kian Anderson will be happy to get the ball back in his hands. Yeah, Dinas have just done terrifically well, just boxing seven in this half throughout the game. And without any possession or territory, although it's a one-point game, you know, seven are finding it really hard to, to try and fashion an opportunity to win this. They're all big moments now in this one. Change is happening for Sam Sisters. Jamie Elkins, eight, is leaving. He's worked hard for 65, 68 minutes. Sam Sisters pinch Adinas Powis ball. And they will look to clear, take their time. And here they go. Now elect to kick Kyle Davis. Ah, that's a good exit for Sam Sisters, considering it was a Dinas Powis lineout in their own 22. Yeah, I think that's what I was hoping to see from a Sam perspective. That's how they're going to get back into the game. Get back on that superiority in the set piece and just kick it downfield. Again, make Dinas work hard in what has been a, a struggling lineout. Oh, it's, it's anyone's at the moment, the line-out as well. So, the, again, I know it's a 50-50 contest, but on own ball, no-one's been able to, to stamp their authority on it, so this could easily be a seven-steal. Oh, nearly steal it again, but it's an early lift. Uh, and worth noting, oh. Tavis Noyle now playing a 10 for Sam Sisters. Bit of a, a rejig in the back line with Gavin Hooper going to nine. Yeah, well, they were early going up in that one. That was a double tap almost there by Kian Anderson. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. And no, oh. oh, disastrous for Dinas Powis. That's a ho horror show, isn't it? Got a free kick and he immediately give it a penalty away. It's just a jackal straight on the ball. And that's the three points, or well, potential three points to take the lead again. Well, I think the issue was there. Kian Anderson had the ball. Did he tap it the first time? Because he tapped it again. But, uh, of course, Sam Sisters thought he hit it the first time, so he was immediately under pressure. 
just been done so many of these sort of simple mistakes. So, yeah. Yeah, he put himself under pressure there and put his, his teammate Ryan Mullins under pressure. I don't think he actually touched the ball the first time. So he thought, well, I've got to touch it for it to be live. But everyone else, including the referee, thought he was live. Yeah. So the question is then, were Sam sisters all offside? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah. It's, yeah. Get, it's getting technical, but, you know, maybe yeah, the ref they, should have they, said, they take it again and calm down, boys, go back 10. Well, he, th he thought that he'd taken it the first time, you know, and it, it looked genuine. The ref is always right, gents. That's what I always, always know. There's no point arguing the decision's been made, you know, and it, it is play on. I don't think anybody argued, did they? They just um, accepted that the, the tap was taken the first time, seven were onside, and won the race to the ball. Anthony Thewill in then. Great conversion from the touchline. What about the penalty? 25 out on the angle. Picks a tee up quickly. Up the flags go. And Sam Sisters are ahead by two points in this Division 5 Cup final. Blind Delice, Aravlan. Yeah, and after seeing that earlier touchline conversion, it was an easy penalty to put Sam back ahead. It's a one-score game with less than 15 minutes to go at the Principality. Considering the amount of territory and possession that, that Dennis have enjoyed, you hope they don't regret not scoring uh, more than the, the one try that they have in this second half. Messi restart. It'll be a chat here. It's gone forward, has it? From who? Well, Dinas Powers get the luck of the draw there and they will have... No, they don't, actually. It goes Sem Sisters' his way and it'll be a Sem scrum. But... Uh, I think you thought that uh, Tavis Noyle was playing 10 a wine, but I think you'll find he's actually playing 8. You're right, and Gavin Hooper's playing 9, but Tavis Noyle is scrummaging at the base of this one. Well, he was at 10 earlier. He, was, <laughs> he was stood there. Yeah, well, that's the difference now. He doesn't want to get isolated, and he does well to use the fend. Is there a high tackle in there? Clewellyn, under pressure, elects to kick. Straight down the middle of the park. Oh, and that's gone forward. Disappointment for Tom Stout. He shouldn't be disappointed. He had a cracker of a game. But these are big moments in this Division 5 Cup final. Yeah, it should have been an easy take. It was in the basket, wasn't it, really? Takes his eye off the ball. Already looking downfield to return the kick or return the run. Yeah, Anthony Llewellyn just had a little smile on his face because he knew that it wasn't the best kick. He could have been in trouble. Yeah, there he is. Gavin Hooper wearing 21. Replacement scrum half. Gavin Hooper, backs coach, old head coming on, 41 years young. 459 appearances, 460th. And that's the advantage of having Tavis Noyle playing eight. He can just pass the ball himself. He's playing eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Big moments here. Discipline is key, but I think just picked it in midfield. Oh, it's a high tackle and offside, I think. A double whammy and another chance for Sam Sisters. I thought they were offside. Didn't think much of this high tackle. Uh, Dunleavy potentially, yeah. Maybe not, not much of an arm in there, maybe as well. But it's another soft penalty, you'd say. And another chance for Llewellyn. Yeah, well, I, I asked you, Adam, how was Sam going to come back into this game? And they have kind of simplified things a little bit, you know. They've brought old heads on. Maybe cooled, cooled down a little bit and taken the sting out of uh, Dinas's attack. Yeah, definitely. They've had a little bit of luck, if we're being honest, as well. I mean, they were the drop catch from Stout just then, the uh, the mess with the free kick. So, uh, but as you say, you've got, you've got to take your chances, and that's what they've done. It's a two-point game. 
Can Anthony Llewellyn make it a five-point deficit for Dinas Powis to chase with ten minutes left? Solid from the experience out at half for Seven Sisters. It's a five-point game. Dinas Powis have ten minutes to get back ahead in this Division 5 Cup final. Lovely strike from the outset half. Yeah, that's an important score to make it a, a five-point game. Dinas Powis now have to search for a try. The time is to go, maybe. Kicking isn't. Going to be an option for the posts and errors. And again, it's Dinas Powis compounding their own errors. Well, you said it earlier, Wine. You know, you, you lose a 10. Ben White went early for Dinas Powers. Kian Anderson has stepped up very well and played a, played great at 10, but you lose experience in a key position. Yeah, and you're down to potentially your third choice 10 with David Lloyd there. You know, it's a lot of pressure now to handle to try and guide your team back ahead in a, in a cup final. And they need to go back to what they were strong at. Run it. Just keep it on the field. And run it from everywhere now. Options are, are running out. Noyle at the base. Finds Cooper. Cooper. Oh, he's judged that perfectly. This is the experience now. Noyle experience international. And Gavin Hooper, the replacement scrum half. Will he get the 500 appearances for Seven Sisters? Could do if he plays a, another season. Again, it's simple rugby, isn't it? Just put the pressure on Dinas Powis, make them have to play from deep. And you could see Seven Sisters bunching at the front. Are they going to double jump this one? Try and pinch a Dinas ball. Yeah, Dinas spotted it and gone to the back. Reese Jones tidying things up again under pressure. This is where Sem Sisters want to be, but it's not where Dinas Powis want to be. Oh, danger. Cooksey with a carry. Well recovered by Dinas Powis. Anderson looking to free Stout on that left wing under pressure. Blind Delice. And Anthony Thewillian tidying things up. Then Levy comes straight through the middle there. He struck that one back, did well. I was going to say, Dennis Powers looking like they're starting to, to panic a bit. Well, they've got numbers. Can the ball go through the hands? Still going. Cheslik. Still going, almost into the 22. What a run. Simple hands, simple hands. Oh, Alex the kick does Anderson. All to do with the bounce of the ball. Oh, quick to react. Daniel Challenger, he clears. Back there is Anderson. This is it. Dinas Powers throwing everything at the uh, Sem Sisters. Was that a high shot? The arm is out. They'll get a chance to go for the corner. Dunleavy with a pick. Finds Gavin Fish. What a run that was from Shushnik. It is a penalty. Reese Jones ball in hand. They'll come back to the mark and I think they'll pop this one into the corner. Well, the mark is a little bit further back. I think they'll have to go for the corner considering what, seven or so minutes left on the clock. They have to put some trust in their line out, which has been faltering. But if you go back to that previous attack, that's why... I'm not an advocate of kicking, attacking kicks. You've got to be so accurate. Because if, if you fail, you look like a bit of a fool sometimes. With so much, many players with simple passing, you could have exploited that same space. Yes, the kick at times is a good option. But in that scenario, maybe it was a poor one. Yeah, definitely. It's such a skill. And to get it right requires a, a high level of skill. And they almost got away with it, to be honest. But just because of the bounce of the ball, but the kick wasn't the best. Here's a question, as we see the run from uh, Andrew Zushnik again. He was kind of scragged and got away. Got into the 22, super run. Really put Dinas Powis on the front foot. Adam Taylor, what are the rules of this competition? 
no extra time. Try count, converted tries, penalties. Yep. No, there's definitely extra time in this today. Oh, there is, okay. There is indeed, yeah, no. Obviously, we uh, if, should the scores be equal at the end of the game, we go on tries scored, so the team with the highest number of scores uh, will win. Then it's converted tries, and if they're both equal, then we have uh, two 10-minute periods of extra time then. I need a good stoppage to have a look at what happened. That's gone forward, has it? I thought there was a sneaky left mitt on that from uh, Sem Sisters, but the kick through, the hack through by Cameron Thomas clears the pressure. Was that Dinas Powers' last chance? And was there a knock on there? Yes, I think there was. Oh, lucky to get away with one. Very lucky, but what a kick. Has to be said, the beauty of a kick just curling slowly into touch the official was in such a good position to see that as well so they've definitely got away with their seven sisters yeah and we can hear the crowd really getting behind their teams at the moment a good turnout from the fans of dinas Poes and seven sisters in the in the crowd was well, not straight and again, it is that Dinas Powis line out that has fault that maybe let them down. Of course, lads, we've got to have to choose a, a player of the match uh, soon. So I'm not sure if you've got any notes on who may be deserving. I'm too busy looking at the um, the try scored and things. If Dinas Powis went uh, over for another try, they would have the advantage of having crossed three times. So that's all they need, really, is a try, Adam. If that is the case, ho hopefully they know the rules of the competition better than I did. That's why I've got someone like Adam Taylor alongside me. I've been texting all the staff down pitch side anyway, so uh, <laughs> I hope they've got it right. Yeah, two tries apiece at the moment. Big moments here. For both clubs in this Division 5 Cup final. Noyle picks. Ball back on the inside to uh, Gavin Hooper. Hooper finds his man. Oh, were there any arms in that tackle? Cameron Thomas got hit quite hard. Yeah, I think there's definitely a penalty. The question is, what's the sanction going to be to follow? It's a high shot, isn't it? That went backwards off a, a yellow hand. Ooh, that could be potentially a red card, I'm thinking, here, if, if the officials see what we see. Well, they don't get to really see it again. A lot of chat. The big question I would be asking is, how long left? How long left? You know, for, you know it's a high shot, isn't it? It's a high tack. If you look at this... Is the head on head? That's the question. It's with force. It's a minimum yellow. The question is... It's, it's more reckless and malicious, I think. Oh, it's a penalty try! A penalty try! Yeah. And it's going to be a yellow or a red card. Because, yeah, there we have it. It's a yellow card. So, in essence, if that defender is... Well, he gets taken out of the game completely if it's a yellow card. The penalty try rules are, or the laws of the game are, it has he, to be, doesn't, ex he does doesn't exist anymore. And if that player would have crossed, it's a try. Well, I don't think anybody saw that coming. I didn't catch as well who the high tackle was, who the yellow card is for Dinas Powis. It was a replacement. Uh, Captain Dunleavy, he's led right from the front. Reese Jones, another star performer for Dinas Powis. And Anthony Thewillin, he's run the ship for Sem Sisters. Oh, well, Rhys Jones, so unlucky. Just the ball ran away from him. Adam Owen, player of the match, as we have some falling out as well. 
Yeah, it's getting tasty out there, isn't it? The frustration of Dinas Powis. There's been some good performances in there by um, Seven Sisters. Uh, and as well, Dinas Powis. I've been impressed with Reese Jones. I know he's made an error at the end there, but he's been, worked hard off the base of the scrum to save Dinas Powis on a, on a number of occasions. And uh, we've seen Shushnik carry hard in midfield. Kyle Davis with a top score early on. <laughs> Tavis Noyle thinks run the show, hasn't he, for, for Sam's sisters. And I think he's been better <laughs> since he's moved to number eight. I think you're right there, Oi, to be fair. He's carried hard. He's been uh, he's been a lot better, I would say. Anthony Flewellen deserves a mention. He's kicked very well for Seven Sisters. He's marshaled them well. And the, the the three players in the front row as well have all carried hard. It was unfortunate because Jordan Roderick would have been uh, put his name hand yes. right up for that uh, award. So basically, we selected everybody apart from actually a player of the match. Um, I think, yeah, I think we decided. Nine Tavis Noyle. Yeah, I. Nine Tavis Noyle. Here we are. Here we are. It's, the duty's fallen to me, so I think we could probably agree that the, the man of the match for Seven Sisters has been uh, Tavis Noyle. He's uh, fair play to him for, for going to the back row from scrum half, but his, uh, his experience has shown late on in this game. Well, Serena game, the uh, player of the match in this Division 5 Cup final brought to you by Go.Compare is uh, Seven Sisters is number nine, now playing at eight, Tavis Noyle. Final moments of this one. Lots of changes in both teams now. And you do feel... You know, it's, it's seven sisters win now, isn't it? It's going to be inevitable. But you do feel that Dinas Powis have left an opportunity slip through their hands in the second half, Adam. Definitely. They were in control for the game for three quarters of the second half anyway. They were camped down in the, uh, the seven sisters half with a, a lot of the ball as well, but they just couldn't do anything with it. Dinas Powis trying to play like they have done throughout... The almost 80 minutes of this Div 5 Cup final. Yeah, Dinas Power is trying to guess something on the scoreboard to make it look a bit more respectful, as it maybe should. Reese Jones, cracking performance by the scrum half. Oh, that's a hamstring gone. Well, is that a hamstring or frustration by uh, Joe Davis? Knock on into touch, and the uh, Sem sisters have gone for a scrum option. An element of the game they've dominated from the first minute, even though they've got loads of changes in there. I can see Alan Hopkins now in the in the front row. And I did read that uh, he can cover any position in the pack than Alan Hopkins. So we're still contested. And still a good scrum. But that is it. Gavin Hooper hoofs the ball into the stands. The Division 5 Cup final comes to an end. Hugely competitive affair at Principality Stadium. But the end of the road to Principality, it is Sem Sisters that are victorious. Game a Haner and Ronder Vanol, a Copan or Gaver, a Timoy that had been made at Dran, Custard Lee or Leon, and Blind Elias either he or the Ivig Scythe, he bumped and the Pendrow and Erbin Dinas Powis. The final score in this Division 5 Cup final Dinas Powis 15, Seven Sisters 27. We're going to have a game, Reese Schubert, Dinas Powys and Hynod Schumettig have our Ail Hanner now with the Rioli, three quarts are our Ail Gyfnod. A score are our Equil, and Deg, Dinas Powys, in the Petwar, he blind delights, and with the Sturry Edder. Mantaisa Gavin and Ail Gyfnod also the score of Mui, we know Dean Irgore. 
am ddeg munud yn gynnar yn yr ail gyfnod. Now, Jess Smith is scored a digon o bwyntiau o bosib pa moed yn nhw'n rheoli i'r ail gyfnod a, a blaen dilais yn manteision llwyr yn y deg munud olan ar gan gymeriadau uh, bechgyn Dinas Powys. Felly, o bosib, fi Dinas Powys yn dechnol ar y gem a fel y rownd derfynol gall nhw wedi ei hennill. Ie, yeah, cytuno'n llwyr â tîm yna. Yr ail hanner ar Dinas Powys ar y blaen o 15-14 yn edrych fel byn nhw'n rheoli ond lot o newidiadau yn y ddoi dîm. A Jess falle hen benne mynd â hi, Gavin Hooper o'r fainc i blaen dilais a Anthony Llywelyn a Tavis Noel. Dwi'n ddim o'r hen yn ni, 3-3 yw Tavis erbyn hyn. Ond, ie, yeah, falle bod y sgôr yna ddim yn adlewyr chi pwy mae'r gystadleol oedd i 27 i bymtheg, ond uh, blaen dilais yn, yn hyddiannol falle yn fydd i gol ar ôl yr hanner cyntaf yna. Ie, yeah, Tavis Noel yn cael ei wybrwyo fel seren y gem ac o bosib... Um, Fel grŵp pac blaen dilais yn, yn ser hefyd fel, fel undod y, y rheng flaen yn arbennig y ddân. Rhoi cymaint y bwysa'r sgrym dinas pawys uh, yn yr chwartar awr i gymaint agoriadol. A hefyd yr lein blaen dilais yn gryfach na dinas pawys. Yn ddim yn cael eu tai dinas pawys eich meddiant glan o'r safleoedd gosod. Ac yn dyna lle ath cyfleoedd dinas pawys ar goll yn de sawl lein yn yr ail hanner na o fewn o dwi yr ugain yn cael eu colli ac felly'r cyfleoedd i sgorio yn mynd ar yr un pryd hefyd. Tavis Noel off for a, a run just to see the couple of his mates in the Tonna team. Yeah, from the same valley of course, same sisters, Tonna. Uh, Tavis Noel made his first appearance for Wales at Principality against Argentina and then he's back might not be his last appearance at Principality but one of his final ones for Sem Sisters just because he married Kyle Davis his sister, the Sem Sisters captain and he had to keep his promise to come and play for Seven Injuries Daniel Norton there, can see him in the sling. Keeping an eye out for uh, Jordan Roderick. He left on a stretcher, looked in, in some pain there. At the Varnwyr Land, Ginta, the match officials first up. Terry Dixon, uh, Khalid Falvi, Jeff Williams, Chris Williams. Hebddon but the dim rugby. Without these guys, there would be no game. Do they get everything right? Of course not. That's impossible. But they are out there to make sure that we can all play rugby. And let us not forget that. Justin Levy hopefully will lead his team up as well. Well, he's got one of his children out there now. That's a moment for him to treasure as well. <laughs> His father, John, head coach of Dinas Powys. I going to say he probably didn't get much sleep last night, did he? <laughs> With a, such a young baby at home. And a word for Mitch Jones. Wonder what time his flight back for holiday is. <laughs> well, Dunleavy. Standout performer for Dinas Powys. You know they're disappointed. Kian Anderson there stepped into the void left by Ben White. Lloyd Morgan there from the Welsh Rugby Union handing out the losers' medals. Should be proud, Dinas Powys. Give everything to the final. Never nice to lose, but some experience to play here. Come back next year. Both of these clubs fell from the top divisions right down to the bottom tier to rebuild, and that's exactly what they are doing, and have done so very, very well. And of course, Reese, both teams top of their divisions, respective divisions, will be targeting that move upwards. Division four next season, more than likely for both. So the seasons. 
obviously not lost for Dinas Pawis. There's uh, still something to play for. Dinas Powis faithful. Good crowd of Principality again supporting their local villages. On the Maichi blind delice. Well, Jeff Davis, he's a uh, part of the Welsh Rugby Union, but he's also, of course, he's chairman of Blind Delice. Big, big moment. Jordan McKay, he crossed there for a try. What a moment for him. Arrived in the village and ended up playing for seven. Here Whitney, yellow carded, but he's still smiling. And they're not Maur Eaglob blind delice. Song of Archiade, Bob Inano, Daniel Norton, Mount Sling in a sling, puts the medal in his sling. Hopefully he's okay. I think he's a plumber by trade, like I said. Well, maybe a one handed plumber for a couple of days, maybe. Aled Hopkins. And uh, Gavin Hooper there. That was a big decision. Bringing Gavin Hooper on. He kicked really well. He turned Dinas Powis. Here come the front row. Jamie Rowley. We've seen McKay go through. But no Jordan Roderick. Unfortunately, he's not been able, he's not been well enough to come back up and claim his medal. Anthony Thuelin. Crucial was the 10. Oop, oh, that's the first thing he's dropped all day. And Kyle Davis, the captain. 456th game, I think it was. No, sorry, I've given him 100 there. 356th appearance for Sem Sisters. Klonga Vakhiade, though, here. Akir Club. Blind Delice. The Maichir moment. Jeff Davis. This is the big moment. Jeff Davis. And Kyle Davis and Lloyd Morgan there for a picture with a Division 5 Cup. And that Division 5 Cup is heading west to the Neath Valley, to the Delice Valley. To Blind Delice. That's a special picture. That will be on the wall in the club. Final instructions. Kyle, just go to the front there and go crazy with the cup. A pen camp where Kupan Adran Pimp, the WRU National Division 5 Cup winners, are Seven Sisters Blind Delice. Thonga Bachiare, congratulations. Your team, your club, your pen trip. Big congratulations to the team, to the club, and uh, to the village. Then I need it. They're going to get Pippa Richa Buntje, Ronder van Nol, a cup banner, Gaber Adran Pimp. Let's have a look at the highlights of the Division 5 Cup final.
Welcome back to the uh, Principality Stadium here in Cardiff for the Men's Division 4 Cup Final contested by Newport Saracens and Tonna. Yet another East versus West clash. So we'll have a look at uh, how the teams line up. First of all, it's the uh, Newport Saracens led by uh, tight head prop John Lavender. Ewan Burrows, he returns uh, from his uh, success with the Monmouthshire uh, team in the inter-district uh, competition last week. Blake Claymore is the other prop. Elliot Shotton and Joseph Corton at second row. Pat James and Carl Tucker, either side of Kirk Lewis at number eight. The back division sees uh, Tom James line up at scrum half with Sam Bevan, his partner at number 10, Adam Davis and Steph Morgan at centre with Dex Lewis at fullback, flanked by James Raymond and Liam Foley. The replacements, call and finish as if you want, Josh Davidson, Kieran Pugsley, Sam Parcell, Jordan Howells or Joel Thomas, George Ovi, Andrew Morris and Cordell Wilson. Tonner from the uh, outskirts of Neath, Joshua Jones and Johnny Thomas flank Vice Captain Kieran Cole at hooker, Luke Payne and Andrew Millward start at second row, Ian Davis comes in at flanker, Craig Mitchell, the former Wales prop is injured, Joshua Hughes starts at eight with uh, club captain Callum McPhee at number seven. Behind the scrum it's uh, Lloyd Evans and Nicky Fisher, the halfbacks, Jason Evans, Joshua Ebbett at centre, Ben Thomas on the left, Gavin Richards on the right, with Sam Pridgen uh, at fullback. On the bench, then David Thomas, Matthew Reese, Pat Gray, Ross Price, Tom Parry, Ben Williams, Nathan Cameron, and Jonathan Evans. This then the Division Four Cup final. Risa Pulliam joins me and uh, <laughs> rather nervous and shy uh, Geraint John. shrinking violent uh, community officer for the Welsh Rugby Union Geraint John will take his place on the right shortly Rhys looking forward to this one yet another East versus West clash yeah the Division 5 Cup final between Dinas Powys and uh, Blind Delight Seven Sisters was a competitive especially in the, in the first half and then it's about taking chances really and curbing the nerves a little bit I think what the Seven Sisters did in that first game was bring a few old heads on took the sting out of seven sisters a little bit and that's how the victory was was kind of won in 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 the end you know a few decisions went their way yeah. but they, i think they they did enough you know in in the first half tired legs at the end there as well so teams are in the tunnel So the nerves will be jangling somewhat. So here come the uh, protagonists then, and the mascots, of course. It's a proud day for them as well as the players having the opportunity to run onto the uh, Principality Stadium turf here to the uh, chorus of supporters for both teams in the stand and they're here in goodly numbers they've travelled by train and by car and by coach as well Sound like Max Boyce uh, on the Scottish <laughs> trip there, Win. So we're joined by Geraint John, community uh, officer for the Welsh Rugby Union. Geraint, uh, once again, this road to the Principality has lived up to its expectations. Yeah, I think we've had an uh, no, excellent game uh, earlier on this morning and obviously this game uh, here, but uh, this is part of a festival that's been taking place over the l probably the last three weeks and la you know two games today, games tomorrow, and then the final games on the 27th of, uh, of the month. And... Uh, as we can see uh, today with these two teams, great crowd, lots of people come from the communities and the towns as well to support uh, uh, their local heroes, as they say. Indeed, Newport Saracens will kick off from right to left, representing the Dragons region up against uh, Tonna from the Ospreys region. Ball secured from the kickoff, and a good touch finder takes play up to halfway. 
quite interesting to see when what the difference in in standard really div four div five you know the, the teams who have got to the final inevitably are doing really well in their leagues as well but what will be the main point of difference between div four and div five well we'll soon uh, find out perhaps because both these teams are flying high as you say in the respective uh, divisions Division 4 West Central, Tonna, Division uh, 4 East Central, that's where the Newport Saracens ply their trade. So the first thrust comes from the Newport Saracens taking play into the Tonna half. Drop ball, little nerves perhaps, and that's understandable early on. Well, my first uh, issue is Newport Saracens black shirts red thin numbers <laughs> I know in commentary you want clear as day you can't <laughs> see them yeah wait till you get to my age <laughs> should I say I'm colorblind I definitely can't see it because <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, it's gonna be an interesting hour and a half but yes you, uh, valid point and uh, I remember Commentating on Sam's tournaments over the years, we'd always have problems with the Kenyans and the Fijians and the Cyrillic numbers as well on the backs of the Georgians. It was uh, pretty much a lottery at times. So letting the ball roll over the try line. Plenty of time. On first look, when you know, comparing what the players actually look like, you know, physically, these two teams have taken it up a notch, really, on that Div 5 Cup final. You know, big guys, two big sets of forwards, and I think the kicking game as well could be crucial in this Div 4 final. Yeah, we saw that in the previous uh, Division 5 final, didn't we? And uh, tired legs towards the end of the game as well, so it's uh, about managing your players, managing your tactics for the first opportunity here. But turn a lovely pass out onto the left wing, back inside. Just cut out. Now then, will it be the decision? The arm is in the air. Well worked to try for Tonner. So they claim the opening score of the match. Just a few minutes on the clock. Look at this pass from a fullback, Sam Pridgen, out into the left wing. Yeah, ball knocked back by a uh, Saracens player, and Josh Ebbett on the spot. 14 tries, has played every minute of this season's Cup and League programme, and he's awarded with his 15th try of the season. Well, that's just showing, Garrett, maybe keep playing because you think, oh, the ball's gone forward, but you've got to wait for the referee's whistle, and it didn't come, and they, they reacted, Tonner. I think with Tonner there, you saw the offload in the contact area there as well, and it, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, Div 5, now we're at Div 4, and Tonner have been playing exceptionally well in Division 4, um, and they are looking for promotion, and uh, they seem very strong at the, you know, the first few minutes of the game, and uh, as you said there, play right until the very, very end, and uh, um, that was their reward. Will the try be rewarded with a conversion? Not quite. So the score remains at five points to nil in uh, Tonner's favour. Uh, let's have another look. That's the ball there, really. That just sucked the Saris uh, defenders in a little bit. And that's where you have to play on. And great communication by the officials as well. A great play there by Sam Pridgen because a very difficult ball to control, that overhead pass in the air. So often we see the ball go forward, but full credit to Pridgen and for Ebert as well, who claimed the open score. Now then, Saracens. That's their fullback, Dex Lewis, back at the Principality Stadium for the second time in a week, where he won with Monmouthshire in the Inter District uh, Cup last week. His brother Kirk, who was man of the match, starts at eight. Saracens attacking narrow. There are numbers out wide. And players covering as a second phalanx of players as well. There's determination here. Nice work. Good tackle. Solid tackling. 
Good defensive line there by Tonga. You can see they sort of organised. I think sort of uh, when you've seen them play during the league programme, very well coached, very well organised, and that sort of uh, has helped them win their games as well. Yeah, the organisation of the attack and defence, I think, you know, all right, we're, we're only in the, the first five minutes of the game. You've got fresh legs out there, but you can see a little bit more organisation in the this Div 4 Cup final than we saw in the Div 5 one. Blake Climo is the loose head prop for Newport Saracens up against Johnny Thomas for Tonner. It's there somewhere. Saracens have it. And that's Burroughs. To the lock forward, Joseph Corton. In pile of the forwards, quick ball this time. Now then, here's an opportunity up from the wing. Oh. Great play here. It's Liam Foley on the right wing. Great understanding here in the commentary position. I call the player, and Risa William calls the numbers. Brilliant. <laughs> wow, super play. I think it all started really from the scrum. Pat James, the blind side of the Sari, just just caught Lloyd Evans, the Tonner nine, and then you know a pre-planned move. And wow, what a finish from Liam Foley! Well executed. Good timing there by the the winger coming in there. As you said, a pre-planned move, but you still have to execute it. And the, you know, the person probably won't get the credit is the centre who ran uh, uh, to his left. Yeah, and, the dummy uh, line and created the gap for uh, for him to go through. But. Um, but as you said, the scrum, and you can see from when you look at the two sides, we talk about athleticism. I'm not sure that's the right word to describe the uh, front row of uh, Burley, of Burley, Burley boys in the front row. Burley front, but uh, they won that. Uh, they won the turnover there in the scrum, and uh, that could be a secret weapon for them. So we'll have to wait and see. The conversion from Sam Bevan sees the Saracens take the lead for the first time over Tonner by seven to five. It's a joy to behold when things come off moves like this. On, from the training paddock, well executed, but when things go wrong, not on this occasion. Well, the scrum was a massive asset for Sam Sisters in the in the Div uh, 5 Cup final. You could see it's such a such an important aspect of, of rugby union still. It's a powerful drive from uh, Ewan Burrows, another player returning. It's their second time of asking. This is Kirk Lewis with the headgear. That helps. Steps over the tackle of Ben Thomas. Hint of a gap for Tom James, the scrum half of Saracens. So they'll come all the way back for the penalty. Yeah, the Lewis boys look at a good combination. Side by side there, actually, Kirk and, and Dex. But that, that's one thing in the modern game, Gary. It's about that the meters made past the point of contact, the first tackle or the attempted tackle. What can you make past then? And that's what we saw Kirk Lewis do make meters after that uh, initial contact. And it helps then when they, you know, going forward, gets the back lines organized, gets the other runners organized to uh, to take it there. But also from a defensive point of view, they are scrambling back and it puts them on the back foot. So, as you said, but also you talked about the scrum earlier. I think uh, we've witnessed that in probably not just in these games today, probably in world rugby right now. You know, people talked about a long time ago how the scrum was being depowered, but now it is a massive force. Lovely flat pass, long pass, finding Kirk Lewis initially. Tonner going to try and smuggle it through Callum McPhee and he's uh, been successful uh, rolling forward after the tackle our players used to make a living out of that you know they'd make meters and Geraint said about getting over the gain line and, and keeping defences honest and things well that was one way of doing it you know and sometimes I feel we're not particularly held why not, you know, to get a better placement of the ball and get the game moving quicker, get cleaner ball? Why not the additional role? But there we go. They're looking at maybe rewarding the defender a little bit. I think you see that quite often nowadays, isn't it? You know, it was probably coached quite a, quite a lot to get that extra sort of bit of a yardage, but also prevent the jackler coming in straight away. So it allowed you, to, people were coaching that extra role. Now, as you said, you know, the defensive... Uh, 
uh, team is now being rewarded and you have to as soon as you're on the floor let go of the ball immediately you mentioned the numbers here. It reminds me of a story that I was told by Nigel Starmer Smith, and he was saying, relating it to the Lions tour of 1971. Uh, he, he didn't say who the commentator was, but I can imagine who it was. Edwards to John to Gibson. Ball turned over. Now they have it. Scrum half, outside half to centre. <laughs> <laughs> so I suspect that the numbers on the backs of the shirts of the, uh, the home side were something similar to uh, the Newport Saracens. But that apart, the Saracens lead by seven points to five. on a dugout by uh, Lloyd Evans, the scrum half goes left again and once more it's Pridgen uh, from fullback Tonna still have it, that's uh, Gavin Richards this time perhaps, give it to the big guys, or not so big perhaps Joshua Jones, a clear run in here for the outside half surely oh brilliant tackle that was a do or die tackle, had to be made yeah, I think it was second row of the Saris, Elliot shot and somehow got there. A super play in attack. Ball through the hands, everybody comfortable with the ball. Got the ball to Nicky Fisher and, yeah, it was <laughs> shot. And he had five on his back anyway. <laughs> Two in the tackle. So this is where the uh, front rowers earn their crest. Defensive scrum for the Saracens. Ball in hand, Tom James. Great drive by Tonner, picked up for the base by Kirk Lewis, the kick downfield. Excellent exit from the Newport Saracens. Different tactic, get the scrum, number eight picks up instead of going into contact. Puts a nice little kick in as well. So, uh, <laughs> well, Kirk, we, we Kirk saw Tavis Noyle at eight for all. Seven Sisters. Yeah. He was picking the ball up, passing, kicking, he was doing everything. Perhaps it's the new number eight. <laughs> We're seeing something different here today. The overthrow straight into the uh, hands of the uh, Saracens player. Just a quick cursory glance over the shoulder. Tight angle. It's a scruffy one. But it's safely into touch from the outside half, Nicky Fisher. Yeah, I think it was Thomas James there with the spiral, long, long spiral. I think it was, you know, looking good for a 50 22 at one point, but it, it's almost as good. It's a lot of talking going in the backfield between the uh, Saracens players. Just nudged forward by a, a ton of players as advantage. Saracens in the line out not quite functioning. Yeah, we saw it a real contest in the, in the first uh, cup final today. You know, and teams double jumping on on throws, trying to pinch ball, making life really difficult. Just opens the game up a little bit more as well. James Raymond, the Saracens left wing, has crept in field, shadowing his outside half. Again over the shoulder from uh, James. Just nudged forward, says referee Gareth Johns. Ah. Yeah, just dropped forward from the hands of uh, Tom James. There must have been a leg in the way. Yeah, scrum half. This is uh, takes me back to when I was uh, playing rugby. I was I was treasurer, chairman, still playing, and that that's what Tom James is. The uh, Saracens <laughs> night, he's treasurer as well. Did you mark the pitch as well? <laughs> Nicely picked up at the base. Not much room on the narrow side, and it's uh, fallen into the hands of the Saracens players, but no ground gained. Yeah, James couldn't quite free his hands here because there was a chance once they turned the ball over, but a, a good tackle. Yeah, it was James Raymond opposite. initially with the, with the tackle, the Saracen number 11. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, or I mentioned uh, marking the pitch. And that's one story to remember, it's Shane Williams when he went to Japan and one of the, the duties was every player had to clean the dressing rooms, mark the pitch even. 
something for the community game perhaps uh, get out but then a lot of these players do that anyway don't they I would say most of the people, you know, look at the teams here and people are on the sideline over here. You know, we do have fantastic volunteers. Um, not here today, but, you know, in the District Cup the other week, sort of uh, um, certain gentlemen from Pennegraig, Arvon. You know, you know, what, what a character Arvon eight, is. You know, eight years of age, does the pitch, cleans the change rooms, does the laundry. Lives next door to the club. Lives next door to the club. Looks after everybody in the town. Makes sure the, the youngsters, you know, also that rugby is a game for them to play. Make sure they behave. It's, he's an unbelievable person. And yeah. uh, These are the characters, aren't they? And that's what struck me doing a little bit of research on all the teams today, is that they've got strong bases, junior teams, and yeah. all the way up to the senior teams. And I think that's the beauty of the divisions, isn't it? There's something to play for. Um, your promotion, obviously, these two teams going for promotion, but there are players coming through as well. And it is, and when you look at Tono, you know, I think it's, what is it, 20 out of the 23 have come through their section, and, and I think that is the future. You know, we talk about it a lot with rugby clubs, you know, if they want to be sustainable and keep going, they've got to have a fantastic mini junior section. So Saracens again. Trying to work the patterns behind the scrum, still on. Up to the Tonner 22. Quick ball back into the uh, hands of uh, Adam Davis at centre. Lovely step. It's Dex Lewis up from fullback, I think. Yeah, Tonner turned that one over. I think it's great work by uh, Gavin Richards. With 14 on his back for Tonner. Just got his right hand on the ball, and you, you need to be lifting the ball in the way the laws are now. You just hands on the ball is no good. You need to make a genuine attempt to lift it. And that's exactly what he did. He stole it and won the penalty. Yeah, show the referee exactly what you're doing. A quick show of hands and down on the ball. It's a good uh, relieving kick there, the penalty kick. Takes play back up to halfway, just the two points in it, taken in the air by Andrew Millard. Back's not quite on the same uh, him page as uh, scrum half Lloyd Evans. Let's have a go at a kick at a 50-22 perhaps. That's a well-placed kick. <laughs> just... Just inside the 22 by the looks of it. Well done, the touch judge. All the crowd on the far side, of course, and that's where all the uh, Saracen supporters are. Had they been on this side of the stand, perhaps the decision might have been a little different. Well, no television match official. Thank the Lord for that. Yeah, I, I, do, I, do, I do like it. The game just flows a lot better. I know there's, a, there's the need for it at the top of the game, but the community game doesn't want to get anywhere near that. No, there's always jeopardy. There's always risk and reward, isn't there? Well, Tonner get the reward here, driving hard at the heart of the Saracens' defence into the 22. Lloyd Evans waits for Tonner. One more shove, perhaps before the ball is released by Kieran Cole, the hooker. On they go, into midfield. That's good work by Tonner. Now it's brought to ground. Slow ball, and Saracens would appear to have done enough. No, it'll be a Tonner ball. Clear explanation from referee Gareth Johns. I think that's one of the things, I don't know if you talked about it earlier, sort of like we talk about how it's a great day, just not just for the players, but also these match officials, you know, when they come into the stadium and sort of, uh, and they have the opportunity to play here um, and, match, you know, be the match official here. It is a highlight for them during the season as well, and we need them. Not once have we said in the last fortnight that they found this guy on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> nice work by Tonner in midfield. Ebbett checked on that occasion. Ball lost, ball turned over by Kirk Lewis. Tom James had a quick look. Sam Bevan dispatches downfield. Well, if I was torn, I wouldn't. I wouldn't run down the uh, 
the channels really against uh, Newport Saris. They, you know, they're a physical big, big side, and I think they uh, try and get into the uh, wider channels really rather than bringing your athletic uh, attackers straight into contact. Yeah, Saracens third at the moment in uh, Division 4 East. They've only been defeated once this season by Crumlin. Only the three games in hand. John Lavender is the captain receiving treatment. Let's have a look at the uh, two tries scored today. Well taken tries by both teams. The first from uh, Tonner and uh, the response from Newport Saracens was an excellent score. A little fortuitous perhaps for the all count. But this was a cracker. Foley came from depth, didn't he, at full tilt? Yeah, both teams started very well. I'm looking at uh, Captain uh, Lavender getting some treatment there. He doesn't look too comfortable. And, of course, part of you will do anything to stay on the park uh, in this kind of occasion. One, you don't want to lose your captain. But two, on a personal level, <laughs> you want to play for as long as you can at Principality. Yeah, he's been club captain since returning from the semi-pro rugby with Newport, Ebouvale, Bargoid and Cross Keys as well. So he's got all the stamps on his passport. I think he's ready to go. <laughs> I don't think he's coming off. He's just, just, just lost a yard of pace, maybe. Uh, not for nothing is he known as Big Bad John. Uh, had to be a penalty there, didn't it? Salas's player in the way. Shot to nothing, really, from uh, outside half Nicky Fisher. So back they come. I thought Lloyd Evans did really well there for Tonner. He just lost his foot in where perhaps he didn't really need to. Then again, he drew the referee's attention to the fact that there was a... <laughs> As all good nines <laughs> would do. Exactly. Going for goal. And he has kicked well out of hand um, uh, in this first half as well. And, um, and and you can see that he's the top point scorer for them. You know, scored in over 244 points this season. Um, and he has been excellent out of hand. So it'll be interesting now. Let's see uh, if he's got the distance from here. The ground in the foot is probably better than uh, some pitches that he's played on this season. Can't say that the wind is behind him. Roof is closed today. From halfway, it's climbing, it's carrying, and the flags are in the air. Oh, he'll be proud with that one. Not a hint of emotion. He expected it to go all the way, all along. Have a look at this. Well-struck penalty, which takes Tonna back into the lead by one point and by eight points to seven. Yeah, he had the distance there. Perhaps another metre as well on that one. He could have struck it from halfway. Kept it low as well. Like a good three iron if you're a golfer. So closing in on 250 points this season for the club. That's the value of a, a sharpshooter like Nicky Fisher. And in games like today in the cup finals, you need a good kicker. And, um, you know, in the game before, with, you know, with seven, you know, the ten kicked fairly well. You know, with seven, I thought then. And here, Nicky's keeping him in the game uh, uh, right now. And so many games come down to the final minute, don't they? And it's down to the kicker, the outside half. Sometimes the hero. It's a tight game. Late into the lineout, it's back somehow into the hands of uh, Ewan Burrows, the Saracens hooker. Plenty of forwards offering themselves here for the uh, the Newport side. James Raymond out on the wing, almost in his own half, creeping now into the Tonner half. Ball lost. Dex Lewis has got this one covered, or he should have. Foley. Helps out. 
plenty of time Let's see has he got a decent boot on him or he might have a go his first instinct is a counter-attack we'll soon see whether that was the uh, right option it's always good to see the win you know when you've got one defender chasing up and there's two of you in the backfield always a good thing to do here we go good play Fifteen meters out from the Saracens, from the Tonna try line, rather. Good barnstorming run here from Dex Lewis. Yeah. I, think, I think it's Steph Morgan. It? Nah. He, well, you can take your pick, Win. I'm looking at his. I think it is there. They're a similar build, and you get really difficult to see the numbers. But I think it was Steph Morgan with 13 on his back. My apologies. I'm sure Dex will take it though. <laughs> That's a decent clearance kick from uh, Fisher. And Salas will be disappointed with that, and they, you know. Great run down the left-hand touchline there. And then all of a sudden, a line-out on the attack. And um, unfortunately for them, Tonner steal it. Line-outs were a problem in the first game, and they uh, appeared to be a little bit of an issue here as well in the Div 4 Cup final. Kirklow is stopped in his tracks. Midfield, just inside the Tonner 10-metre line. Wall embracing tackle from the Tonna eight Josh Hughes. Lavender Not back to full fitness, perhaps Lewis again floating the pass out to Raymond on the flank. Didn't quite catch it cleanly first time, but no harm done. And Saracens come again. Through Pat James. That's the 22 meter line of Tonna in the background. Have well, they turned it over? No, it's still there for the Saracens. Driving hard and low. Nice placement. That's a big, ugly forward in the way. Has to be a penalty. Well, Could be something on here for Kirk Lewis. Couldn't quite free his hands, but it's still on, though, for the corner. It's a second Newport Saracens try, and this time it's Adam Davis at centre. Restores the lead for the Saracens. Thought that had all broken down, but again it was intervention of number eight, Kirk Lewis. Here he is. Yeah, an element of luck there again, win, but you, you know, you got to run with it. They, had, they knew they had the penalty. It's worth, you know, throwing your hat into the ring then with getting the ball wide. It's good to see teams keeping the ball alive instead of kicking the advantage away. And that man, Adam Davis, he was involved twice and finished the move. That's a good contest. When you say about keeping the ball alive, it, you've got to look at the, the tackle in the community game as well. It is sometimes, you know, it is slightly lower. Um, perhaps it's not as low as it should be with the reference to the law itself, but it does free the arms, and you do see a lot more offloads in the community element of the game than maybe at the senior element of the game. And perhaps it's not quite as fast a game. Yeah. Um, because it's when the, the seniors play, the, the the top players goes because the game is played so fast. The 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 impulse obviously is to well not to go high, but to stop at any. Uh, That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> well, they want to stop the offload in the professional exactly. game as much as they can, you know, and that's that's the truth of it. So the score remains at 12 points to eight. Two tries to one. And this is how it came about. A little fortuitous, perhaps, but Kirkley Lewis knew exactly what needed to be done, and it fell kindly for Adam Davis, who had the uh, the power to drive over in the corner. 
I thought it was touched by a Tonner player, but it actually was. And Kirk Lewis just kind of bounce ball did it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a one way to pass the ball, bit of a basketball one. Burroughs gathers it in for the Saracens. Lavender, the bridge, the pontoon, perhaps I should say. Good take. The Saracens on a roll here now. Raymond, a chance to run at the opposition. Oh, a lovely handoff. The Fisher uh, winger got him second time of asking Gavin Richards. Nice angle. That's on a tackling for all they're worth here. And as the Saracens come again, lovely floated pass out. Kick a little too far, perhaps, but well gathered by Sam Pridgen, the Tonner fullback. It's advantage, Newport Saracens. Yeah, I think if Dex had this uh, chance again, he'd he'd keep it in the hand. But no one wanted to collect this one, you know. Sam Bevan, no pressure at all, and they look to play. Saracens line deep. First, you've got to win your ball at the line-out. Didn't go forward, says referee, or did it? Yes, it did. Yeah, good call there by the referee. I think uh, Gareth John's got this one bang on. First little nudge forward. Last man down for Tonner is Callum McPhee, the captain, wearing seven but packing down at eight. Scrums have been pretty clean so far. Yeah, it's Johnny Thomas against uh, John Lavender on this side. You know, it's it's going back to a, a, a tall, tall, big old loose head against a smaller, more compact, tight dead. You know, and I think uh, Johnny Thomas, you could see him just getting folded over in that one. Just wants to take Lavender as low as he possibly can on this side, on this referee's side. Let's see what happens in this one. Look, is again, it's pretty quiet on the scrum tactics. I was just about to say, <laughs> don't come to me on scrums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I was just impressed with Reese As a scrum half. Oh, he reads a lot. <laughs> but all scrum halves knew everything anyway, didn't Exactly, they? exactly. <laughs> And they're not short of telling the referee as well. No, just short. <laughs> so it's advantage, Tonner. Ball went back initially, oh. there it went forward. Feeling this game now that the Saracens have got some dominance, especially if, in the physicality terms of this one. Tonner need a bit of ball here. I need to keep it. But I'm sure we'll see the, the squeeze come on from the Saris at this scrum. Yeah, Tonner here for the second time in their three seasons. They won the Welsh Rugby Union National Shield title in 2022. The Division 5 West Central title last year. And flying high again as we approach the end of the 2023-24 uh, season. The chance to run. Gap, hint of a gap perhaps opening up. Door firmly shut. Slow ball. And Newport Saracens have reorganised their defences. McPhee has a go. That's better from Tonner. Shoveled out uh, from Jason Evans. And a quick look perhaps to see where the defender was before securing ball in hand. Yeah, they've got, they've got a penalty advantage they, from the uh, previous ruck just offside. And I think this is exactly what Tonner need. Take the sting out, give the ball to, to Nicky Fisher again. Yeah, he's no intention of kicking for the corner. He knows he's got the range. Well, we know he's got the range as well. That well-struck penalty from uh, halfway. It's a close game, and if it does come down to uh, extra... T well, not extra time, it's going to be... Uh, try, try count? Yeah, it does try count, then converted tries, then, then penalties, then there is extra time. After that, if everything is still tied. 
Who makes these rules? Geraint. <laughs> Fischer. Sweetly struck again from the Tonner outside half. And they're back within one point. Newport Saracens 12, Tonner 11. And that's 250 points up for the season for the Tonner outside half, Nicky Fisher. And I think on that, you know, Tonner at the moment would be pretty pleased. I think um, if I was the Saracens, you know, they've had a couple of lineouts in Tonner's 22, which they haven't had uh, success in. And they'd probably be thinking, oh, there were points available there. And uh, so it'll be interesting how the last couple of minutes of this first half to see uh, uh, which way it goes. Richards, that's a go. He's got his captain on his shoulder, Callum McPhee. Fisher. Got a tackle from Kirk Lewis. McPhee again. Punches a hole in the Saracens' defence, and they're calling for numbers over on this side of the uh, the ruck. Shoveled out by Joshua Jones, loose head prop. So they'll come back for the uh, penalty. Well, Gareth Jones wants a chat as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we're not party to what's being said. It'll take time, you know, it, it, the tackle law has changed, but it's it's not going to solve things overnight here and it's going to take a couple of seasons for that to bed in and, and the referees have to be sharp like they have been throughout this this season and uh, the road to principality keep the, the, the tackle height down but it's going to take seasons yeah it is and I think uh, part of the research when we look at it is going you know is it working as well you know that's the other thing but from the feedback we're getting at the moment we do believe that the game there may be more continuity in the game but again when you're tackling you have to have the right technique. Technique is so vitally important for players at this level. Tonner into the Saracens 22 on the drive. That's the hooker, Kieran Cole. Can Tonner get a second try here? But they've lost possession. It's a penalty against Tonner just as they were picking up a head of steam. Super run by Kieran Cole. But uh, you know, you know what? I think it's uh, Sam Bevan, the ten in there, was it? Just got his hands on it. It's a bit of a double whammy as well. It's a, a clear out around the neck, so it's a penalty and an easy exit for the Saracens. Bevan sends it into the terracing on the far side. Into the final minutes, no winner. This. Uh, First half, I think Tonner will be relatively happy, you know, to be a point adrift of the of the Saris. Uh, they've been under the cosh for long periods. Yeah, we'd like to see the wingers get a, a run, really. We've seen what uh, James Raymond can do if he gets the ball in hand for the Saracens, and Liam Foley has already got a try. Might come down to stamina and engines towards the end of this match. Foley, full of running, wants to get involved. James, ball not gathered. And again, it's a penalty against Tonner. Illegal use of the boot. Adventurous play from the outside half for Bevan over the shoulder from Tom James. Well gathered in by the uh, Tonner fullback Sam Pridgen as he found a gap for himself. McFay on the angle. Quick ball this time. Fisher. Into nowhere in particular. Devon leaves it for Foley. Right footed. A difficult ball to take. Spinning in the air. Another chance for Pridgen. 
into the Saracens half looking for a gap that wasn't there perhaps Fisher this time out it goes into yeah. the hands of Luke Payne. They've got numbers forward. out there, Wynn. They've got numbers. Twice they elected to kick once, but they've had numbers more than once out wide. A little too flashy that time from uh, Nicky Fisher. And that may well be the last act of the uh, first half as James sends it high. Where's this going to land? Tonna just about have it. He's getting a little bit scrappy at the moment. Great cover by the tight head as well, then. <laughs> now that Foley, with room to run, oh. can't quite get the pass out to, to uh, Raymond. And that's an opportunity gone begging. You can score towards the end of the half. And it's uh, looking good. It was great work by Kyle Tucker there, just to secure possession for the Saracens. But Tonna on the attack again. Uh, Fisher spotted that there were two uh, Saracens players on the ground. Down and up in one movement. In go Tonner. They need to stay on their feet here. The three is a quick look at his watch. James, the flank forward. Safely back in the hands of Bevan. Can't find a touch. Thomas. Did it go forward? Yes, it did. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, Butterfingers. Oh, and there was a chance there for a good counter as well. Sarri's walking far out wide. If you'd have looked up, well, maybe he did. That's a big old ground, isn't it? It's a fairly long passage of play there. And you actually can see them now walk. They're all walking to the scrum, so I think they're making sure they catch their breath here now. They're probably looking forward to the uh, half-time whistle as well, but uh, I think there are opportunities there for Tonna. You know, the, it, I'm sure if, you know, half-time team talk will be. There is space out wide. They've got to keep moving it out wide. And for Saracens there, it's the maybe, you know, let's keep getting across that gain line. Let's keep using our ball runners and uh, keep getting across that uh, va advantage line. So, you know, two different types of tactics. Uh, and both could be actually successful this afternoon. It's uh, Dex Lewis receiving treatment down on his own uh, 22. Feeling the heat. Not necessarily from the embrogation. <laughs> and forward to the... Uh, glad to have a, a welcome breather. But what happens to the clubs after the, the finals gear, right? You know, then the, the trophy presentation. Do, do they have a, a lunch or something within the stadium as well? Yes, yeah, it's, qu it's quite a quick turnaround, if I'm honest. So, uh, you know, with the four games today, so uh, they'll all go into a room together. Um, we do a few little thank you speeches to, to both clubs, obviously, for... Uh, for taking part not just today but being part of uh, of the cup run itself so and uh, opposite us as well you know it's not just the players but um, they'll uh, be allowed to invite uh, key members of their of their club into the room as well so they'll all gather together so uh, as we call them the VIP guests of each club and, uh, and the players from each club as well and uh, we just thank them, you know, and I think it's important for us to thank them and they'll, they'll get fed. A lot of the clubs, fair play to them, don't want to stay long. They want to get back to their own club and uh, have, a few, uh, have a few drinks in the club with their uh, supporters and put money back into their own club, which is, uh, which is also pleasant. So, uh, but there is sort of like a, a quick turnaround at the end of the game, probably about th between 30 and 40 minutes. They've got to be in the room. They'll have their meal, they'll have the speeches, they'll have a few beers in there. Then they'll go back to the club because before not, We've got to clean up and next game is ready. <laughs> well, 11 coaches apparently have come down from Tonna today, apart from those who have travelled by, by car and by other means as well. Oh, well kept in play. And Steph Morgan, I think it was. James thinking about the pass to Burroughs. Lewis to Lavender. Barreling his way into the uh, Tonner 22. Lewis again, isolated. But no harm done. Saracen's moving forward with intent. Burroughs using his right arm to good effect. And takes play 
A little closer to the, the Tonner try line, looking for a third try before the break here. Looks promising. Lewis again eyes the try line, held up, well held up by the Tonner defense. James oh. to Lavender. Not quite there yet. Next time, perhaps. Lock forward, and that's uh, Corton. Again, they probe the narrow side, and over they go. It's Kirk Lewis, man of the moment. The Monmouthshire captain a week ago gets a try for his team, the Newport Saracens, and that uh, takes them further into the lead right at the stroke of half time. And Kirk there, you've got, you've got to give him credit for the, his whole performance in the first half. He's uh, carried well. Uh, he's been covering well. He, he's leading the team as a. You know, we know he's the captain of the team there. But even just in that passage of play, he knew when to go into the contact area, knew when to stay out of the contact area. He positioned players, so uh, um, a thoroughly deserved try to probably finish the first half. And uh, he has been an exceptional player that uh, first half as well. Yeah, I think that the scoreline now is a true reflection of the game as well. Conversion still to come for, for Sam Bevan, but 17 points to 11. Three tries to, to one. And the Saris, what's impressed me is their, their midfield as well in, in Adam Davis and Steph Morgan. Real over-the-game line players. And they've been uh, very structured in attack, but they've stuck to the structure and uh, crossed three times. Newport Saracens have taken their opportunities. Tonner have had their opportunities, but not quite executing those uh, chances that have come their way. Tough kick for the outside half. Seizes the ball, sweep across the face of the uprights. So we arrive at half time with the Newport Saracens leading by three tries to one and by 17 points to 11.
the beat of us with the good news up at the um, I guess you need a summer tour, you know, we're a good player, yeah. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium for this uh, Division 4 Cup Final between the Newport Saracens and Tonna. Saracens lead 17 to 11, but well, crucially perhaps by three tries to one, the Saracens playing in a senior National Cup Final for the uh, very first time. A club uh, founded in 1927 and can include former players such as Bobby Windsor, Charlie Faulkner, Eddie Butler and Jason Foster. So Tonner to restart. They've come close once or twice. We need to take the chances when the try line beckons. And Burroughs starts the second half as he finished the first. Lavender. Second, uh, second wind for the tight head prop. Well, he, he's wearing actually wearing three, but he's on the loose head. The jersey size of the uh, tight head was more adequate for his his uh, substantial frame. Choose your words very carefully, Rhys. <laughs> well taken by uh, Tom James, scrum half. Foley. I thought for a second he might have moved over from Leinster, the winger of uh, Newport Saracens. Lavender picks up. Another drive takes play close to the Tonna. 10 meter line kick ricochets off the tonner player and they will get the penalty for a little uh, indiscretion off the ball yeah sam bevan they put the kick through and he, uh, immediately knew it might have been the wrong option he just pulled the tonner player back you know as well did milk it a bit i think it was gavin richards but he uh, got the job done got the penalty So what have Con Tonner got planned here? Any number of forwards in midfield. The Saracens player receiving treatment. I think it's Adam Davis, the centre. Yeah, try scorer, one of the try scorers in the first half. So back in the ranks. That's Kieran Cole. Looks to get his darts firing and does so. A flat pass into midfield. McPhee takes the ball from Josh Hughes, the number eight. Cole again. Dug out by Evans. Now then, here's a half chance. Good hands closer to that try line. Five meters out. Quick ball is what's needed. Lloyd Evans digs deep, looking for the numbers. McPhee was facing the uh, the ruck there. No harm done. It's on its way. Now then, where are the runners? Could be something on here. On his own. It's still there. Evans held back. Penalty. Uh, there could be. Uh, a stiffer sanction than a penalty here. Yeah, referee wastes no time whatsoever in going into his pocket. And it's Kyle Tucker. When he comes round, we'll see the yellow card. Ah, he's on his way already. Ben Thomas over from the left. Well, that was a penalty there. <laughs> he got up. I think he knew immediately where he was going. I think we saw that straight away. Tonner's hopefully, and you know that's their intent. Second half, you know, 
quick ball, move it, get it out, uh, get it out wide, and they did that exceptionally well. And I think we saw there was opportunities to do that in the first half. They just didn't quite execute it. Um, so if that's going to be their uh, plan of, at uh, of attack second half, then uh, it could work. But again, at the very outset of the game, we saw the Saracens take it up and take it forward, and they were successful, uh, but they probably made the wrong decision when they put the try to put the kick through. So, uh, um, you know, if, if Tonic could score here now or do something here, then, uh, you know, be a great start for them in the second half and uh, bring them back uh, as close together. Yeah, Sam Bevan is the uh, Saracens player receiving treatment, a key player for the uh, the Newport side. They can ill afford to lose uh, their outside half and the playmaker. Yeah, it could be a double whammy, really. You know, they've lost uh, Kyle Tucker to the bin. I know Sam Bevan getting treatment on his right knee, and he looks in some considerable pain there. That's a cruel blow to the uh, Saracens. He won't want to depart. He'll try and run it off, perhaps. but clearly in some discomfort at the moment. It's not going to get any better wind as well because, uh, you know, Tonner are either going to tap and go or go for a scrum or they're going to be under pressure and they'll have to be defending with 14 men. Well, they have the advantage of the extra man in the scrum should they want him. Are they uh, going to tap and go, I think? Looks like it. Taken up by Kieran Cole. A metre short. Evans looks for the runners and finds a willing number eight in Joshua Hughes. And Tonner have started the second half on fire and brings them back within a point. A well taken try. The initial thrust then from uh, Kieran Cole. And quick recycling found Joshua Hughes on hand. Evans looking towards the open side. But that was all Hughes really because Hughes was ready, willing, and able on the narrow side. Yeah, six tries this uh, season for Josh Hughes. He can add another one. And this one, a very special one, in the Division 4 Cup Final at Principality. Some five metres beyond the 22. So probably nearing 30 metres with the angle to give Tonner the lead for the second time in this match. It's looking good from here, right behind the kicker, and over it goes, and Tonner have the lead some five minutes into the second half. Newport Saracens down to 14 men and an opportunity for Tonner to press home their advantage. And a well-rehearsed uh, free kick there. And, uh, you know, we tap and go, and everybody was on the open side, and the number eight coming round onto the blind side there to uh, uh, to get over in the gap there. So um, coaches would be happy with that. Players will be happy with that. That uh, Some of the work that they've been uh, doing on the Tuesday and Thursday this week has come to fruition on the, on the Principality this afternoon. Yeah, interesting to note that uh, Tonner were down by 14 points to Kremlin in the Shield final two years ago to bounce back to win 52 points to 19. So we know they've got the stamina. Can they go all the way? Once again, third, second time in three seasons for Tonna at the Principality Stadium. Not a bad exit, but not the greatest either. Pridgeant had plenty of time. Surely he would have liked another 20 metres or so on that one. Yeah, the Saracens defeated a new Panteg by 12 to 8 in the semi-final, a close fought contest, as indeed was a semi-final for Tonner, who defeated Santwood Major away by 28 points to 26. Josh Hughes with ball in hand. Nice step from uh, Fisher. Again, proving the narrow side. That's McPhee, the captain. Well tackled, just on the Tonner 10 metre line. Jones, the prop. Should be room out wide if they can move it quickly. The Saracens defending a little narrow at the moment. A chance perhaps uh, for Josh Ebbett. 
That was knocked back by Dex Lewis. Turned on his heel and just about managed to get the ball away. But it's advantage Tonner. They're back in the Saracens 22. I would never have said that this was the start we'd have to the, the second half after the first. I thought, well, you know, Sari's sitting comfortable. But they're not sure what was said at half-time to Tonna, but they've come out with a real spark in the play. And like you said, Giran, they've found the gaps that were there out wide. Maybe that's the message that they had. Yeah, and they got round them again, didn't they? Sort of, uh, um, And they're using the ball very well and then trying to keep it in field as well. Sort of, they probably wish... They could continue very quickly here to keep the pace of the game up as well. I think that's going to be important for them. Great support for both these teams in the stands. Newport Saracens, a growing club with a newly established, thriving mini and juniors club. And the eights and the nines and the fifteens, all of whom are supporting the team in the stands today. Saracens need all the support they can get here because Tonner are pressing once more. But it starts with a hook and a throw in. Great to take there by Andrew Millard, the Tonner lock forward. Stepping back, that's the number eight. He scored the try at the top of the second half, Josh Hughes, and here he goes again. Just about manages to go to ground. Where are the support runners this time? Fisher. Takes on the Saracens defence. Great play here by Tonner. Out it comes again. Bridgen, the fullback, into the hands of Ben Thomas. Takes two uh, Tonner players to bring him to ground, but Tonner have come out on fire in the second half. I was going to say, it should have potentially been a penalty then for Tonner. It's just a rip on the floor, but it's worked out because they've got a five metre line as well. But they are going wide, finding space. McPhee, the flanker, and captain is at uh, scrum half for this line out. Taking down the front, in goes McPhee. The hooker, as ever, is there, Kieran Cole. Slowly but surely, the uh, that line out has been uh, sacked. So Evans arrives. Ah, yeah, the best laid plans of mice and men. Often gang awry. I think it was great work, legal or not, by the Saris number four. I think it's Shotton there, Elliot Shotton. He just came in at the side potentially, but did enough, but not enough to catch the attention of the officials. So just to remind ourselves, the Saracens are down to uh, 14 men. Kyle Tucker still cooling his heels on the naughty boys chair. So it's eight against seven, unless one of the backs has come in for the Saracens. Liam Foley, the wing three-quarter, finds himself uh, on the side of this Saracens scrum. It's a great angle, this referee cam, just to see, just to see the faces of the front row just before the uh, the contact. Well, Tonner got the drive on, but Kirk Lewis had ball in hand, and it does remarkably well to get the ball away. The ball has landed by uh, halfway, but the touchdown's flag is up, well, about 15 meters from the Saracens try line. This is where Tonner have to think here now, isn't it? person down in the forwards, do they catch and drive or they have been having success out wide, it'll be interesting what they do now, <laughs> got to win it first though, Indeed. got to win the line out first it seems to be the uh, um, for all the teams so far the line out is the curse of every, every team at the moment in the, in the opposition 22 and Newport Saracen suddenly uh, up and out on their 22, Sam Bevan no hint of that mm. earlier injury, Dex Lewis has a go Hauled down on the uh, on his own 10 meter line and throwing his arms up in uh, frustration. There, there's the center, Adam Davis, or maybe not.
Tom James counting the fingers. He is the treasurer. <laughs> It's good to see you get in clubs, you know. You think of committees, you think of treasurers and chairmen as being slightly older gentlemen who have finished, you know, playing, but it's not the case, is it? There's lots of clubs out there being run by, by players. Yeah, and I think that's one of the th tasks that we're looking at in the community game, sort of like, you know, what are the structures that happen at the clubs and trying to get more volunteers you don't have to play but if you're playing is there anything else that you can do to support the club and uh, and we are seeing a, a, a range of diversity right across our clubs right now and seeing young people coming into uh, um, helping out clubs whether it's from a social media perspective comms perspective you know look at i think I think of Cardigan down west. It's sort of, uh, I think the three three quarters of the whole committee is a um, a female committee, which is you know it's great to see people right across the board and supporting, and that's what we need. We need to get people to go there, support from minis, juniors, youth, the men's game, the women's game, and um, it all helps. And that's what we want to make sure it happens right across for the future as well. So Nicky Fisher, he's kicked. Longer penalty, so he doesn't lack the confidence. 40 meters plus. Sends it high and handsome once again, but this time narrowly misses the mark. So the score remains at 18 points to 17. George Ovi, who has come on for Thomas James for the time being, a head injury assessment for the treasurer so no longer a blazer and a gladstone bag for the treasurer then <laughs> bevan restarts left footed sends it long bounces up on a flat piece of ground on the far side and the the surface has held up well it has to be said great work by the saracens Still advantage for the Saracens. James takes the ball into contact. Still advantage. Devlin, the outside half, gets involved. Still down to 14 men. A minute or two left on the uh, yellow card for Kyle Tucker. Ovi the replacement. That's a good angle and barnstorming run. It's a, no distinct advantage, so they'll get back for the penalty. It's the closest the Saracens have come to the uh, Tonna try line in the second half. Big decision here. What are they going to do? But Bevan is looking at the corner, no, but no. the uh, indication is that he'll go for the posts. It's close, isn't it? Too close to call. Yeah, and he's still uh, unsure about the, his knee as well. They're getting some treatment on it. And it's uh, not the greatest thing to be looking at when you're kicking a goal principality, thinking, is my knee going to hold up? But the change at nine for the Saracens, Thomas James, you know, he's had a, a knock to the head, I think. Their physio came on and said, you know, you, you have to go off. That's the protocol now. Didn't want to go. But that'll be a big loss for them as well. He was running the ship, keeping everyone in order. We've just seen uh, Nicky Fisher miss a long-range penalty down the far end, which would have taken... Uh, Tonner to a four-point advantage. This attempt from Sam Bevan could mean that the Saracens might lead by two. Left-footed. Uh, it's still suffering a little, I think, from that earlier injury. Didn't strike it well at all. Some nice footballing skills from Burrows. 
tackle forces him to release possession advantage Tonner it's quite similar really to the first cup final we saw today the, the game loses its shape a little bit it's really really close a point in it two points in it in the first one and it seems to be the same pattern here you know you just the nerves creep in a little bit the closer you get to 80 minutes and it's, it's a one point game no one wants to lose it So replacements for Tonna, Ben Williams, and Ross Price. So Lloyd Evans has departed, as has Luke Payne for Tonna. Dexler was that's a wicked ball, wicked bouncing ball. Now then, time to pick his spot. May have wanted another yard or two on that one, but it's safely into touch. Game finally poised now, isn't it? Two missed penalties, still one point the difference. And Newport Saracens back to a full complement of 15. Ben Williams had come on there in the 21 shirt for Tonna. Plays in today's cup final. I think he missed out on the last cup final. He, he broke his shoulder at the semi-final stage, so super for him to get on. Yeah, every player has a, a story to tell. And uh, 15 or 23 of the players on duty today will have another chapter added to their story. Hughes. Worked well with Callum McPhee, hasn't he? Uh, the seven and eight. And not for the first time, possession lost in contact. And Fisher mm. sends it back the way it came. I think the Saracens are lucky there. You know, usually it's a it's a knock-on advantage. They they had plenty of options of what they were going to do with the ball. They decided to kick it away, but the referee Gareth Jones deemed well no advantage. You you will come back for a scrum. Well, I'm looking towards the Newport Saracen side, and there are lots of hands on knees. Uh, I don't see that in the Tonner ranks, and I think you see second half, probably in the earlier game as well, where it. Uh can become a little bit scrappy as well. You know, there's a few more, few mistakes happening right now. You know, the errors, error count is probably going up a little bit as well. But also, you can see right now, perhaps some players will have a little bit of a more of a rest as well to uh, to get a breather as well. But um, as you said there, if I think Tonner there when they had the ball earlier, they kept it tight. They should have. They should remember what they did in that first five, ten minutes of the second half. Try to get outside them. They did have their success outside them. So um, they've got to keep believing in that. Sometimes when the tight games happen, you tend to revert to, oh, let's make sure we don't lose the ball. Let's take the easy option. McPhee is just going off for some treatment. He's got a bit of blood in, in the nose. So he'll be replaced, but I think this will be temporary because he is the, the Tonner captain. So the placement on the near side is Jordan Howells for the Newport Saracens. Apparently he's got the best lungs in the club. He did a little bit more weight behind that uh, front row on that occasion. Kirk Lewis again looking for the, uh, the openings. Good work by the uh, number eight Saracens. Slowly but surely moving forward. No gaps at the moment in the Tonner defence. If in doubt, give it to Lawiner. What an offload that was. Raymond, Raymond for the try line, hold down from behind. Advantage to the Newport Saracens. And this, if it comes, 
could give them an unassailable lead. Over they go. Dex Lewis, the fullback. Johnny on the spot. Have a look at this. What a lovely pass this was. They'll be playing this in the club out of my class for years to come. Raymond hauled down, but just did enough to set the ball up. The initial thrust from the replacement scrum half and Dex Lewis up from fullback. And that's a fourth try for Newport Saracens. And you've got to give um, John Lavender credit there. Great carrying of the ball, great offload as well. And um, I know sometimes he may not be getting to the breakdowns as uh, quick as some of the others, but he's quite happy to stay there in midfield and, uh, and take the ball and uh, continue it. And uh, it's um, fair play credit to him because that offload and that acceleration there that he did, just getting again, brought in two or three tacklers, uh, created that try. So... Uh, you know, well done to John as well. Yeah, someone said either you will win, said there are no gaps appearing. Well, he just makes them, doesn't he? You know, and, and that's the difference. But he had the ability, as you said, Geraint, to get the right handed off road uh, as well. I wonder whether that could be the defining moment in this match. And uh, we have a change of kicker. Sam Bevan, we saw that he was in difficulty earlier on with the penalty attempt. So this is uh, Liam Foley, right footed. Let's see what he can do. It's a good effort. And the supporters in the stand on the far side had a far better look at it than I did. Struck it so nonchalantly. And Newport Saracens lead Tonner by 24 points to 18. <laughs> Players on the outside for Dex Lewis, but no way in the world that he was passing that one. So Tonner have plenty of time, but they have it all to do. Gathered in by Burrows. He's been good in contact and, and carrying the ball for Newport Saris. Yeah, been impressed with him. He impressed with Monmouth as well, as did this man, Kirk Lewis. Kevin Richards couldn't quite get his hands on the ball. Bevan sends it low. High bouncing ball for Nicky Fisher to deal with. De Dex Lewis leaves it for Foley. Been impressed by this uh, young man as well. Neat step, takes him past the first Tonner defender. James off his right peg. Ovi, replacement scrum half. Shotton, the ever-present, ever-willing Burrows. Change of direction, that's where the, uh, the runners are. Bevan puts it in behind the, uh, the Tonner defence. Not to hurry up here, Raymond gets the tackle in on Gavin Richards and the Saracens are there in the numbers. Richards can't get the ball to ground, the Saracens hold him up. Have they won the, the scrum, I wonder? Yes, they have. Great work by Saracens. Super kick chase. Not just the one chasing after, look, you know, they're like a pack of wolves hunting there, three of them. Raymond, Bevan, and I think it's Kirk Lewis again, is it, you know? Not much chance to get uh, out of his grasp there. Well, we haven't spoken yet, have we, of the uh, Player of the Match Award, so supported by uh, Go.Compare. Get the thinking caps on. Got a few players uh, putting their hands up, I think. We've already mentioned Burroughs, we've already mentioned Kirk Lewis, and on the uh, Tonner side... You know, you've got uh, the likes of Nicky Fisher, obviously, Lloyd Evans played well, and the back row of Callum McPhee and Josh Hughes. I wouldn't forget John Lavender as well. You know, <laughs> How could you? You can't forget about him. I just watched him there when they scored the try. I think he was positioning himself in the backfield on the halfway line just in case uh, Tonner won and uh, did a relieving kick. So uh, um, if, um, he, he's using all his experience to uh, to cover all the gaps uh, well, if, for the team. If you award Lavender the player of the match award, we'll need maintenance to sort out the roof, I think. Twenty minutes left on the clock, midway through the first half, the uh, second half, into the final quarter. Newport Saracens lead Tonner in the uh, East-West clash by 24 points to 18. But as we've seen time and time again, that scoreline could change. 
Lewis picks up at the base, spins, turns. Not quite. Good Tottenham scrum there. Getting pressure on, not making it easy. Yeah, the scrum has been pretty solid from Tonner all throughout this game. Josh Jones, Kieran Cole, Johnny Thomas still on in that front row. On the dead ball line was Nicky Fisher safely into touch, but the pressure is still on that Tonner try line. You know, you've got a perfect platform there of Tonner, and the onus has to fall on the nine to clear. There's not, not much point passing the ball 10, 12, 15 yards back to your dead ball line and asking your 10 to clear. It has to be the nine's job there for me. I think, I think they should run it, personally. <laughs> I don't think this will go far somehow. The forwards gather round, but they lost the ball forward. It's a chance gone begging. And these were chances that uh, Saracens had in the first half as well. You know, line outs near the uh, Tonner's uh, try line, opportunity to score, and they didn't capitalize in the first half. You just hope that uh, that doesn't come back to haunt them later on in the game. And we saw Burroughs there throwing into the line out. He's moved over to the tight head, and Sam Parcell has come in at hooker. Burroughs, one of the youngest players in this uh, Newport Saracens squad, Newport High Academy graduate. And you'll have seen uh, the Newport Academy probably uh, this year, Reese. Yeah, uh, Robert Sadoli there in, uh, in charge at uh, Newport High. Running a very, very good programme there, bringing a lot of good young talent through. And, uh, you know, a word on, on Burroughs, really. You know, you go from two over to the tight head. You know, if you've got that in your armoury, you know, you'll go a long way, especially in the front row, being able to play across there. And, you know, it's... it's his uh, broken field play has been excellent as well. And it stays like this, you know. Regions, you know, clubs with, within the Prem can, can look at these teams and go, hang on, let's have a look at this guy, let's get him in. Yeah, Newport Saracens, a feeder club to uh, the Black and Ambers and to the Dragons, of course. Another line-out goes wrong. And as you said, with somebody like Burroughs, it's actually quite nice. People often say, oh, they play in the schools and college, they do, you know, and then they go to the academy, then if they don't make it, they don't go anywhere else. But then you've got a player like uh, Burroughs here, who was part of, as you said, Robert Sidoli's uh, uh, schools programme. And it's nice to see him here. He, he's rewarding his local club. He's, re going, going, he's playing for Newport Saracens. He's playing uh, regularly on the field of play here. And uh, he played in the district competition as well. And that's what rugby's all about. It's not just about going to that top level there. We want people in the community. And seeing somebody like Burroughs here, is, uh, it, it's, it is nice to have that. And obviously somebody like Robert would be proud of that. It's not just about making players for international rugby. And you, Reese, have been commenting on the schools and colleges this year. I've noticed... Uh, a, a, an improvement in the standards, certainly, in a highly competitive tournament. Yeah, there's there's two conferences there, A and B now, and uh, it's a little incentive for, for and two new new teams have come in. Christ College come in as well as as a Slavera. Oh, sorry, three and Dufferin and Man have come in as well, and it, it's 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 great to see. And I, I just wanted to add to what you said about. Um, players you know once they leave an academy some walk away from the game but this is what it's all about if you love rugby then you know you should find your club and you could end up scoring great tries like this at principality well we just saw uh, Foley there I mean uh, on the wing for Newport Saracens he's been with the club since he was 15 years of age and a member of the 2010 youth cup final squad and now his son plays for the club under nines you know that's continuity isn't it yeah, you know, I, I'm guessing, you know, it is tough if you're in an academy and you're 18, 19, 20, even up to the age of 23, and then you all of a sudden don't make the grid. You, you think, well, I'll walk away from the game, but, you know, please don't. You know, you know, no one's bigger than the game. Get involved with your local club, wherever you may be, if, if you've moved away from home. Yeah, that is the challenge, isn't it? If you, you've got to admit to yourself, perhaps, well, perhaps I'm not that good enough. 
but do I go back to my village club and say, look, boys, can I come back? Well, you go, others will follow. And that's what we need in the community game. So Tonna, not quite chasing the game, but they need a score. Fisher over the head of James Raymond. Can he keep the ball in play? Just about onto Dex Lewis, has to hurry. Held by Richards, Gavin Richards. And Tonna piling, it's still there though for the Saracens. Foley, no, referee calls him back for a Tonna penalty. Now then, this could be it. Oh, it's a six point game here, Win. You know, it's just a, anything could happen. Tonna have been uh, asleep for long periods of this second half, but they're still in the mix. And what did Tonna do here? You know, for earlier in the second half, they tapped it and had a pre planned move. The way they, they're gathering around it, I think they're, they're going to go for the corner, aren't they? It is a risk, as we've seen in both cup finals. Lineouts haven't been as clean as, as both teams would like. And they put faith in their in their lineout operation. Five meters and for Tonna, five meters to glory, perhaps. It's still too close to call. That's the first element, and Newport Saras is not competing, concentrating on the drive which now comes through a Kieran Cole. Ever closer, inching forward towards the uh, Newport Saracens try line. The ball is tucked up under the arms uh, and shoulders there of uh, the lock forward, Andrew Millard. Hughes again looking for his second, not quite this time, but it's there on a plate. Quick ball for the captain, McPhee. Will it be a captain's try? Not this time. Plenty of runners out wide for Tonner, but they come on the narrow side for Cole. Josh Hughes is there again. Still they come. Millard oh. to the left winger. Not quite, Ben Thomas. That was a hospital pass. He did a red cross written all over it. Four Newport Saracen defenders on this one. Oh, thanks very much for that one. But they had numbers, Tonna, on the other side. You know, you need an old head there. You need clear lines of communication to where the ball goes. You had Lavender out wide for the Newport Saracens. You had Raymond there as well, but that's a chance gone. That was a big chance. And, you know, it was so obvious from up here. We could see it on the, on the other side, and they kept going the same way, same way, same way. One quick uh, switch of play, which they scored from in, uh, earlier on a free kick from a switch of play. If they had done that again, they, um, I'm sure the five points would have been uh, been had by Tonner. But, you know, right now they're going to put pressure on the, on the Saracens uh, line-out here. Um, they've, been, they've managed to steal a couple. And the line-out, you know, has been the weakness of probably, you could say, both teams a little bit here. Um, and it's, this is a pressurised line-out for them. That's Parcel, the replacement hooker. They've also replaced Shotton at uh, lock forward with Josh Davidson, I think, was on. Tom Parry is on for Turner as well. We're in 20, I think, there. And uh, Johnny Thomas has gone. Good shift, a tight head for Just him. Can say, yeah, not often do you see a tight head forward last, what is it, 65 minutes? 70, perhaps? Especially when you've been propping against John Lavender <laughs> for, the, for the 65 minutes. But Lavender is still there, smelling sweetly, no doubt. But what about that pass? Secured five meters out from their own try line. <laughs> Thought for a split second they're going to run it, but they left it to Kirk Lewis. Better angle this time, and he sends the ball high and true down towards the 10 meter line. Great exit. <laughs> if sure that, if that is what, what was meant. Well, yeah, was that the plan? I'm not sure. Kirk Lewis, bang. Don't think it is plan B nor C. A 
Tom Parry, no man's land there in the middle of that ton of line out, but he did the duty in the end, supporting the front of the line jumper. Joshua Hughes. Dug out by Ben Williams. Fisher bringing in Jason Evans, not on the charge from deep. Easily dealt with by Newport Saracens defence. Fisher again. The gap opens up, though. Could be something on here. It has to be. Surely Richards for the corner. Newport Saracens protesting, but all their protestations will be in vain because Tonner are back within a point. I think they might have been looking there for some form of maybe obstruction, but in the end, you've got to play what the, you know, the referee sees, and that's... Oh, no, it, looked, it seemed well, to have been okay there. The but contact, I think, was initiated by the Saracens, and yeah. that's the, a big part of it these days. But again, Tonner went to look on the outside and have been successful again, and uh, it's again, hopefully, now they don't... You know, close the door, think, oh, let's keep it tight now. Yeah. If they get this conversion, no, they, they've got to keep playing. There's opportunities for them. Well, read the Neath Advertiser, whatever the newspaper is, uh, the local newspaper, or the ton of times. Next week. Now then, pressure kick for Fisher. 252 points to his name this season. But this could be the kick of the season for the Tonner outside half to give his side the lead going into the last few minutes he's pushed it wide so it's still there Newport Saracens 24 Tonner 23 another nail biter yeah well they're asking for crossing there Sam Bevan pleading for crossing but it wasn't given, the try did stand, but no conversion. It's a one-point game win, this is going to go to the wire. It's a very thin wire, he's... <laughs> so Bevan to restart. The dying minutes of this Division 4 Cup clash. Newport Saracens with four tries. On their side of the log, the Tonner not done yet. Under 10 minutes remaining. And the supporters of both sides in fine voice. Change in the front row, I think, there for Tonner win. Joshua yeah. Jones leaving. Yes, and David Thomas comes on for the remainder of this match. Clean take of the line out, but OV can't quite gather. And Tonna are there in numbers, and they've turned it over. That was Kieran Cole. Couldn't quite secure possession, but Tonna will get the scrum. And as the forwards get to know one another better, it's the finishers of the replacements and neither side can ill afford to lose a play at this stage it's happened before and the referee i think just wants a word take a sting out of that immediately he's had a good game as well i think gareth johns excellent in the middle We're not party to what is being said. Well, Ewan Burrows has gone off for the Newport Saracens and he's done a remarkably good shift, not only at uh, hooker, but has stood in at tight head prop as well. On for him is Kieran Pugsley with uh, Parcel in the middle of that Newport Saracens front row. That's a free kick for Tonner. Yeah, early engagement from the Saracens. 
Here's a guy looking to make a name for himself, David Thomas. That's Ross Price. Number 20 is Tom Parry. Yeah, your enthusiasm to carry and pass the contact sometimes works against you, doesn't it? You know, that's where communication is key. The people behind you can see what's happening, you know. Stay on your feet, go to the floor, you know, help your teammates around you. But you're, you're, in, the, you're in the thick of it at Principality Stadium. You just want to make the yards. And especially at this time of the game now, one-point game. You know, they've probably got people screaming and shouting on the touchline as well, trying to give advice. Players are getting excited. They want to. They want to score without sometimes just staying calm, doing the simple things, doing those things really, really well. Another replacement for Newport Saracen sees Cordell Wilson on for Dex Lewis at fullback. Oh, this line out proving problematic once again, and it's no surprise that Tonner opt for the scrum. And it's, interesting, and it's interesting about when you talk about subs, it's sort of it's probably the dilemma for all clubs when they come here because they want to, and you, you speak to the coaches, they want all the players to get time on the field of play. And they're conscious of that. They don't want to leave anybody out and not given that opportunity to play at the Principality Stadium. So substitutions can become really difficult for the management staff as well because games like this thinking, do I take him off? Do I put this player on? That player's doing exceptionally well. But uh, it's nice that they are making the subs, you know, because these are opportunities they may never get again. Richards over from the right wing, finding Ben Thomas, looking to weave his way past the... Newport Saracens defenders into the last five minutes. The game on a knife edge, 24 points to 23. Tonner need to bring Fisher closer to the action, closer to the post. They're into the Saracens half of the field. That's uh, David Thomas again with ball in hand. Lays it back for Ben Williams. Jason Evans. Super tackle by John Lavender. Looks like he's going to play 80 minutes. Impressive from the big man. Fisher, hold down, advantage, Tonner. Now then. It's going to be a big kick for Fisher if he decides to have a go. Well, he's got the distance win, hasn't he? We saw him in the, in the first half, half knocking over from about 48, 49 metres. It's on the angle. Oh. And they, oh, they're going for it. Wow. Going for glory. And fair play, there was no hesitation there, was it? The, the skipper, Callum, went over there. He looked to the post. Fair play, Nicky Fisher looked to the post. Well, it's a brave decision, but then again, when you look back at the line-outs on both sides, uh, they've had their problems. But that pick-and-go initially brought a try for Tonner. Right. Is he <laughs> the coolest guy in the Principality Stadium? Well, if we see the uh, slightly wider angle here, right in front of Nicky Fisher, on the 10 yards, away from him, guess who's there? John Lavender. He's staring at him. Yeah. Added pressure. Well, John Lavender <laughs> doesn't want to see now. He's pulled his jersey over his head. But you can't miss him, can you? A bit of kidology going on from John Lavender, I think. This could be the kick of the match, then. Struck it well, will it carry? Oh, oh, off the post! Oh, it's still on for oh, Tonner! Oh, Josh Hughes! Oh, my goodness! And who brings it out? Oh, oh Kirk Lewis! Kirk Lewis! A tale of two eights, isn't it? Kirk Lewis to uh, Tom James. Pat James, rather. Well, how close was that? The thickness of a cheap coat of paint. James again, bringing it on some uh, solid citizens onto the ball. All Newport Saracen need to do is to hold on to possession, really, for a minute or two. Gentlemen, the Go Dot Compare Player of the Game Award awaits you. Any thoughts? 
Well, I've got plenty of thoughts, <laughs> definitely, you know, but... Uh, Can you crystallise those thoughts, though? Oh, just watching this again. Oh, so close from uh, Nicky Fisher. But, you know, Geraint said it, you know, the, the guy who collected that and, and, and cleaned things up for, for the Sarans, Saracens for me, you know, Kirk Lewis, he's, he stood out for, for his team, but in the final in general for me. But, Geraint, what are your thoughts? I'm a Kirk Lewis. I, for me, unless something dramatically changes in the last couple of minutes, uh, uh, but I think Kirk Lewis is the way he's sort of tidied up at the back of the scrums. He's carried... He's been over the ball. He's kicked. He's kicked. You know, he tidied that area up there. I will say this. I, I, you've got to put a, a shout out to John Lavender, though. I know, we, you know, the, the way he sort of uh, has marshaled the, the team there, the way he's talked, the way he galvanises the, the players around him. And uh, I know he's taken a lot of breaks during the game as well. Like, he might be doing one right now. But when he's had the ball in his hand... Yeah, I think his rapport with the referee yeah. has been great as well, you know. And that's that's vital, how you communicate with people. But I think we both uh, both agree, Geraint, that the, the uh, player of the match in this uh, Division 4 final should go to uh, Kirk Lewis. Well, for the yeah. second time yeah. in the space of a week, Kirk Lewis is awarded the man of the match. He was man of the match for Monmouthshire. Last weekend in the inter district final, and he's uh, secured the double here. Not only, well, it looks as if Newport Saracens are going to win this game, but in any event, whatever happens, Kirk Lewis is the go dot compare player of the match. One last throw of the dice then for the Newport Saracens. Popped up by Jordan Howells there, that flank forward. Yeah, Tonner have emptied the bench as well, you know, to give. Everybody a, a taste of principality. Fair play to them for that. Being one point from winning this cup final, everyone gets a game. Saracens finishing strongly on the Tonner 22. Man of the match, there he is, Kirk Lewis with the headgear. Pressing forward. Tonner still tackling. Looking for a turnover. Sam Bevan, here's the man of the moment. John with, Lavender. With a side step. <laughs> well, he sets the standard for the team with his experience and mentality, according to the notes that I got. And they're great notes, by the way, from uh, the Newport Saracens management. But Lavender is a leader on and off the field. Bevan holds on to possession. In goes James Raymond. Would have liked to have seen him with the, in a bit of space. Kirk Lewis. Turns his back against the storm. And the Saracen supporters in fine voice. Trying to eat the clock, uh, Geraint, but it, it is always a risk to do this, isn't it? Well, they're so tightly bunched there. One quick turn over here. And Tonner are, are, uh, can go there. I think that that's it. it. That's it. That is it. Sam Bevan sends it uh, high into the middle chair. And Newport Saracens have defeated Tonner in the Division 4 Cup Final here at the Principality Stadium. Look at the scenes of joy, scenes of delight. First time in a National Cup Final. First visit to the uh, Principality Stadium and go, they go home with the spoils. Commiserations to Tonner. They fought valiantly, came up short in the end. Yes, just the thickness of a coat of paint. That's all it took. And Fisher couldn't quite manage to convert the penalty which could have given the victory to the West Wales side. It's finished at the Principality Stadium. Newport Saracens 24, Tonna agonisingly 23. Well, a cup final again, worthy of the competition, uh, Geraint. And we're looking uh, forward to the uh, next two games as we climb a little bit higher, hopefully. Yeah, I think, it, as you said, it's sort of an excellent game. Two very good teams, very sort of... Uh, um, it's difficult to say who's going to win halfway through the game, if we're, if we're honest there. And, uh, but Saracens probably did the control element. Uh, Tonner tried to try to get on the outside but um, the, probably the team that 
probably had the territory there would have been uh, would have been Saracens and uh, you've got to give credit to you know we, we called called around Kirk Lewis the the player of the match and uh, you know also good to see youngsters like you and Burroughs playing there who've been part of that there I thought the centers as we said earlier ran hard Liam Foley ran hard to score this try there as well so uh, um, a very deserved uh, win by Newport Saracens, but also a credit to Tonner for uh, for staying close, for trying to move the ball. They had opportunities through uh, a bit of possession and uh, the kicks at goals, but uh, for me, uh, I thought Saracens deserved that uh, uh, win. Yeah, we, we just saw um, a lovely shot there about a minute ago of uh, Kyle Tucker and his dad, and uh, Newport Saracens have dedicated uh, this cup final to the memory of uh, Dale Tucker, brother and son, a former um, Welsh Rugby League under-19 cap and uh, Dragon Hat centre who died uh, suddenly earlier this season, and uh, uh, he is certainly in the thoughts of the uh, Newport Saracens player this afternoon, and they'll be absolutely thrilled and delighted when they lift that cup and to the memory of Dale Tucker. So handshakes all round, a game played in uh, excellent spirits, and the last man, uh, but one through the tunnel, is uh, John Lavender, who uh, just widens that uh, archway a little bit uh, as he uh, trundles through, but he's lasted the 80 minutes. Yeah, absolutely brilliant performance, and not just lasting the 80 minutes. Yes, he wasn't up with play all the time, but, it, you know, you could see he used his experience. It, like like Scott Cunell used to do, he knew the ball was going to come to him, and it, and it inevitably did for Lavender. He created space, great offloads, defensively sound. Um, many standout performances for me for the for the Saris, you know, Lavender, Burroughs, Kirk Lewis was... The uh, player of the match, but you know it, it could have gone. It could have gone to any of those three, really. And it means a lot to, to Newport Saris, like you said, win their first national senior final, one from one. And I think, you know, they'll get promotion if they they win their games in hand. And uh, I, I see the Saris coming coming back to Principality potentially next year as well. They've got enough in the tank. Yeah, Newport. Uh Sarans eight points behind uh, New Pontig in the uh, Division 4 East Championship with three games in hand. And a word for the referee and his uh, cohorts there, Gareth Johns and... Uh, yeah, Padre Gatur and Lang, Gareth Simmons and, and Chris Lewis. They're all, all apart. It's not just the three that are there. You know, there's always a fourth official there as well, or a third official in this case, you know, and... They, they deal with substitutions, and it's a, it's a lottery at this level, I can tell you. It is, and seeing Chris there, Chris is the actual the secretary of the Referee Society uh, for Wales and does an uh, outstanding job there, and uh, which helps to run the district referees. We have a good relationship with, with Chris and, uh, you know, support them in their aim to actually try and get more match officials. So, you know, as part of this uh, road to Prasby is to give them as many opportunities as we possibly uh, possibly can because hopefully that'll hopefully may recruit referees as well you look at Patrick there you know a youngster who referees around uh, in the Cardiff area I've seen him referee this year he refereed a Canton versus St Albans game which uh, isn't the easiest games to referee and did exceptionally well so uh, it's nice to see uh, see young referees coming through the system as well it certainly is so the runners up medals being handed out to the vanquished Tonner side. And the person providing the medals there, that's Steve, Steve Owen, who's the uh, elected district member of, uh, uh, of the area. So Steve has just come on to the council and the community game board uh, in November. So, uh, and I know sort of uh, obviously disappointed in terms of uh, the area with uh, Tonner not uh, uh, coming through. But uh, Steve is from uh, Pothmadog. Uh, sorry, not Pothmadog, from uh, Pontry de Ven. And uh, I went quite, to... Quite close. Yeah, so I just... <laughs> I said, it was P, wasn't it? I got it right, did I? But, um, yeah, but 100 miles different. I know, but, uh, yeah, fair play. For Pembrokeshire boys, isn't I know, it? They haven't travelled far. But I'll, I'll never forget, I went to Pontry de Ven this year with Steve and... We, he had to give me the whole tour of Pontry de Ven, where Richard Burton lived, uh, where Ivor Emmanuel sang, and uh, um, we had a great day out and watching 
Pondry the Ven, Quarai. Yeah, you. Um, it's a it's a walk from the clubhouse to the field in yeah, Pondry the Ven. It is. But uh, this is great as well. Look at the Saris boys, right? You can't see them in this tight shot, but they they all are there applauding the Torna boys come through, you know. And that that's that's what rugby's all about, isn't it? You know, you can see them shaking hands there. They've applauded every single member of Torna come through. Two two teams in a final. Yes, one has to lose, but you know we're all in it together. And that's the, the traditions and values of our game, isn't it? And I think, um, you know, we've got to make sure we maintain that and keep that uh, in the game right through whatever age it, uh, it's about. Because uh, you go on the field, you, you're you physical, you're in the contact area, and right after the game, you shake each other's hands, compliment the winners, congratulate them. And, um, you know, that's how you make friends for life as well. It's important to do that. Well, you see the same faces again. You'll play against them again. Remember that. Go for a chat in the bar afterwards, you know, about what happened to this scrum and what that, who you got next week, you know. It, it, it's what rugby's all about. It's gone missing from the game a little bit, you know, because people have a shower and they disappear. Well, you know, go and talk to the, your opposition, have a chat, evaluate things, and you'll see them again in the cup, in the league again, and in seasons to come. And people remember. And this group of players will certainly remember this day, the Newport Saracens. Proud club with a proud uh, tradition. Presentation there from uh, Bryn Parker. Bryn is District A in the uh, uh, Dragons area. So uh, obviously presenting medals to uh, the club from his own district uh, today. So uh, Bryn will be a proud man as well. The proudest man of all, I think, is the man now <laughs> receiving his medal, John Lavender. I'm not going to remember, forget rather, that name in a hurry. Certainly showed up well today and uh, led his troops by example. You know, two <laughs> great men together, yeah. Anthony Buchanan. What badge is he wearing today, Geraint? They'll have a good conversation about the, scrums, <laughs> about the scrums, don't they? So, uh... Is that cup small? <laughs> Great character, two great characters, in fact. And it's good to see Anthony enjoying the best of health these days as well. You can see how much it means to Lavender as well. You know, he's getting emotional there. This is his home club. He's played at the top level and he's come back, you know. So here we are then. The Division 4 Cup champions for 2023-24 and Newport Saracens. They've defeated the Tonner by the odd point. 24 points to 23. So let's have a look and remind ourselves of the highlights, and there were a few.
Hello, my Athris, or Kenes in right Etzo, the seven line here, Tutted game or did. We swiftly move on to the third game of the day in this men's finals competition. It's going to be Blaina RFC against Cardiff Quinns in the Division 3 Cup final. Hello, Achris o Cynnes. Unwaith eto, e Stadium Principality. A swift welcome back to the Principality Stadium for the Division 3 Cup Final. It's Blyna against Cardiff Quinns. And let's have a look at the teams. Starting with the Reds of Blyna. Robert Samuel, Dan Wall, Richard Jones in the front row. Ryan Offers and Luke Rees in the boiler room. The back row contains Michael John, Alfie Hurl and Ellis Evans. Halfbacks, David Jones and the experienced Di Langdon. On the wings, Jordan Davis, Darren Mills and Kobe Edwards and Tom Edwards combined in the centre partnership with fullback Callum Rosser wearing 15. And the replacements, Ross Benden, Thomas Sp Sperry, Adam Griffiths, Paul Meek, Michael Vaughan, Kian Hyman, Connor Miles, Cal... Brimble, Lee Morris and Ben Jones. And Cardiff Quinns, not the club's first visit to the Principality Stadium during this series. And they name Ewan Fells, Jake O'Shea and Dylan Barrett in the front row with Ethan Wilson and Reese Burlington, the second row partnership. Charlie Newell wears eight with Sam Powell and Griff Lloyd on the flanks. Toby Booth wears nine. Jay Price, captain in the 10 jersey. Ewan Burrows and James Minton in the centre partnership with Matthew Jones and Ellis Jones on the wings. Josh Atkinson at fullback. The replacements Lloyd Dovey, Alan Hill, Johan McDougall, Tommy Owens, Rodri Thomas, Alexander Davis, Sam McGuinn Carroll, and Hrithian Williams. On the replacements bench, then who are a lot of Blaina and Erbin Quinns, Kyle D. The Wing Griffith, uh, Akris Owen, the market of Ewan Gwynedd in a blue silhouette. Uh, win you commentated on the previous game, and we step it up a notch once again now, do we? As the day progresses, the standard progresses, and it gets a little bit more tasty. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, we saw a nail biter, didn't we? Newport Saracens are taking out Tonner by 24 points to 23. Uh, and the hope is, obviously, that uh, this game produces a, a higher level, a higher standard of, of skills, perhaps not silly, not of excitement, because we had tremendous excitement <laughs> in both the previous games, it has to be said. Uh, Chris Owe, joining us for the first time today. How are things, Chris? Uh, what are you expecting from this final, then? Uh, Pranhound Argents, yeah, really looking forward to this one. Battle of uh, three central, v three uh, east. So, um, yeah, if it's anything like the last uh, final, we're seeing the standard go up and up, aren't we? So really looking forward to this one. Yeah, and there's plenty to talk about during this one uh, as well. The players are ready in the tunnel. You can see there from the ref camp. Plenty of smiles in the tunnel. The nerves will be tingling. The energy will be spiking. And that's the reward at the end of the 80 minutes. The Division 3 Cup. It's Blyna from Division 3 East against Cardiff Quinns from 3 East Central. I've done my research, Chris. For some of it, anyway. Never in doubt with you. <laughs> Ever the professional. As they come onto the field, Matthew Turvey, the referee in yellow, assisted by Martin Beza and Julian Thomas. And they're going to change ends. Playing that in red, step into the right, and Cardiff Quinn's in their traditional blue one. Purpley wine colours. You set the you set the rotor of commentators for today, so I'm just thinking you set me to do the Newport Saracens against Tonna, knowing full well that the Newport Saracens numbers were virtually indistinguishable. Thank you, Owen. <laughs> it just <laughs> occurred to me. 
hey, 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 I, I, um, didn't, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> didn't have a clue. Well, I tell you what, I didn't have much of a clue either. <laughs> but uh, no, great game. And we hope for a repeat of that. Right, then it's Blinat to kick off. Playing from right to left. The Quinns ready to receive. Dai Langdon uses his left peg to loft it high. Taken by Ryan Offers. Excuse me, Chris Burlington, I should say, with the take. Yeah, he actually wears five. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Big, lofted, high ball. Scrum half beneath it, Tommy Booth. Runs it back, Booth. Oh, he's like a back rower in the loose. Knocked forward. Bit of a collision in midfield, I believe. Alfie Hurl was hurling himself forward. Takes a bit of a bump here, yeah. A bit of a head collision between Alfie Hurl and Richard Jones, the blind at three and seven. And the referee quick to respond. And both teams have been... Uh, Going well in the league. Quinns uh, seeking promotion from Division 3. Um, they're currently in third in the league behind uh, Penagraig and Club Rugby Cymru Cardiff, who are in second. So they are scrapping for points to try and get into the top two with two going up from that league. And Blaina at the moment in second in their league uh, behind... Uh, Abbey Crav, is it? In uh, the top there. So both teams seeking a double this season. Yeah, familiar sight, isn't it, at the Principality Stadium here, the Harlequin shirts. So the fourth team that's appeared uh, in the finals uh, over the last fortnight, three weeks. And two wins as well for the Quins from those three. So the senior team trying to replicate the youth and the under 16s. I was reading beforehand uh, with the Quins. Uh, the youth lost to Penarthia in 2019, and some of them have stepped up into the senior competition, so hoping to uh, right some historic wrongs. Yeah, and their youth defeated Gowerton here, 31 points to 14 last week. Was well, this to be an interesting effort? Dragged wide by Tommy Booth. Interesting. Had it gone over, it would have been inspirational. But uh, we'll leave it at interesting, shall we? <laughs> well, it's been an interesting first few minutes. We see more of the boot than we have anything in hand today. I think both teams trying to feel each other out territory-wise. Yeah, they're going to be nervous, aren't they? It's, um, it's the nature of playing at this iconic stadium. You know, some have been here before. Due to the nature of Road to Principality, it's a, a very special series that allows clubs of all ages to get here. But it will be the first time for many as well. Now then, playing out off the base, that's come going wide off first phase. Winning some territory, but a high tackle by Matthew Jones on Darren Mills. Brings the penalty. Yes, yeah, on the full-back, was it? Callum Rosser wearing that red head guard. Reminiscence of the half-penny, maybe. The blind are showing their intent to uh, run the wide uh, channels. And that's, that augurs well, certainly. If they can get clean ball, they know exactly what they want to do. They've got some exciting runners out wide in uh, Jordan Davis and Darren Miles. And here comes the big man, Kobe Edwards. All apparent, 20 stone of him, the club's top scorer. Well, you know, He's a battling runner, isn't it, to, to put it politely? You know, you're taught in school to go low. How, how low can you go on Kobe Edwards? That is the question. Short squat, takes some stopping. 
Yeah, Kobe Edwards is the uh, son of Craig Edwards, the team manager of Blaina. And you can see why Kobe's the club's top scorer, especially from five metres out with uh, some of those short bursting runs. Yeah, 240 games for the club, and that's, uh, that shows loyalty, doesn't it? Any number of other players uh, have played far more. Good hands by the Quins in close proximity to each other. Sam Powell wears seven. A little nudge through playing the corners. Rosser across with plenty of time to lift that clearing kick. Atkinson. 15 in the blue headgear. And now there is space on this left-hand side. If they keep it straight. But they drift across field defence as well. Yuan Fels plays nine. But where's one in that loose head shirt? Now the regular scrum half back at his feet. Atkinson again aims that kick well directed. All falls short. It bobbles, play goes on. And Callum Rosser just couldn't stretch down, stoop down low enough. Low enough. Yeah, it was good face play by the Quins. They stretched Bliner from uh, touchline to touchline there. And you could see Bliner was starting to get numbers short or getting some forwards in the midfield. I think that's the tack that they're looking to get to this afternoon. So it's going to be scrum in an attacking position for the Quins. A 10 metres or so blind side. All the backs line to the left. So they'll have a, a man advantage on that side. Quinn's get a slight nudge on. Price. The short run by Atkinson, the full back coming into the line. There's a penalty advantage. High tackle. And they'll take the penalty. And Jay Price, without hesitation, points for the posts. Yeah, good strong run there from uh, Josh Atkinson. Almost found the the gap hole down illegally in the end. But this is a promising position now then for uh, uh, Cardiff Harlequins. And must be said, Jay Price here, the captain, son of the coach, Andrew Price. Well, that's converted. And then Andrew Price is the son of. Jerry Price, the former WA secretary and uh, referee. And the mascot was the son of Jay Price. It was a bit of a family affair for the Quins today. And more outstanding research by you, Rose. All on WRU website. Or <laughs> <laughs> if those fancy popping over for a good read. <laughs> yeah, some good uh, stories uh, on the WRU website about some of these players and... Uh, you forget sometimes how old you are when you read uh, about the fathers and grandfathers and referees. Booth? Well, he is known as Boothy the Boot, isn't he? Well, that's a bit of a boot as well. He pumps it along downfield, keeps it alive. Booth is there to receive as well. He's going to carry first. Yeah, and I think he was the plane at number six. Michael John, who moved forward before Booth carried the ball far, far enough forward. I think the law is, once you carry it five metres forward or so, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a fine line, isn't it? it? Is. And it it's a law that's been looked at in recent times. And we'll see an, an amendment to that law, but coaches will always find a way around the laws, won't they? I'm sure Bliner will probably need to rethink their tactic at the moment with Booth dropping into the backfield. He's he's the pressure reliever, isn't he, with the size of his kicks. I think probably they need to rethink who they're kicking to. Yeah, and we've spoken during the course of the series that at this level you don't have the facilities to research other teams as much as, as the professional sides are. So it takes 
probably 10, 15, 20 minutes to get to know your opponent, to find their weaknesses, understand their strengths. Yeah, I completely agree. I think with a wily operator like Dai Langdon, I don't think it'll take him long to figure that out. Yeah, Dai Langdon, the blind at fly half, been here on three previous occasions, a winner on two of those three occasions. But he sees his team give away a penalty here. Yeah, just... They lose their footing, don't they, at the end? It's difficult when you go forward, when you counter wreck. They do have that momentum, those bodies coming in behind you to, to stay on your feet. Yeah, they did everything right there, didn't they, until I think it was seven came in and went off his feet at the breakdown. They counter wrecked well. Uh, Cardiff Quinns were a little bit weak at that breakdown in terms of their support. They did everything right by that poor discipline at the end, cost them a penalty. So it's the second shot at goal for Jay Price. And the second successful attempt for Cardiff Quinns. And they tick along nicely up to six points. Yeah, Blaine, I know that they can't afford to uh, give away penalties. Uh close to their posts because Jay Price will punish them every time. And here is Dai Langdon, who we mentioned earlier on. He's a, got a unique hat-trick in mind as he prepares uh, to steer Blainhead to this uh, Division 3 Cup glory. He'll be 30 in a row that uh, he's been to a National Cup final and each time with a different club. Tommy Booth looking to lift the box kick. You have to keep it in field and a bit of pressure. Could be a penalty. Yep. Referee says play goes on. Good play there by uh, Callum Rosser. Dan Wall, the hooker. Pot of three coming around. Working the corner. They're going to switch the play. Yes, they do. Again, using Dan Wall. Now then, good play with the hands. Rosson nearly gets into some space. Play goes on. Was he knocked on a second time? Yes, he was. And that's good play by Wall. Carried the first time. The defence may be sensing the carry again. Yeah, had Alfie Hurl been able to gather that ball, he had a man on his wide outside, and they could have been in. I just received a message from Prisap William, who's been commentating on the first two games with us. Booth is the nephew of Andrew Booth, and he had to find the Cwm Llinvell link, didn't he? <laughs> Henry, the grandfather, is from Cwm Llinvell. The Quins find the uh, wide channels. Ellis Jones. Can seize the penalty, or oh, the oncoming def uh, support. Can see the penalty. Uh, slightly harsh, maybe, in my opinion, with the Umberos coming in from the side. Yeah, was it sealing off or was it a uh, side entry? I think sure. it was a side entry. But Blaina find themselves in the 22. And let's see what they can do here. The big pack of forwards. And they're about 20 metres out, but the backs have got something up their sleeves as well. Kobe Edwards having a, a chat with his outside half with Di Langdon. I'm sure they've got something worked out between them. Well, they've got to secure the line out, which has been a weakness of all the teams so far today. The set piece has really been faltering. It, it's a miss left, isn't it? At the back there, I think. Uh, they mistimed it. I think it's a clever compete as well by the Quins. You know, you've got Reese uh, Burlington there, six foot seven of him. He's not a bad uh, target to throw up if you want to compete. Good shove by the Blinner pack. The Quins are going to play. Atkinson says, no, there's no space there. Let's get downfield. 
Rosser caught behind it in the backfield and it's turned over. A quick kick here or go wide. Big counter -ruck. The crossfield kick by Atkinson. Doesn't measure it well. The idea was there. It was well read by Darren Miles, wasn't it? But it was uh, almost a perfect crossfield kick. Measured from the uh, Quinn's number 12. He could argue maybe hands were on the floor for the steal. Yeah, yeah. And it could have been a penalty the other way. But he sensed, he observed the space. And it's such a difficult skill to master and get accurate. Booth. It's gone backwards. Burlington. The jackal is there. The jackal is good. And nobody's going to move. Is it Richard Jones? Outstanding work by your tight there, there, isn't it? To uh, drop him at the feet and get over the ball and win that turnover. Quinn just couldn't get that ball away, could they, on the present? Tight edge, Jacqueline. What next? Oh, that's a tasty kick. On the money in the corner. He yeah, picked his spot, didn't he? Yeah, well judged. Yeah, Dai Langdon was here in 2022, a couple of years ago, with Neath against Bridgend in the championship. He won that day, and he sighed it over for a score on their first score of the day. Michael John, the blind side flanker, crosses from a powerful driving wall. Well, that try was always on as soon as the ball left the hooker's hand, wasn't it? Well taken at the line-out by Ryan Offers. And look at the way the forwards gathered round and did, drove the ball carrier over. All a bit too easy there. Yeah, if you look how the build-up, it came from obviously the um, Richard Jones jackal, Di Langdon putting that kick on a uh, pinpoint to the five metres. Blindness forward uh, packed did the rest from there then. Takes his time, goes through his process. And that's a beautiful kick for and by Dai Langdon. And for the first time in this division three final, Blaina are ahead by seven points to six. There's a good kicker under pressure, is uh, Dai Langdon. Bang on target when he was needed most in the semi-final against Bryn Kefin in Penarth, which uh, opened the door for Blainer to this final. Well taken, under pressure, Ryan Offers twists back in field. It's a tight angle for David Jones. As well to keep it in that five meter channel. Atkinson looks up, looks to run. Three or four red shirts waiting for him. Again, good handling in close quarters by the Quins. Oh, and it's lost, it's stolen. Blainer sends a chance to counter attack. Keep it tight in that 15 meter channel. Ellis Evans waits, but he has to chase. And it's hooked off field by David Jones, much to his displeasure. Yeah, 
There's a turnover here. Look at this. <laughs> and again, it's David Jones himself who's there. A turnover by nine and three. What are the back row is doing? Where are they? You can see Bliner have identified that the Quins are again a little bit light at these breakdowns. They're maybe not getting in strong enough positions and they've come in after them. Powell rises highest. Attacking midfield. Using the big carriers, Charlie Newhall. Oh, it's knocked forward. Oh, he'll be annoyed at himself. Yeah, just catches a boot as he tries to pick it up. Yeah, unfortunate. And one thing that hasn't been an issue at all during these finals is a scrum. They've all been squeaky clean, in fairness. Yeah, because there's a lot of experience in both these uh, front rows. Robert Samuel, Dan Wall, Richard Jones. The odd twitch Wait. of a muscle here and there can make all the difference. Evans, Fees, Jones, the dummy runners come onto the ball. The jackal in by Sam Powell. It's a steal as well. Space in the backfield. The chase is on. Ross will be there first, but he will be under pressure. Good chase in by. Matthew Jones, the Quinns, 14. Yeah, and it's... It was a joint effort there, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it Ewan Burroughs inside centre? Yeah. That with, helped to uh, Sam Powell. That's right. Go to the tail again. Powell is the main target. Burroughs brings the runners into the play. And again, under pressure, the breakdown. Blainer really committing and causing problems. It's very much an arm wrestle, that breakdown, isn't it? And Blainer edging it at the moment. Yeah, Blainer going there again. Quinns are not, they're not clearing past the ball, so it's a dig every time for Booth at nine. Um, Blainer are definitely targeting this area. Jay Price moved into the scrum half position. Tommy Booth. Oh, he's been split in half. Ross is through the gap looking for support. Steps in, steps out. Rides the first tackle. Red shirts to the left. But it's a steal and it's a penalty. Well, that's fortunate for the Quins because Ross was at full tilt, wasn't he? That's a yellow card here as well. Am I correct or am I wrong? I think I'm wrong. What a determined run that was, and you've mentioned uh, the likeness to Lee Halfpenny if only for the uh, the headgear, but I think the other similarities as well. Yes. Head down, charging forward. And the similarities in these kind of sidestepping as well, isn't it? He does look very similar, doesn't he? He's played really well. Whenever he's had involvement, he's done something effective. That's one of those just unlucky scenarios. You make such a clean line break, your support can't get to you quick enough. Yeah, it's almost too good, isn't it? That you're too far ahead of your support players. And it's almost somewhere you need to slow down almost. And it's unnatural to do it. Yeah, I think he was thinking, do I keep going? Do I try and put a kick through? Do I wait for my support? Again. So there was a yellow card. It's uh, Michael John, I think, for his reckless approach to that breakdown. So man advantage to Cardiff Quinns needs to... Keep that in field, does well. Rosser. Straight to his opposition, footback Atkinson. Booth runs in, he's in some space, looking for some support. Intercepted, I think, Rosser and Atkinson came head to head. And it has gone forward off the hand of Josh Atkinson. 
That was a difficult kick initially for Callum Rosser, right footed against the far touchline. Did well, but uh, Booth looking to create something on the narrow side, create mayhem probably. It kind of quins, so then with a man advantage. Yeah, interesting that they've swapped Jay Price and uh, Booth. Yeah, Booth being a kicker, he's been dropped into the backfield for. Maybe some obvious reasons, expecting a kick downfield. He was caught short from the previous play, yeah. defensively. Oh, but was hanging on for grim death there under the ankle of Kobe Edwards. And there he is, Booth, the scrum half. And this is why he's been dropped deep. Spirals that kick up field. Difficult to take, but it's taken well. And there's space on the left. And here comes Callum Rosser. The goose step has to cut back inside. There's a high tackle in there on him by Charlie Newell. Reese. Could there be another yellow card? Looks like it. Yep. Referee wasting no time whatsoever in dispatching Charlie Newell. Scragged. Callum Rosser by the uh, shirt collar. I don't think you can have too many complaints there. Yeah, so a back row at each down. Newell in the Quinn for uh, in the bin for the Quins and John, the try scorer for Blyna also in the sin bin. And one person we haven't singled out yet. We've spoken a, a couple of connections. Number six, Griff John. Uh, Griff John. Griff Lloyd. Want to hazard a guess win the relation Griff Lloyd? Uh, yes, yeah, brother of uh, Ewan Lloyd, uh, the Wales and Scarlets uh, scrum half. Uh, breakdown in communication between commentators for a split second there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost and caught referees. me unawares. I was, I was looking across the field to see what was happening, but it, it's the, uh, the technical equipment that's uh, letting people down. Yeah, and of course, Jack Lloyd, the other brother. Over at the uh, at the Dragons setup, here's yes, with 14 on either side. There should be room somewhere on the on the park. And the guys most likely to uh, score tries are the those in red. Yeah, Langdon eyeing up the corner. His last effort to use that one of a boot of his to put his team within five. Maybe harder from this side for a left footer. Tries to slice it in, but you take that on any given day. And the rolling ball was so effective for Michael John's try. You can't think much further than another trundle. They hit the middle, offers, secures possession, works it back towards Dan Wall. Twisting, Quinns have done well to disrupt this one. They've stolen it. Great defence by the Quinns. Excellent work, because the, the blinder forwards as soon as the uh, studs touch the ground from uh, Luke Rees, the forwards were in there. But uh, the Quinns on this occasion wide awake to the threat. Yeah, they just splintered off too early on the right, maybe. The formation seemed quite good to begin with. Yeah, a wise call by the Quins. They elected to stay down, didn't they? And not compete in exa that example, knowing what happened previously. And uh, they turned that ball over well. There we are. Ewan Fells, Jake Cochet and Dylan Barrett. The front row for the Quins. Booth back in his traditional position by the scrum to feed. And Blaine has tried to put on some pressure. Booth has to carry. Oh, oh damn, he's, he's, he's uh, in the open field. Man left and right cuts in. The chip ahead, the chase is on. Ellis Jones tries to support him. Maybe the wrong choice considering. Yeah, he had options left and right of him, but uh, just put that little kick in. But this is good. Does well, show some strength to ride the tackle by Ellis Evans, the number eight. 
Yeah, enjoying watching Tommy Booth so far. He's having an excellent game. I think Quinn's be happy from a five-metre scrum to where they are currently on the blind of 22. No nonsense by David Jones. Bangs that one upfield, but only wins. Eight or nine metres. The Quinns, as you say, now with possession on the outskirts of the blind at 22, will be very happy with the return on their efforts. O'Shea. Again, finds his man. Booth whips it out. Oh, that's a, a tough one for Ewan Burrows. Yeah, Griff Lloyd lifted at the uh, the line out. Burrows is a big lad in the centre, isn't he? He was under pressure. Booth just couldn't get enough whip on the ball and just died on Burrows, shinned it. Tough ask, really, for him there. You know, you win the ball at the front of the line. You make that distance from nines pass then far more, far longer. Yeah, it's a 15, 20 metre pass then, isn't it? Ill discipline by the Blainer Pack. Early Give away free kick. Yeah, the early engagement. Correct. Oh, they're going for the scrum again. Yeah, considering the option from a free kick. Blaine go early. He can't kick directly for touch. So the option is to tap and go. Or to loft a high one up in the air. But can't if go otherwise. They go for the scrum. They try and tie. Eight those red shirts in. And Quinn's uh, right winger Matthew Jones has crept in field. He's shadowing Jay Price at outside half. Yeah, Langdon drifts across now as well. Extra numbers here. Both teams down to 14 as well, remember. Oh, that's stripped out of the possession. And Darren Miles picks it up. Jones, good offload. Ball's there. Wall again, the ever-willing carrier. Oh, that's a peach of a kick by Dai Langdon. Oh, that's a stunner. An absolute stunner. Well, just always running away from Ellis Jones, wasn't it? But that rip was by uh, Kobe Edwards initially that uh, turned the ball around over. And Kobe Edwards gets a, a big palm in there. But again, it's the influence of Dai Langdon, isn't it? Yeah, he's starting to make his presence felt now, isn't he? That experience, that cultured left foot he's got as well, puts significant distance on his kicks. Secure the line out again. This is well formed. They twist it left. Defenders are there. Puff back up. Offers. Lena searching for their second try. Well, coming on the arrow run. Kobe Edwards. Pulls up short, the ball wasn't coming. He was in the big run up front, good offload by Luke Reese. Quinn's sensing an opportunity to counter Re Regroup Alfie Hurl. And here he comes, the dummy runner at this pace. Cuts back inside, the line is there. The penalty is given, crossing in midfield. Some afters in there. A dive Langdon for a second, thought he was over. And smiling assassin. Yeah, it did impede Ewan Burrows. Taken quickly by Booth. Nobody home for Blaine. Now the chase needs to be good. It's only Booth up there for the Quins. Can he win the jack on the floor? It pops out. Oh, it could work out here. Ellis Jones, the try line beckons. Where's the bounce? It's a score. Ellis Jones. Well, it, against the run of play, wasn't it? And it was that quick thinking. Toby Booth uh, again with that uh, 
speculative kick downfield but wide awake was Ellis Jones good pressure being applied here and sensibly Booth staying on his feet and ball spat out but Jones was there on the spot just needed to drop on it some fortune in there for Cardiff Quinns but it favours the brave and Toby Booth chanced his arm found some space did all the hard work himself and Ellis Jones was there at the right place at the right time to capitalise yeah, I need to remind myself this Tommy Booth isn't it Toby, Toby Booth Toby. the Ospreys uh, <laughs> head coach <laughs> yeah he may be busy this afternoon indeed no mistaking Joe Price though again with another cultured boot successful with his third attempt for the sticks and Cardiff Quinns are back ahead in this Division 3 Cup final blind at 7 Cardiff Quinns 13 thanks to the try by Ellis Jones referee has a look at his watch just over half an hour gone in this opening half and Bliner back to a full complement of 15 Michael John is back so there's an opportunity for Bliner to uh, strike back here where they have the extra man advantage Sam Powell is away oh, oh the lovely is that going to stay in field no it runs away from him but the uh, open side flank who's been the main target man in the line out dances along the touchline slides out three Bliner tackles the correct decision means to go for the kick and chase just doesn't execute yeah, shame he wasn't left footed yes hacked away Booth is there again lifts a high one maybe a couple of runners offside in midfield it's a poor kick considering the position of the landing the ball and that was Rosset a bit of time there's an injury in midfield for Cardiff Quinns it's Powell I think isn't it Sam Powell I think he's recovering from uh, the previous run. <laughs> well, he used to play in the backs, apparently, but uh, his breathing, perhaps, uh, <laughs> has promoted him to uh, flank forward. Won't be long before he's a prop, perhaps. <laughs> Been there and got the shirt. <laughs> Four minutes remaining in this open half. Oh, it's worked out. Knocked on in the tackle. A few of the Blainer fans asking for more. Yeah, we were talking before this game, weren't we, that we are looking to, to uh, higher standards and a higher level of play, perhaps, in this uh, uh, division final. But it's a bit scrappy at times, it has to be said. Not quite hitting the straps at the moment. Oh, in the, uh, the road to Principality, obviously, they've played a number of games to get here Quinns beat St Albans Betus Nantamoyle Colwyn Bay and Fairwater to get here a tight game against uh, Fairwater the local derby 16 points to 12 Quinns the winners and Blainer beats Bryn Kethin in the semi-final, 16 points to seven. And Aber Krav, a stunning slobber knocker of a game. 3-0, <laughs> the final score. That must have been a, a riveting game. <laughs> I imagine the weather wasn't the best on that day. <laughs> Quinn's are back to a full complement of uh, 15 as well. Charlie Newell, Limbrate, restored. Good kick by Di Langdon, well controlled by Atkinson. Rosser looks left, finds a bit of space and finds touch. Yeah, well placed kick again, wasn't it, from uh, Rosser? I thought he was going to have a go. And one time there because his first instinct is to counter attack.
Quinn's looked to control the last few minutes of this half. Again. The target was Powell, but the throw's not straight. Referee has another look at the watch. There is time for the scrum. It wasn't the worst throw in the world. It wasn't a one-kiss throw we've seen today. But not straight enough, according to the referee. Blaina 7, Cardiff. Quinn's 13. Blaina, can they take a lead? Going into half-time, knocked on by Colby Edwards. Miscommunication in midfield. Went backwards, says the referee. But it's there for the Quinns. No nonsense by Booth. Huge Booth again. Over the head of Jordan Davis. Good defensive line chasing up. And it's still alive. Here come the Quinns. They sense an opportunity via Matthew Jones. Back into the fullback. Finds Powell. Minto. Excellent support running from the Quinns, and it was Rosso who didn't quite get the right contact onto the uh, onto the ball, and it fell infield. But look at this uh, support play from the Quinns, and a very difficult ball to control is that one-handed pass in the air. Yeah, he tries the uh, magic offload with the one hand, slips out the front of the hand as he tries to pop it away. Jones feeds. No room at all for Darren Miles. Quinns will do all they can to box Blinder in. And there's no escape, there's no opportunity to attack. So that's enough according to Dai Langdon. And thanks to the boot of Jay Price, in particular, Cardiff Quinns head into the sheds in the lead. We've seen a try by Michael John and one as well for Ellis Jones. A try apiece, but it's the Quinns who lead. Blinder 7, Cardiff Quinns 13.
good. We should ask him to put him on us. Second half about to get on the way in this Division 3 Cup final. Blaina 7, Cardiff Quinns 13 at the change of ends. Quinns about to kick off, playing from right to left with the red of Blaina waiting to receive. Kickoff is taken and received by. Ellis Evans, big carry. Here's a platform for Dai Langdon to twirl that one downfield. Four players by the Quins in the backfield. Booth. And a penalty for Blaina at the break, breakdown. And there has been a replacement for Blaina, Ross Benden. On instead of Robert Samuel at loose head, and a good start for Blaina Langdon will put this as close to the try line as he can, well, definitely within the 22. And that's another beauty of a kick. Within 10 metres, you couldn't ask for any more from your kicker. Within striking distance, isn't it? Gives the uh, the forwards every encouragement. Yeah, you wonder, they've gone for the driving line out a couple of times, it hasn't functioned. Are they going to bring the big man Kobe Edwards in on the uh, hard line off the back of the line? They're going to stick to their guns. They've scored from a similar position in the first half. A few metres short early in the second. The big forward's waiting. Ellis Evans has a run, gets to the line, he gets over, and he scores. He gets the ball to ground, and the perfect start to the second period for Blaina. The Lambs back within a point. And it came from the line-out again, didn't it? The driving line-out. Reese Burlington did well initially to get his hands in there for the Cardiff Quinns, but once it went to ground, there was only one way this was going to go. It's all about timing, wasn't it? The Quinns defence would be disappointed not to get off that line, to get the space, because Evans went through two defenders on his own. Yeah, it was a powerful carry by the big man Evans, but he did well. He kicked out at the last moment. I think that was the leg drive that got him over the try line eventually, but Quinns would be disappointed that he weren't more aggressive off the line, as you said. And Langdon has a, a magic of a left boot. Sends it through the posts. Blaina are ahead, 14 to 13. And Ellis Evans powers his way over for the second try for the men in red. Cabin copy, restart. This time, Michael John decides, let's have a play. It's Alfie Hurl on, with the ball on the floor. Langdon sends it downfield again. Four players in the backfield by the Quins. There'll be space. In that front line defence, if the play now plays, fancy a go. It's knocked forward. Is there an offside? Backwards, says the referee. Slightly fortunate, maybe. There was space on the left. But again, Blaina decide to kick, play to their strengths. And that's, again, a wonderful effort taken quickly. 
Booth. He's a bit of a jack in the box, isn't he? As uh, Tommy Booth is everywhere. Wherever the high ball is, you can be rest assured that Booth oh. will be under it. And Quinn's butchered a chance to go wide. So, so many players in an open space. And Ethan Wilson. Oh, I think it's, it could have been, yeah, James Minto maybe in 13. That's a killer, isn't it? In terms of uh, to putting pressure back on yourselves. But I feel Quinn's got to get after Langdon's left foot. He's probably the only kick outlet at the moment. They're not really targeting him or going after that kicking leg. Sometimes there's, you know what to do, but how do you do it? He's been immaculate with his kicking, David Langdon. Oh, that's a big run. You can see why he's the top scorer, Kobe Edwards. It takes three or four players to drag the inside centre down. And within two carries, Blyna are on the edge of the 22. It's a good pick and go. That's better. Cliff Lloyd stifles the scrum half. Penalties given away, however. Yeah, you can tell that some of these Blyna forwards have been around the block once or twice. Now they're hitting the straps, aren't they? Yeah, just offside. Griff Floyd, not at the back foot, part of the ruck. And Langdon doesn't need a second invitation to add a few points to his tally for the day. 125 points for the season for Blainat. Blainat unbeaten in 12 matches in League and Cup. So they're in fine, fine form. Oh, and he's missed the easiest of the day. Still alive, he's still there. David Jones may fortuitously work out. And Blaine has a benefit if they can convert a missed penalty into seven points. Here they come. Yeah, Langdon to atone for his, uh, for his miss. He's an angry man now, isn't he? Burlington tries to get his big paws on the board. There's a penalty advantage. There'll be the second opportunity for Langdon. A minimum. A Blaine at want more. They want the five. They get there. They've scored. It's a third try for Blaine at. Could beat Michael John with his second of the day. The carry, the offload. Ross Benden with a first shove. And yes, it is the pick and go by Michael John. But London was so annoyed with himself for missing that, well, what appeared to be an easy uh, penalty conversion. He wanted to get involved, and he could tell that he was an angry man. You could say he's glad he's missed it now because three becomes seven. And on the scoreboard, Blaine in control. 21 points to 13. And Michael John, two tries to his own name, along with a yellow card. Changes for Cardiff Quinn, Sam Gwyn Carroll, wearing five, comes on to replace Sam Powell and Michael John the scorer his efforts are done potentially for the day 
Paul Meek comes on and Adam Griffiths come on to that Blaina pack. Bit of extra energy. Again, keeping it tight. I think Blaina have found their strengths, haven't they, in this contest as the match has progressed. Keeping it tight and using that Langdon boot, but Langdon showing his abilities to run as well. And there's a penalty for a high shot. Dai Langdon really has turned the tide in this game. They have, but Quinn's actually did it all right there. They went after him and targeted him and shut him down early. It was the right tactic. Um, unfortunately, he got out of the tackle and then a high shot has resulted in a penalty to relieve the pressure. And as we expect, it's a, a touch finder. Must be so heartening for the blinder forwards every time he uh, he kicks, he's getting 50, 60 metres on some of his range. That's very polite of you. A slight exaggeration. Yeah. 40. With, with the angle, <laughs> with the angle. <laughs> Always tipped on into the hands of Adam Griffiths, the replacement. Wave after wave of red shirts. Quinn's being tested again. Langdon oh, looks forward, flatter best. Great position by the referee to see that. He was right on the spot. Yeah, Quinn's have been under some pressure in this uh, second period. They need something to start to turn. They need a, a spark. And they're struggling to find it. The likes of Tommy Booth, Jay Price have been really quiet in this second half. Blinders are starting to win their collisions, aren't they? They're kind of... Uh, perhaps they're heavier, more experienced forwards. They're starting to get a foothold more and more in this game. We get a nudge in the scrum. It's released. Booth aims that one downfield. Ross is there. Spirals that one backwards. Great kick again. Stays in field. Booth replies over the top. Finds a bit of green grass. That trickles forward towards the posts. They need the chase. And considering the outcome, Cardiff Quinns, I'm sure, will take that. Getting territory and possession. Yeah, clever kick there by uh, Tommy Booth, finding space, realising that uh, Rosser was up with play. Yeah, really clever. You you just feel, don't you, that uh, Booth is going to be the catalyst that's going to um, get the Quins back in this game if they can. Yeah, and Dan Miles didn't have too much pressure on him, but plays safe. Carroll. Wins the ball in the air. Now then, Ethan Wilson. They've been trying to get him on the ball a few times. Gone backwards. Just, says the ref, Barrett. That's better for the Quins, getting the big men moving on the ball on the front foot. Boost to the dummy. There's Burroughs outside him, he loses it. It's back for the high tackle. Considering it's an eight-point game, I would be guessing they'll be going for the corner. That's the first time we've seen the uh, Quinns forwards really having a go, and uh, for Barrett to take out Kobe Edwards, that took some doing. Yeah, that was a collision and a half, but uh, Barrett carried very, very well. They made some positive yards. That's more of that, really, that the Quinns need to do and give them position. Yeah, that's one of the Blainer boys received some treatment on the field. Let's see the tries of the contest so far. Michael John with his first crossing over from the driving wall and capitalizing on an error. Ellis Jones, the first air to dot down. Blainer back row at Ellis Evan gets involved before Michael John scores his second. So it's three tries to the Blainer back row. Jay Price with his first shot at the post in the second half. And he continues from where he left off in the first. 
And Cardiff Quinns close the gap. It's 21 points to 16. Slightly built him, maybe, Jay Price, but he packs uh, an almighty punch in that right boot of his, doesn't he? He does and brings the game back within one score. If Plainer thought they're going to run away with this in the second half, they'll have to think again. London finds Booth. It's only one way he's going. Downfield, but doesn't find as much distance as he, he would have liked and he's capable of. Yeah, safety first there from uh, Tommy Booth. The Blainer backs lining up very deep. And in amongst them is uh, Paul Meek. The replacement wearing 19, shortened line out for Blainer. Let's all take that one again. <laughs> yeah, all good intentions. That's it, the carry by Paul Meek. Oh, well oh, taken, one-handed by Kobe Edwards. Eventually lost. Quinn's looking to counter. They're going to kick downfield. And they escape the 22 into the plane and a half. But Kobe Edwards showing more than he's just a, a bulldozer of a runner. He's got some good hands in there as well. Scoops it with his left. Yeah, he just tries to offload the deck, doesn't he? And presents the opportunity to get a palm in there for, for the Quins. Langdon lifts it high. Well taken by Minto. Again, if they can go left here and work the space. But Ethan Wilson is not going to look to play some long balls off his right hand. Oh, Booth, and he's offside. Are they going to come back for the original infringement at the base of that ruck and knock on by Blainer? Fortunately for the Quins. When you look down from this commentary position here, when the Blainer backs line up, it looks ominous, doesn't it, uh, for, for the Quins, but they dealt well with the initial thrust. Yes, yeah, the, the rip and the tackle. I took it forward. Jay Price took his eye off the ball. Yeah, I think you call that passage a player shambles. <laughs> Is that a technical term? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's not reached the dizzy heights, has it, uh, this match? But, uh, you know, Blaine have come here with one intention in mind, and that's to, uh, to take the cup home. Not that the Quins uh, aren't of similar mindset. But Blainer, they have the physicality, don't they? From yeah, 1 to 23 by the looks of it. There's a bit more tonnage in that team, you imagine. <laughs> There's a bit more ballast, isn't it? But they can shift as well. Yeah, further changes being made to both sides. Yeah, you can't say with this uh, Blainer team that they have piano players and piano shifters. <laughs> it's difficult to distinguish between them, forwards and backs. Ewan Burrows has left the field. With Rodri Thomas coming on in his place at centre. You can't help but notice the uh, youthfulness, can you, of this Quinns team. They are very young, you can see. This team's got a lot more of a, a growth to go yet. That's a good kick downfield. Is that a 50? Oh. 22. Taken quickly, taken legally, same ball, no. Ah, the Ahead of the mark, just, oh, that was tight. The temptation was too much for Callum Rosso, wasn't it? He might have just have let it go, really. Again, not for the first time today. See some top-class kicking. It's good awareness to play for 
the quick ball. It was the same ball, of course, which is the the laws. Now then, it's the Quinn's turn to try and form a driving line out, and they've butchered it. But I think Adam Griffiths in the side. Yeah, the idea was right. Yeah, straight in the side. Adam Griffiths too tempting with the ball. Yeah, he couldn't resist. Yeah, it was visible, wasn't it? And he just thought, oh, I love that, thank you. But again, it's another opportunity for Jay Price to chip away at that Blaine lead. Confident player, Jay Price. You can see he's really enjoying himself out there and he's been uh, extremely measured so far in his kicking. You're yeah, knowing there won't be too many try-scoring opportunities for the Quins. And they put their trust in Jay Price to bring them back within uh, two points. Price slots it through the posts, continues with his 100% record. Blaine at 21, Cardiff Quinns up to 19. Well, we will be looking for the Go Dot Compare player on the match award. Any number of players putting their hands up in the Blaine squad, but at the moment it's uh, Jay Price who's keeping the Cardiff Harlequins in this match. Langdon. Another one that'll be in the conversation to restart. And Booth tries to find himself a way out of a phone booth. <laughs> sorry, guys, sorry. Uh, you, you get that award. <laughs> Uh, this time Rosser oh. does let it go into touch. Yeah, for half a second, the assistant referee in the far side wasn't sure if it was carried back in. The referee says no. Again, the lineout's not really functioning well for the Quins. We can see members of the coaching staff in the background there. Frustrated hands in. Or heads in their hands. They're not trying to squeeze the Quinn scrum. It twists one way. They find some space on the blind side and quickly run out of it. They've got the turn. Tommy Owens across with the cover tackle. It all feels a bit flat, doesn't it? There's something going to trigger an explosion on the field. I'm sure there'll be something considering it's a two-point game in this Division Three Cup final. Scramble back into the hands of Booth. Nowhere for him to go. Uh, it's very untidy at the moment, isn't it? And Harlequins just can't get that uh, line-out going. It's going to be a, a Quinn scrum. Knocked on in the line-up by a Blaina hand. You do think if Blaina can keep it a bit tight, just to use that Langdon boot, they have the ability to smother this Quinns team. Yeah, Barrett on the tight head for the Quinns was in no hurry whatsoever to get out into the scrum. And a torrid time on the far side. It's all a mess again, under pressure. No option for the scrum half. Yeah, Charlie Newell did exceptionally well, and the ball out on the full from Tommy Booth. 
desperate to give his team a position from which to attack. Yeah, out on the full. And that play now, pack, disrupting the Quinn's possession. That doesn't seem straight. Both sides suffering and struggling. Possession gifted back to the boys from Cardiff. Maybe another scrum. As we see uh, Sean Connor in the middle of those three orange bibs on the far side. A shake of the head, he's not happy either with the way things are going, despite his team being uh, ahead by two. And some water on the field. As Dylan Barrett receives a bit of treatment. So some changes for Cardiff Quinn. Jake O'Shea, the hooker, is going to be replaced by Lloyd Dovey. So slow down. Yeah, the game has lost any momentum at the moment. There's no pattern to anything happening. There's no phases being developed. Set piece is breaking down. It's all a bit nervy. Probably scoreboard does that to you. Booth feeds again. It's the blind pack who get a shove on. And the pressure is stolen at the base. Connor Miles with the steal. Ellis Evans, one of the try scorers. And it's the uh, the high arm, the contact here. Yeah, it's the seat bell, it's the, the, the roll, isn't it? Or the attempted roll. It's a great chop tackle initially, though, from uh, Griff Lloyd. Drops uh, the number eight there, Ellis Evans, straight away. I think they would have had a penalty anyway. That's a brilliant effort from Tommy Booth, taking play down just inside the uh, blind 22. Now, here's an opportunity if they can execute the line-out. Yeah, are they going to shorten the numbers? Are they just going to go for possession, securing possession? Well, they've got six in there, seven. Fully loaded. Find the middle again, the outside arm. Not straight, play goes on, advantage blind -out. Advantage will be over. Possession's there. Miles, the replacement scrum half. Langdon, straight down the middle of the field. Booth looks up. He's got space. Hooks that kick. Now then, here's Dana Miles in acres of space. He'll attack Booth, he cuts back inside. He went Burroughs there to assist in the defence. So James Minto, I should say, who's in 13. Yeah, Booth for once didn't make good contact with the, with the boot, did he? No, dragged it, hooked it. And with good kickers on the field, you can quickly be in trouble. Waterboy's trying to get on the field, being sent away by the referee. Minto receiving some strap into his boots on the floor and Langdon wastes no time puts his team in the attacking position that they want oh, Quinns know what's coming here don't they the next score we say it every time in a tight game next score next score we have a feeling with the momentum out of this game a next score for Blaine that could be enough Dan Wall finds his man, that's better, the rolling ball has some speed, they're playing for the uh, oh. accidental offside, but were there two offences in there? Clean left. 
Ball's been worked back. So there is an accidental offside in there, but lost the offence by the Quins. <laughs> no. Have they, have they left the line too early? Well, you're the former referee, you ain't? Yeah, there's, a, fo there's, there's, there's a former there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a new law since you retired, is it? No, no. No, but the, yeah, the first... The Quins were clever at what they're trying to do. They're trying to draw the penalty. So if the ball stayed in front of the line, then there's no offside. But it's been transferred to the back, so there's a potential offside when they're moving forward. The question is, what have the Quins done to give away the penalty? Have they left the line out early? My hunch is they've retreated too early from the line out. On Langdon, uncharacteristically, has pushed that wide of the left hand upright, so it remains a one score game. Let's look again. It's a clean take, and the Quins all retreat. Yeah, I, I find that a bit harsh because you've got to retreat in one way, or you commit and you're taking the contact and you, you're creating them all. So that's off a knee. There's two missed penalties now by Langdon. And still a two-point oh. game. Again, it's a huge boot downfield by Booth. It's a very much a game for the kickers. And there's space in the chase is on. The Quins are after this one. Oh, can it be a try? It is a try. From absolutely nowhere, Tommy Owens. I just smashed and grabbed the try. Unbelievable. But again, the Quinn's wide awake to every opportunity from a set piece who are hardly likely to score a try. But look at this. Great awareness there from Tommy Owens and the speed as well to outflank the uh, Blainer defence. Great we were, score. We were asking, we were saying it's flat. Where's the spark? Where's the explosion going to come from? And it's come from an individual score by Tommy Owens, the replacement, putting the Quins ahead. It's their second try of the game. Maybe that, that's just fresh legs, isn't it, against more tiring legs. He spotted the gap behind. He's just won the foot race. Jay Price, it's been imperious with the boot. And he's failed on this attempt, the toughest of the lot. It remains a one-score game, but this time in favour of the Quins. Fine margins. And Blainer need more than a three-pointer, don't they? Now we'll see what they've got in the tank and in their armoury. Well, Blainer... If they convert a penalty, Chris, I'm looking over just to make sure, it would be 24 all. Goes down to try scored. Yeah. And it's at the moment, it's a 3 2 game in favour of Blyner. Yeah. Then conversions, but it's 3 2 in the tries. But here they come, the red shirts. They don't want an even game, they want the win. They'll have a second chance. The referee will need eyes at the back of his head now in the last 10 minutes. He said it was flat, now it's full of tension, the nerves are coming. The crowds are trying to support their teams. You just think Blind are going to fancy themselves to take this scrum on, try and win a scrum penalty if they can. It, it, interesting change, uh, Jay Price is coming off for the Quins with Rudyan Williams coming on. You'd consider maybe Jay Price would want to stay on as captain and uh, his kicking ability.
He looks injured to me, uh, Oz, as I, we're watching him walk off there. Yeah, looks like a frustrate, uh, frustrated character on the far side. Had a look over his shoulder. Am I being replaced? Am I not? Yes, you are. Get off. Well, you need to have that conversation with his dad, <laughs> the coach. The coach, yeah, uh, who coached me back in the day, actually. Well, he was a backs coach, I was a forward, so he didn't really coach me. Um, Bing, on the far side there, with the Quinns coaching staff. There you go, there's the drawn scrum penalty. And now then, that's the opportunity Blaine wanted. So, do you kick the corner or posts? Posts. I would. Well, he's missed two already from close two. Serious discussion. Go into the corner. Di Langdon not confident in his kicking. But has more confidence in his forwards of getting to the dry line. I think he's right. This is the game here, Owen. This is the game. Big men have the responsibility of winning the Division 3 Cup. Can Quinns hold on? Blaina win the line. They flood around. Quinns pile in, try to get it towards that touchline. And Blaina are coming. It goes to ground. Penalty advantage. They'll have a second shot if they don't go over here. There is a penalty. Quinns need to be careful. And they worked it well. Splintered off. And it's number 19, Johan McDougall, swimming up the side. Quinn's committing everybody to that defence. Could work one in both ways, you know, if you don't get that impetus early on. Yeah, I think you've got to commit to uh, go after that counter drive. And Blaine that yeah, the transfer before they go forward. Oh, the nerves, the indecision. The ball's transferred in the air before contact is made. And they, and they come across, it could be the penalty as well. Yeah. It's given it as an accidental offside. I think the Quinns were hoping for a penalty and the euphoria has suddenly turned into the realisation that it's going to be a scrum and they're up against it again. I said Dai Langdon should have gone for the posts. <laughs> Easy to say in hindsight, isn't it? Always. Five minutes remaining. Playing at 21, Cardiff Quinns 24. The shove comes on. Yeah. Booth gets the kick away. Charlie Newell does well off the base. Oh, brilliant. Outstanding. Absolutely brilliant from uh, Tommy Booth. It's take, it's been taken quickly. Yeah, but the flag is up on the far side. Yeah, play goes on. They're going to have a bit of a wrestle here, I think. You've got to be careful, boys. <laughs> so the jeers of the crowd. That's a peach, a pearl of a kick. Absolutely wonderful. Credit to the Quinns pack there. You know, it was, they were up against it. They were being pressured. That's a great channel one. And Charlie Newell does a great job to pick that up, feed Booth and clear the pressure. The referee having a quick word with... The captains. Yeah, let's uh, have a think, guys, in a minute or two, who your nominees for the Player of the Match award is, supported by Go Dock and Pitt. Doesn't have to go to the winning side, remember, for the Player of the Match, and that's a penalty. So Blainat will come again. They will be sending this to the corner. Slightly high on Langdon. By well, Burlington. You're thinking about uh, player of the match. I mean, you're looking at uh, Tommy Booth, for instance. I mean, he's put in so many relieving kicks and attacking kicks as well. I know that Blind have scored the tries. They come from uh, the forwards primarily. And, uh, you know, they are a big, heavy unit up front. And you've got to look uh, at the likes of Michael John, obviously, uh, for, for Blind. Um, but... Tommy Booth is certainly in the reckoning. Callum yeah. Rosser as well, you've got to mention him. I think Minto's played well at times as well. Langdon, in the first half in particular, kicked 
magnificently well, but he's dropped off, doesn't he? Missed a couple of opportunities at the post, which could be costly. Yeah, yeah I'd add Jay Price into that. He's yeah. been measured, confident in everything he's had to do today. Yeah, and both full-backs have uh, been more than willing. Callum Rosson and Atkinson in running the ball back. The drama isn't over just yet. Blaine are back where they were about a minute or two ago. Back within 10 metres. A line out in the same corner. They've had some practice, but can they execute? They go full line. Vaughan gets the ball. Oh, it's a, a quick shift of the ball. They gain five metres or so, but find the deck. Bendon, the replacement hooker. Well, the loose head, I should say. Luke Crease wins another metre or so. Five metres short, men to the left. Quinn's trying to fly up off the line. Still there. Four playing up. Trying to reform, regroup. Bending in there again. Quinn's trying to jackal to win the ball. Ball a bit scrappy. There is a steal. Newell, he's won it. Brilliant defence by Newell. Booth under pressure. He's got to get this away. Oh, they've got a counter-attack from their own sticks. And they're away. They're in acres of space. One more pass, maybe. Oh! oh. That was the chance. Matthew Jones had a clear track ahead of him. But that's it. It's over. Well, I tell you what, if you spool back on the phases of play, Griff Lloyd made three tackles, one after the other there, and he's suddenly in the mix for my uh, player of the match. There he is facing you there. But uh, it's up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that hospital password. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop it. Yeah, so let's uh, wrap things up. Blaine at RFC 21, Cardiff Quinns 24, the final score in the Division 3 Cup final. And it's that try by the replacement, Tommy Owens, that won the match and the Cup final for Cardiff Quinns. With the song of the Chedda Maur, Yawni Quinns, Caer Dydd, Pen Campwyr, Cupan Adran, Tri, Indeb Rugby, Cymru, and Ciro Blaina, or that again, Idai Deg Pedwar. But uh, we still haven't actually named a player of the match, uh, Chris Owens. Yeah, I think Dai Langdon, special mention, he was pretty critical in everything that Blinder did. Missed a couple of kicks, but still think his influence was huge on the game. But, you know, eventually in a winning team, for his influence that he had, particularly in the first half, and to break away with that ball at the end of the game, Tommy Booth is my man of the match. Yeah. And when, just for the record, did point at Tommy Booth there I as did, well. I did, yes, yeah. Um, he's kept the team in the game. He's put in some clearance kicks, which have been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and he's worked hard, even in close quarters. He's carried, um, he's har harassed, um, and I think that's a fair choice as well uh, for Tommy Booth, the Quinns scrum half, the player of the match. Set in the game. And then he arrive now, Tommy Booth, the winner. And he the annual down a three on, and he the three of us in agreement that Tommy Booth deserving of the individual accolade but I'm sure more than that individual award he'll be chuffed to bits for his team and the fact that they carry on the proud addition of the Quinns this season in road to Principality that's now a third win I'm going to get my maths correct here third win in four youth the 16s girls and now the seniors winning their respective competitions. There's one guy who'll be, who's glad to hear the final whistle. That's Dylan Barrett, who's had a torrid afternoon, but, you know, he, he played 80 minutes, and not often do you find uh, a prop going 80 minutes, although John Lavender did so for the Newport Saracens in the previous match. It looked, didn't it, ominous for the Quins until that score from Tommy Owens, the deciding score. Yeah, and Blaina uh, going to be heartbroken with how this one panned out. The team getting together, 
Having a, a word of support by some of the team members. And it must be said, their winning streak of 12 in a row is finally broken by Cardiff Quinns. The Blainer are also still in the hunt for promotion. Maybe the greater reward in the context of the season. Trying to get back up to Division 2. With the Quinns in a similar position, third in their division at the moment. Also trying to get up a division. And they've got to scrap that out with another team from Cardiff. Club Rugby, Cymru Caerdydd. And the refereeing party coming up to receive their trophies. Uh, and the presentation party is Colin Wilkes, Anthony Buchanan and Roy Wilkinson. And Matthew Torvey, the referee. Yeah, it'll slight change to the original schedule. That's uh, Della Simmons as well presenting from District H. Quiz question, where's District H? Uh, Pembrokeshire. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> shame on you. Is that, is that your district? Uh, what? Down there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> can I dig in? Can I dig in? Of course it is. Of course it is. District J, my district, and uh, I, I get confused from then on. So the players, Blaina, are waiting to step up for their runners-up medals. Akair winner Scouni and Dan Blaina for the North Course and Shometic to hunt for Dan Bono Dim Wedi Ennis. I give the notion that they know that a game of are going to assess the level Kavla in my thoughts. So the fifth or two pass in our sister yet a finish that's got you with a game a kick at a piece nothing of it. Yeah, do we get? I mean, I'll give you the Ardroad uh, Dai Langdon on the. I mean, Kerry Bonnudi Dord, the Magan Vedul, but there, Queen's Gardi, then Plagid Rosso, the Gadel, the Nogosi Boliano. And uh, lots of Horiori Vink at Queen's Gardi, uh, Niver Honino, Scolion Glantav, a Plas Maur, Ken Hin, Niver Gumri Kimrag, and Iplithno. Uh, so then Argolian da, it's all your Queen's Hinen. Uh, of course, Marai, Bernabethe, Dan, Digwe, the Nor Scolion, and he. Uh, Blaine. Never a Horay Rudy Dora Glebia Eris, um, Gadoni Vera Nivase, uh, and yeah, Saul Horay or Downis Yown and him, Blaine, Kadnerth, Kaharog, on an edu with Kavrustra, but the Queen's Guard is and Kipur with the Goliath, the Olhi, Will Edigeth, Tommy Owens. Yeah, a Yenkinar, a Ekni, a Brudrat Death, and Rui Vank Queen's Kairdi, and Bathin would put the Machrig one other than all. But Han Odimi yanked it a club. Coffee nothing a deal than he penart that you should be in the bottom. A scock yard in the new Evod Arrochor Arach Penasta Kawir did a penart Penasta and hoing at the Laur and then a scock yard he go we raw Henny a Kawira Manuetti Nidar level at run three. So Cara Quinn's come up to receive their winners' medals. I'm sure there'll be a party in Cardiff tonight. Ethan Wilson receiving his medal. Chris Lloyd as well. They do look young, some of them, don't they? Dylan Barrett. Tough day at the office, did well. Jake O'Shea, the hooker. A young team that I'm sure if they get promotion that we'll, we may see them back here as well in in the future. Yeah, there's a huge amount of growth in this team still to come. You know, many of these have come through the mini and junior section at Crick. Good to see them promoted up now. And it's obviously strong schools links in the area as well with the uh, likes of Plasma and Glantarth. The, uh, the Welsh connection is very strong. Um, Jay Price receiving his winner's medal as well. The captain steps up to the cup. <laughs> he doesn't want a presentation. I'll take it home now, sir. <laughs> there we are. 
the smiles, the photograph for the history books. And now it's time to join the teammates. It's time <laughs> to go wild. In front of the Quinns fans. And there we go. Pen Campwir. Atran Tree in the rugby Cymru. The champions of the Division 3 Cup. Cardiff Quinns. Well, let's have a look at the highlights.
Hello. Achri Sanoni. Inwaith eto. Yr awr fawr, y gem fawr. Ar fi'n cychwyn. Rown derfynol adran 2-10 rygbi Cymru. Porth cawl yn erbyn Llan Haran. It's time for the Division 2 Cup final. The big one for today. Porth Cawl against Llan Haran. It is to East Central against to West Central. And have a look, let's have a look at the teams. Starting with the Seagulls. Ewan Manley, Jack Williams, the captain. And Michael Gully are going to be the front row. Richard Hinda and Jordan Fox, the second row partnership. Leon McNally, Josh Woodbridge. The flank forwards with Ryan Jones wearing eight. Halfbacks, Matthew Ellis and Josh White. Centre partnership, Ben Roach, Jonathan Phillips, Will Mahoney and Jacob Williams. The wingers with Sam Comley, the fullback. And the replacements are A. Harry Cooper, Sam Flanagan, Thomas Wilson, Jake Holland, Ewan Power, Connor Murdy, Cameron Maisie and Elliot Bennett with Jake Furness and Zach Davis, the travelling reserves. And for the Blues of Llan Haran, it's going to be Rhys Taylor, Jack Walker, Gethin Cashmore, the trio in the front row, Owen Howe and Kieran Martin in the boiler room, Jack Thompson, Lloyd Gregory and Yeyan Pring, the back row combination. Leon Burton wearing nine, Scott Jones outside him in ten, Jack Brooks, Halley Thompson, 12 and 13, and on the wings, Joe Davis, Adam Lewis, and Michael Jones sweeping up at fullback. Ray Lithion, the replacements, Tom Jenkins, Sam Richards, Jonathan Fletcher, Yedan Evans, Joe Buckley, Lewis Stansbury, Ryan Russell, and Jack Pring. Uh, and Chris Owe and Wynne Griffith are here once again in the commentary box with myself, Owen Gwynedd. Uh, and Chris, it was a bit of a scrappy game, the previous final, but as we hope, we step up a level once again in this one against two good teams. Yeah, this one has all the makings of being a cracker. Two very good teams, two very good coaching groups involved uh, with previous experience of being at the stadium before, particularly with Clanharan. So this looks to be uh, an entertaining game, we hope. Yeah, I'm just wondering where the dividing line is between East and West because Portcaul and Llanaran are pretty close to each other. They know each other so well, I would imagine, but it's promising to be a, a cracker. Certainly great uh, support as well for both teams and uh, really looking forward to this one. Last match of the day. Yeah, and the teams are on the way to the field. Portcaul in their green, Llanaran in blue. Llanaran. Coached by Gareth Nicholas and Port Cowell by former Wales and Ospreys player Ryan Bevington and Tom Pridey as well. Still, I believe, the youngest Wales international. I was at the time, anyway, when he was capped as a 17 year old, 17 and something days. Wayne's scratching his head here. Um, I think George North was in the mix there somewhere, wasn't he? And uh, David Howells. Yes. They're all in the same year for certain. But it's going to be Porthcow and their fly half Josh White will be looking to kick this one off, playing from the right to left as we look at the screens with Sanharan willing and waiting in their blue strips. We're considering the same pattern of the shirts, maybe when they're hugging on the floor, maybe a, a tester for the eyesight. Yes, and no point looking at the socks either. <laughs> but this promises, as uh, Chris has said, to be a, a cracker. And uh, two teams, really, which display the best and reflect the best of Welsh rugby because they've got mini juniors all the way up uh, to seniors and they're all homegrown. Yeah, exactly that win. We, we're going to see a lot of players out here today who've come through the homegrown sections of both clubs and uh, you can see how well supported they are in the stands. 
Yeah, when I read that uh, Gareth Nicholas, uh, the coach of uh, Llan Haran, says that he is a firm believer in grow your own. I had a look at YouTube. I couldn't find the video of Gareth the Gardener or Gareth in the greenhouse, but I think I know what he means. <laughs> Don't know what he's like at growing tomatoes or cucumbers, mind. A fourth call, the Seagulls with early possession in an uh, attacking sense. That's turned over. It's well stolen. Big carry by Michael Gully. He's going to be a handful, isn't he? Listen to the crowd. It's the best crowd of the fortnight so far, I think. It, you know, the East stand, the middle tier there, you know, it's, it's pretty full. And uh, they've travelled again by bus and by train and uh, God knows what else. And there are about a thousand people who come back from the Bream Sands Festival to support both call the minis, the juniors, families, parents, friends. That's great. Yeah, it's a wonderful story, isn't it, to see all these clubs taking part in RTP and taking pride in their in their home clubs and particularly coming back from tour especially as well. And had on the dairy men thinking they were through. A little bit of niggle early on. That's good. Got to have a bit of niggle, a bit of edge. Can you check the, the pronunciation and surname of number four? Is it him that's supposed to be at? Yeah. Naida. Okay, thank you. It's a decent edge downfield. And if you look at the league standings going ahead into this one, uh, Shanharan at top. Port Call a sixth. Does that put Sanharan as, as the favourites? Well, if you look at their record, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're around 16 games unbeaten so far. So, yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> but then again, um, who was it earlier on with 12 games unbeaten? Uh, Blina, and that record came to an end. So Sanharan took it up the jumper early on, using that strength that power that weight and the pack illegally brought down cross field kick there is space there couple of blue shirts out wide oh. into the bread basket nearly gets there joe davis tapped down pop back over the shoulder what a score is he in brilliant it's in jack brooks and that's probably one of the tries of the day, if not of the road to Principality. But the build-up to it, absolutely brilliant from Flanaran. Well-placed cross-field kick initially. Great take out on the left by Joe, da uh, Joe Davis. But then look at this, look what happens next. It's Jack Thompson. With the over the shoulder pass. The question was, are they favourites? Well, they're certainly in the driving seat early doors. Yeah, that looked like a set play to me. I think they had that one in their armory to use, but what a piece of skill there by uh, Jack Thompson. Yeah, a little bit of improvisation, wasn't it? Sometimes they do come off, and when they do, we marvel at, uh, at the handling and the, uh, the awareness and the potential to score a try. Conversion is missed. So it's fourth call nil, Shan Haran five. Thanks to this stunning score by Jack Brooks. And Thompson, no luck over the shoulder flick. It gets better every time you see it. Well, that's going to be on repeat tonight. Yeah, Dad Denver, former flanker for Cardiff, would have been delighted with that. Yeah, that wasn't allowed back in the day, you win. Oh, well. <laughs> that would have been uh, oh. a fine. Oh. Will Mahoney, Mahoney, wearing 11, trying to get... and score directly, more or less, from the restart. Loses his shirt in the process. Great take by Josh Woodbridge. 
And that's one way to strip a ball. I'll take your <laughs> shirt at the same time. No messing. Yes, yeah, good summary of uh, Yayan Pring, the number eight for Rathlin Haran. He's a no messing type of character. Good take at line by Than Haran. Confident going to the tail from a defensive line. And Jack Walker peels off. Create some space, and that's a, a good exit. Maybe not the distance Scott Jones would have hoped for, but it's safe, it's over the touchline. And uh, Clan Haran have been here not too long ago, a couple of years ago in the WIU Bowl final. They beat Bryn Kethin by 32 points to 24 that day. The club, which I wasn't too aware of, um, of Gareth and Glyn Llewellyn. Gareth Llewellyn, former Wales international and captain. Late 90s. Thumbs up off uh, Wayne Gruffid here. Early 90s even. Early 90s even. When he was playing for Neath. Yeah, that great side of the uh, late 80s and early 90s. Fourth call. Looking for space. They come back for the penalty. Game being played at a heck of a pace, isn't it? The referees have, will have his work cut out here. Yeah, there's a bit more zip in this one compared to the Div 3 final, which is a bit more of a slog. Yeah, more you, of a kicking battle. You see that step up of intensity and even the accuracy. And, um, you know, we've got a good referee here in Spencer Cleese to be able to officiate it today. Yeah, Spencer Cleese assisted by Dan Jeffrey and Kerry Minahan. Josh White lining up the penalty kick. Yeah, it was his match winning uh, kick late in the game over Aberavon Quinns that clinched the place in the final. Yeah, he turns on his heel, confident it was going over. So, Porth call reply with a penalty. Well taken effort from 40 plus meters on the angle. Fourth call three, Shan Haran five. So plenty of distance in that boot. And we've seen some big kickers on this park this afternoon. We've seen some big ball carries as well. Ryan Jones. Wins a few meters. That's sliced infield. Sanharan, look up. You have numbers on this right flank. Straightens the line. Well chopped down. Harley Thompson. Ian Burton slows things down. Uses Jack Thompson. Flat pass, a good flat pass by Jack Brooks, the scorer. Bringing on the runners. But it's all being played on that 10 metre line at the moment. Van Haran struggling to cross the gain line. Yeah, Owen Howe. Isolated, chopped down. Good patience by the Porth call defence there. They weren't committed numbers. They were quite comfortable to uh, keep men on their feet, force the turnover. Yeah, Van Haran, uh, 10 points clear at the top of the Division 2 East Central. And this certainly would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? Undefeated. The records are meant to be broken. Runs do come to an end. Will it be today? Yes, yeah, Sanharan seemed to be composed early on. Not rushing 
the plate. Looking to find some territory. Now, Porth Cole running back with Comley. Even Stevens out there physically trying to work each other out. Where is that weakness, the chink in defence? Josh White aims it downfield. It's well covered by Scott Jones. Again, it's a tactical beginning to this contest. A high spinning torpedo kick. This space. On the right-hand side for Shan Haran. It could be a 50-22. Where's the bounce? Still alive. Both Corley's get numbers around the ball. Matthew Ellis, the scrum half, has to do some digging. And the penalty. The Blue Shirts going off their feet. Teams look evenly matched physically, don't they, at the moment? Putting some air on the ball, and they're going to come back for the penalty. Yeah, high risk rugby there from uh, Pothkal. Yeah, they had the freedom of that penalty to have a look. Yeah, the penalty came from the ruck here, yeah, just going off their feet. Yeah, number six, Jack Thompson pleading his innocence. <laughs> yeah, after the event. Yeah. <laughs> we see this back row for uh, Athlan Haran working in unison at the moment. Very active. Referee having some difficulty with uh, the technology. Jack Williams, the captain. Splitting their pods. To the middle, overthrown. It's gone backwards, play goes. Ben Roach offloads. Oh, oh. gone forward on the uh, second attempt. The fourth called crowd, maybe not quite in agreement. Yeah, almost came off. Yeah, it was dragged forward, wasn't it, before Will Mahoney yeah, received the ball. You're right there, when it was nearly on, they exposed the winger, it would have been a two-on-one. But again, it's good, you know, that uh, both these teams want to play rugby. It's a great stage to be on, isn't it? And it's an opportunity for them to uh, to create their own little bit of history. Ewan Manley, Jack Williams, Michael Gully, Chris Taylor, Jack Walker, Gethin Cashmore, the front rows. Goes down. <laughs> uh, there are a few uh, law enforcement officers in this in this Lanaran side, and that scrum I think deserves a scene of crime officer, not a referee. <laughs> uh. That joke was criminal. <laughs> 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 uh, this could go anywhere. Oh, he's not getting his head down yet. No, no. That's a fair free kick. It was uh, his tail on the far side refusing to go down. Yeah, Michael Gully. Eyeball to eyeball. So taking a tap from the free kick. Fourth call. Good carry, some explosiveness. Putting some width on the ball. Organised Lan Haran defence at the moment, bringing Ben Roach to the ground. Again, it's an evenly matched physical battle. Both sides struggling to get over the game line. Josh Woodbridge isolated. Ian Pring straight on the ball. That's an example, perfect example of what getting over the game line does to you, allows your players to get time to arrive to the ball and if you don't win that battle the defence always has a chance Yeah, he'll feed off uh, those all day long, yeah, and haven't coached him that's his bread and butter, he'll really enjoy those close contact scenarios and those contests over the ball I 
Walker. Goes to the tail again. Opens up the field. Now then, bringing in the runners. Big carry in midfield, Harley Thompson. Now there's space. Jones finds the wide channels. Straight into the 22. One way running. Direct, powerful. The fourth call, do well. A yeah, good play by Sanhara and initial to spring, I think. And then uh, quick recycling. Some lovely passing in midfield. Be lacking some awareness and of why you just then need to cut in to keep it alive. It's a chance to put some pressure. Will Sanharan sling a pod up there. Josh Woodbridge wins the race at the front of the line. Ellis hooks that one off the field. And they win 10, 15 metres or so. Chris, how would you assess the early exchanges? It's been good, isn't it? As we said, pre-game, I think that level of quality has stepped up. The accuracy of the pass and the intensity, the speed of the game is much quicker. It's been a promising opening. Sanharan. Get the initial shove, but they eventually get pushed backwards. Looking for the crossfield kick as well. More of a touch finder this time. Overcocked by Jones. He'll be disappointed. Wasn't much on there. Outnumbered defensively. And that's the first real mistake we've seen from Sanharan with the ball. Yeah, there's a fair bit of green beyond the touchline, isn't there, for the uh, outside halves to gauge in an instant where the, where the touchline is. Good competition in the air. Van Haran coming up the side. Play goes on. Ryan Jones. Oh, Van Haran thinking they've got the steal. Still there for Ellis, however. Second jackal. And they do get a decision on this occasion. Again, Issa Yampring not for the first time. Chris over beside me said bread and butter. Having plenty of it today. Yeah, he was pretty instrumental as Yeah Yampring in the victory of Tanaran over Brinkathin, I think it was a couple of seasons ago. But we turn it's turning into a bit of a contest at the breakdown. An arm wrestle, isn't it? And Pring. Well, it's prominent and uh, Woodbridge for Poth Cowell as well. Yeah, you say an arm wrestle, nobody's seemingly winning that arm wrestle yet. It's evenly matched physically. Nobody's got that player at the moment that's winning the yards or has a superiority over his opposite number. Yeah, they're two pretty evenly matched teams at the moment. I, probably, I suppose the only edge being gained at the moment is maybe Flan Haran in that breakdown right now. Scott Jones missed his earlier conversion attempt. <laughs> Correct with this one. Sanharan extend their lead. Now up to eight points to Porth calls three. And with a hop, skip and a jump, that ball goes sailing over. Restart by White. Again, Woodbridge is after it. He's the first there to get the tackle in. Chopped down uh, Richard Ineda. And he's a tall timber to, to fell as the lock forward. The long kick downfield, not looking for touch. Tapped backwards by Ellis. It's there for Ryan Jones. Only one way. The back row knows straight down the middle. 
Ball's recycled. Bit too quick. That's a good touch finder. Yeah, it's a, a battle of the breakdown at the moment. At the moment. And a good decision. Was that the left foot of Josh Woodbridge? Or was it... Yeah, Math Matthew Ellis, maybe. Good movement in the line by Khan Haddon. Again, Burton hooks it up. One by Woodbridge has been uh, an early positive performer for the Seagulls. As has Ryan Jones been, the back row combining. They've got quick ball, they need to get it out. The drop goal attempt. Wasteful attempt, but they were playing advantage. The high tackle on Woodbridge. It did have the penalty. But what's your opinion about brothers Chris and Wynn as well? Going for a drop goal from a penalty, you're going to get a shot at goal potentially anyway. Is it worth going for the try? That's a free shot, I guess. It's probably if you pull it off, it's fine. But I think Lanharan will be disappointed with their exit there. They uh, they set themselves up and probably rushed the exit from uh, Liam Burton there and went a bit uh, sky skyward rather than distance. I saw a clip the other day of Rupert Moon taking a drop goal straight from the base of a scrum and got it over. Well, back in the day, Gareth Edwards was uh, an exponent of the drop kick from uh, the base of the scrum. Do you ever remember the Zinzan Brook one in the World Cup? Yes, yes. And Emir Lewis at the old national ground against Neath in the Wales Cup final. Gareth Simmons, the referee, wasn't a popular man down in uh, the Knoll after that. God, we're going back now, aren't we? Just a child win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's scuffed. The effort, Josh White. So the score remains Port Cowles 3, Llan Haran 8. Yes, yeah, and Brook had the audacity to drop a goal at the, in the World Cup 1995. But we don't see many drop goals these days, do we? Let alone from a scrum half uh, or a number 8. Yeah. And Chris Pachelny in the Japan World Cup. Popped the few over that day. Now the chip and chase, trying to find a little bit of grass. Good counter ducking, legally as well, staying their feet. The most important part, not giving away any cheap penalties. Good carry, Kanharan making half a break. Some space here. Running in and out, works his way to. Adam Lewis, who sends that one downfield, and it's out on the full. Lands on the white line, of course. Which is a part of touch. But there was some space out there for Lan Haran. Did see some space. Again, it's a cagey game, isn't it? There's not much in it. Williams, the captain. Five-man line, goes to the tail, overs throws again, not for the first time. That Portcal uh, line-out has gone awry. You can see that by almost every team in today's finals. Not much of an angle to work for Will Maloney or Mahoney. With Sam Comley with a kick, and that's going to creep over the dead ball line. The back for the penalty within 10 metres. Been impressed so far with number 10 and captain Scott uh, Jones. He's um, had quite a good influence already in his kicking and his uh, decision making. He is one of these players who's been around for a long time in the uh, blue and black shirt of uh, San Haran. Also knows what it takes to win your win when they've been here before in the final. 
Yeah, against Bryn Cathin two years ago. Walker, again, go to the tail. Accurate on the money. The rolling ball. Walker has the ball as well. Inching forward. Referee has his arm out. Free play. A crossfield kick again. Overshot into touch. They come back for the penalty. And that's one thing that has been clicking is that Shanharan line out. You wouldn't be surprised if they test it again. Some big men in that uh, Sanharad and forward unit. Kieran Martin wearing five. Made his presence felt there. He's a huge man, isn't he? Interesting, he's an engineer at Aston Martin. Not sure he'd fit in one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pinched. Crucially pinched at the front. Both call maybe unexpectedly contest that one. Matthew Ellis. Puts it downfield, taken quickly by Adam Lewis. Sanharan have possession in midfield, waiting for players to get back into position. Please, Taylor, the loose head in some space. How? The second row into. The heart of the green defence. Oh, again, Shanharan exploiting some space. The juggle, the catch, the dive. It's still alive. Shanharan building. Again, going from Touchline to touchline, how again involved. Back inside to the hooker, Jack Walker. A super team try. Was it a knock on in there? That'll be the question. Arsene Haran stretching both Cowell to the touchlines. And the quality of the passing has been brilliant, hasn't it? And how using his strength and power and the presence of mind to deliver the ball on a plate for Jack Walker. Can you go back to the knock-on, which potentially happened from the crossfield kick or the pass? Chance we go to the potential knock on with a guy jumped on a dive to catch it on, on, the, on the left wing. So it's going to be Scott Jones with his blue boots. Again, the same routine the hop, the skip, the jump, and the result is good. Port Cowell 3, Shan Haran 15. We didn't ask, was there a knock on in the process? Let's have another look. Here it is the juggle, the dive. Oh, he catches it. The referee gives a thumb up, or the assistant, I should say. No doubt in that one. What were you thinking, Chris, in asking the question? <laughs> The referee's assistant was right on the spot, doesn't it? I mean, we were unsighted from here. Do not have to save him? When? <laughs> Are we working up a good partnership here? <laughs> wouldn't, want to, wouldn't want to be in a trench with you two, tell him. <laughs> Outstanding try, though. What great build-up play. Yeah. yeah. There was a, we've seen an individual try or some innovation, the first one, and that was a super team try. Again, stretching the team yeah. from touchline to touchline. And letting the ball do the work. In the words of the late Carwin James, rugby is a simple game. Yeah, you've seen the distribution, aren't you, in 10 and 13 in Harley Thompson as well, a player who's played a lot of premiership rugby, a lot of experience there. Nathan Haran starting to show their quality, maybe. Again, Scott Jones just... Guiding his team downfield. 
using a variety of tactics. Yeah, Poth call get the uh, decision for the throw. There could have been a touch in there somewhere. Yeah, time's off. Can we change? Is it Matthew Ellis who is potentially leaving the field for some treatment? Scrum half. Jack Williams, now then, can he get this line-out working? Can Haran throw two pods up? Well taken, well won for the Seagulls. Hint of offside in there. White charge down, hesitation. The chase is there, green shirt flocking back. Oh, both Carl have done well here, haven't they? It's well recovered, a second bite the cherry for Josh White. Twenty-three in his back, Elliot Bennett, the replacement for Matthew Ellis. Does well on the floor. Yeah, those seagulls flocking back, but they're not flapping. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. It has. I'm just looking at that Elliot Bennett wearing 23 on for... Port Cowell. He was here in 2018 as a mascot, one of four mascots. And six years on, just come on the field. Yeah, how quick things can change. When you consider, we were talking about how young people, some players are to grace this pitch in a, a national jersey, 17, 18 years old. Well, it takes a couple of years for you to get to that stage in your teens. So one second, you could be a mascot. Next minute, you're on the field. Just a correction for us. It's Cameron Maisie wearing 23, not 22. It was Luke correcting the numbers. So Cameron Maisie's wearing 23. Elliot Bennett, I assume, then 22, so changing shirts. Yeah, we'll have to wait a while yet then for Bennett to come on. Ooh, Brooks sees a hole. The show, the goal, the release, the pop back inside. Burton! Gone forward. It was that man Ooh. Jack Thompson again, wasn't it? With that's a penalty pass. there against Burton, kicking it into the referee, some chops in. Oh. <laughs> I could have, he's lucky maybe not to receive a card. It was unintentional. Look a at good this. Good interplay. Yeah, there is an argument that that went backwards or forwards from a green hand. Yeah, Liam Burton, maybe the ball didn't strike the referee, but some... Back shot. Yeah. <laughs> Severe warning from the referee, and then the water boy sort of offering him a peace offering. <laughs> a drink of water. <laughs> His it is mouth must be pretty dry at the moment, the referee. But there is, isn't it? A lot of psychology being played on the park. Remember when I was a referee. You'd have captains who who just know how to play you, some t and then you didn't realise that you were playing, being played until after the game. Anyone in particular? <laughs> name names. Name names. No, I was given a tough time by a few, few, a few captains. One of them that was here as a coach um, last week. Chris Owen thinking hard. He was uh, coaching his son. 
from East. Anyway, there for the clues for the moment. Van Haran are trying to put this game to bed in the first half. They have a 12-point advantage. But some loose passing brings this attack to a, an end. They have to rebuild. Tabers, the loose head. Oh, that's a good, solid defending by the green wall. Referee having a look with the shoulder. Tempers maybe starting to boil over on the park. Good possession here for Than Haran. Yeah, they weren't going forward, but they kept the ball and in the end a decent outcome. Yeah, Portugal still penned in their own uh, 22. Valiant effort to break out, but it's relentless attacking, isn't it, from uh, San Haran in this opening half? Oh. Again, the fourth call, line out, creaking, cracking. And somehow they salvage the situation by stealing the ball. But Van Haran really causing problems. But both Kaul, well... They're, they're architects of their own downfall. Yes, indeed. But without a set piece, it's almost impossible to build an attack. And that both call line out. They may want to find the safety of the sheds to have a word to see how they can regather themselves and change their tactics and decision-making. Good touch finder. That's a relieving kick for Portcowl. Now then, can they build on this? Because the game is in danger of getting away from them. Three minutes to the break, and they desperately need a score. They cut the numbers. Five men in the line. Go to the middle again. It's overshot. Walker's there. Loses it. It's going to be a scrum for Port Cowell. But it's ever so scrappy. And it's, yeah, it's just an overthrow, isn't it? Puts too much on it. And you may say the coaches may get a word on. Yeah, cut the numbers, but keep it simple. Win the race at the front of the line. Yeah, I think... They got their lifter up fine then. I think he was there to be hit. It wasn't as if there was a great uh, defend against them. He just, at the moment, he just can't find his accuracy in his throw. Maisie feeds, and it's the penalty that goes away. Shan Haran, not on the mark. He'll come back. Again, Leon Burton needs to be careful here. He's protesting at everything that doesn't go his way. Like every good nine, he'll feel uh, he's been hard done by there, but he was nowhere near the mark. No. Now then, Scott Jones, he's going to have a pop here. Yeah, why not? Just before the break. Another three-pointer. It could uh, break the hearts of the uh, fourth goal side. Yeah, it'll take him to beyond two scores if he manages to get this one. And whilst he lines up, doing the answer to the quiz question of uh, the captain, Bargoy, the club. Coach the son? Yeah. Oh, uh, Meads. That's it. I knew you'd know the answer deep down there somewhere. Jones has his bit of a dance. Oh. oh, he gets it over as well. Sneaks it up. Oh, with that crossbar. And Port Cow 3, Shan Haran 18. Well, we've seen some exemplary kicking uh, over the last few weeks, haven't we, at, at all ages? And that's an element of the game that has certainly improved uh, 
on the road to Principality and uh, Scott Jones is a brilliant exponent on the uh, the long distance kick. Half time whistle is approaching. We do feel Portugal may be sensing this. Cup final is starting to slip away. They need to try and get a score. And again, a great ch chase by Josh Woodbridge. Puts themselves in prime position for a late score. Ryan Jones. We haven't seen enough of him with the ball in hand. Using Roach. Again, Nathan Haran. Defence is tough to break down. And the forwards win the battle. Could be Jack Thompson. Sorry, uh, Leon McNally in there. Yeah, the referee's consistent, isn't he? On that occasion, to Jacob Williams, the stand-in scrum half, who uh, expressed his dissatisfaction, shall we say, with the uh, referee's decision. Yeah, and that is the final act of the first half in this Division 2 Cup final. And it's all pretty much gone the way of Than Hara and the Dairymen. They've uh, scored when the opportunities have come their way. The first coming to Jack Brooks. Jack Walker with a second try. The rest of the points coming off the boot of the fly half. Scott Jones with... Josh White, the only score for Port Cowell. So it's Port Cowell 3, Stan Haran 18 at the change of ends.
Second half of this Division Two Cup final about to get underway. Ail Hanar on Ron Dirvenol at Randai. Arvin Cachwin Porthgaul Tri Llanharan Dinau at their score are a requil. Llanharan a bossip a team crava. Velmar score and other working a Hanar Kinsa. And Rigiro and a Gangrair Eleni Porthgaul and Hanol a table the Gangrair no. Here Fevrena, well, got to see that la. Or possibly Ar Blain Erbanuman, Dwi Gengrair Arwahan Llanharan. Yet Newid, when he in Port Cowl, Ma Rhif Derek Petwar, Sef Elliot Bennett, Ymlaen i'r Cai. Ar gyfer Rhif Tri, Michael Gully, yeah. Index three, Jonathan Phillips. And you're going to have three So the second half is underway. Portcal three, Llanharan 18. Second period of this Division Two Cup final. Joe Davis tries to twist and turn after the way of those oncoming green shirts. With Josh Woodbridge frustrated. Unlucky, he had his elbow on the ground, but he showed his intent to the referee, showed him his arms. Ooh, that's um, a slightly harsh decision yeah. on, the, on the replay. It's easy for us to say on a second look, but there was a clear release. He goes in. Not much of an elbow on the floor, unless the referee was looking at someone else who went in prior to Josh Woodbridge. Scott Jones again using that trusted right boot of his. Yeah, he's been the mastermind of the uh, Llanharan plays in the first half. This may be the point of difference in the size performances and reflected in the score is the performance of the lineouts. We see uh, William Will Mahoney in that far side limping off. Hence the referee being, bringing the play to a, a quick stop. Yeah, sad to see that. I don't think Will's been right since uh, that kick we gather that they uh, that he picked up at the end of the first half. Connor Murdy coming to the field and after that early build-up, Barshan Hardan's point of difference being the line-out. It's their turn to throw a dodgy dart. Yeah, not straight to the tail. I always admire a hooker's confident confidence going to the tail with the first throw in any half. You can see why they want to go there because obviously it's less defended and they can set to their mall or bring a, bring a peel off. But at the moment, you can't blame the conditions. The roof is closed here, so both hookers not hitting their darts at the moment. Both call, retrieve the ball from the scrum. Spinning the ball, there is space out wide, but they cut back in, looking for numbers. Woodbridge again, looking for the jackal, pulled away. And had uncomposed in their attack, aren't they? Not rushing or pushing the passes, just allowing the ball to go through the hands. That's Walker. Going to ground, and now then, there is an opportunity. Jones offloads, or oh, the offload was there, it's on the floor. Knock on advantage, space in the backfield. The chase is on. Sanhara need to be aware. Some good work on the floor by Michael Jones, buying some time, maybe an extra half a roll. Thompson is ingenuity created the first try. It's a miscommunication. Young Burton not uh, backward and coming forward, is he? It's a good win back for Porthcall. He'll be happy to get uh, the ball, but 
There are some concerns at the moment. They're dropping off a few tackles. Once uh, Flanaren again to multi-phase, you can see the stroke forwards are struggling to get back into any set position defensively. And Flanaren get the ball wide very quickly, don't they? Two passes and it's out onto the wing. And Flanaren don't seem to be having to do anything you know, out of the order. They just use the ball, going into contact, moving it again. And after, they say, the multi-phase, they come back to the other direction and the holds are there. It's coming a lot from their speed of their breakdown and the ability of their carries are allowing them to have clean rucks. And again, that ball away slightly quicker, which is then uh, beating Porth Call in their set in defence. And Porth Call, they need a score, don't they? They need to challenge that Sanharan defensive line and try line, which they've failed to do so really in the first half. And again, some bickering going on. Well, it's the same too, isn't it? It's uh, Reese Taylor for Sanharan and Michael Gully for Porth Call. Loose head and tight head. Here they go. Oh, nice That's kick. A, nice kick. Great kick. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Ordered Josh White. Now then, can Porth call fix that line out? It's a full man. Woodbridge is at the front. Is he going to be the target again? They go to the middle. It's the other flanker, Leon McNally, who scrapes it backwards. But Sanharan work hard, get over the ball. And Jones clears. It's the Achilles heel for Port Carl, isn't it? The line out. Great position gained by Josh White. Well, the coaches have said to line out. You know, callers and the throwers in the changing rooms because that's probably going to be their topic of conversation in the sheds. Yeah, they'll have to get this area sorted out or it's going to be a long afternoon. I think far from me being a forwards coach, but I'd probably ask the question if you throw into where the Van Aaron defensive pod is, could you have a little bit more movement in your line or just guarantee front possession and drive from there? Yeah, the captains call together and the two protagonists, the uh, loose head for Van Aaron, Reese Taylor and Michael Gully. The tight dead for Port Cowell. Don't they look innocent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me, sir. So Port Cowell, they've lost 25 metres. It's another line out. So it's going to be shortened this time. Pod in the middle. Overshot again, lost count. How many line outs? Port call have now lost. Sanharan with a steal, they're gonna go wide. The change of mind by Jack Thompson, and he wins the penalty. A nice little chip off the left boot this time. Oh, well gathered. One more pass that in space. Joe Davis, Davis shrugs off one, the second, the third, and he's under the sticks. And Shan Haran are starting to put Porth Call to the sword. Well, that surely is the game there, isn't it? Showing good strength, Joe Davis. Not short on pace either. That little kick through by Jones initially created the space out wide. It had to come. But poor defending by Portugal. If they're looking back at the tape, they'll be saying, guys, where's the uh, the tackle technique in there? All going too high, not getting some leg drive in there. And Joe Davis made light work of those green shirts. And from two missed lineups from positive positions, you know, to be in the sticks, having a chat, boys, what's going on there? We're 20 points behind now. It seems like a, a long second half. Yeah, it's a difficult road back for them now, isn't it? Those those errors are critical and they're resulting in points now. Flanhara not really having to do a huge amount for that. Conversion's good, but here's a try again. Well taken try, must be said. There was support runners on the inside. Didn't need anybody. Yeah, good chasing by Michael Jones, the fullback who delivered the... Final pass, the scoring pass to Joe Davis. 
Fourth call, three, Shanharan, 25. That unbeaten record looks set to continue. Yeah, they were promoted as Division Three champions last season with Van Haran, and uh, looking good. That's impressive in itself, isn't it, to gain promotion and back it up with another likely promotion, it seems. Again, Scott Jones lifts the cross-field kick, looking for the winger. Well taken, but isolated, stolen. And it was Adam Lewis out there. Fourth court trying to pick up the tempo. They take the tap. That line out isn't trustworthy. Van Harana, back ten. Bodies flying in to the counter. -up. Penalty advantage to the green shirts. I think that's the right approach there from Jacob Williams, though. They need to break the game up now. Um, just try anything in their armory. I think he did the right thing with a the tap. They've won a penalty. Now what do you do? <laughs> Tom Pride, isn't it? Wins pointing out. You can see the trio of orange bibs in the background. Tom Pride in the middle. Is it Ryan Bevington on the left? The coaching setup of Porth Cowell. Who have, as well, it's worth noting, Chris, that Port Cowell have really turned things around over the last three years. A, a team that was really struggling, and Ryan Bevington and Tom Pride in turn have come in and, and improved the, the club's status. Yeah, it's a great backstory, isn't it? And uh, it's, a thr it's a thriving club now, which is great to see. And you read from where this coaching group have taken this team in the last uh, year or so to where they are today is an outstanding achievement. And irrespective of the result, the club should be very proud of what it's doing. Yeah, it's on the firm footing now, isn't it, Sir Poth Cowell? And they've got a, a ladies' team, and I like the name, the Sheagles. <laughs> the Seagulls under pressure, they've knocked it on. And San Haran, they're not going to take their foot off the pedal here, are they? Just scrappy on the floor. The presentation, not good enough. Yeah, Thomas Wilson is on for Michael Gully. Perhaps that's a, a wise move because it could prove to be a liability. And there's Tom Pride in the middle. Ryan Bevington, the head coach on the left. Two former Wales internationals. It's unfortunate. I think we would have seen Tom out in this field today, but I uh, gather a hamstring injury has ruled him out. Well, somebody else had a hamstring injury for, uh, for Tona. Craig Mitchell. Another. Former Wales international. Indeed, and giving back to the club. I went for Haran one uh, here two years ago. There were some 500 people waiting for them uh, back at the, uh, the clubhouse. <laughs> and they arrived to the strains of Sweet Caroline. I hope the St. Haran supporters are in fine voice because they'll have to repeat that performance I'm as sure. things stand. I'm sure the DJ's ready and waiting. Led by Gareth Nicholas. <laughs> He'll be right at the front of that. <laughs> San Haran have a license to play from deep now with that 22 point advantage. Good side against it. Scott Jones doesn't find touch. Oh, it's captain then taken over. It's going to be a line. For San Haran, and things are just not going the way of the Seagulls. Yeah, tiptoe stuff. That's such an impressive kick, though, isn't it? To pinpoint it that far and put it, pin it right on a touchline. And that's on the limit, isn't it? That, that was his max. For the changes for San Haran, giving the replacements an opportunity. And they'll fight out to Jack Brooks. And they're finding some green space again. They're in the open field and knocked on by Harley Thompson. 
Well, he'd be disappointed. Well, he is disappointed with that because uh, Sanhar and Ron song there. The ball was flowing again. Yeah, into acres of space. And the try was on, wasn't it? Blue shirts out on the left. Nelly Thompson. I've been impressed with Jack Brooks as well, his centre partner. He's played tidy, simple rugby, but been effective, especially with ball in hand, in putting others into space. Yeah, it's a good combination, that 10, uh, 12, 13 axis. They've had lots of involvements, led well there by, um, by Sam at, uh, Scott at 10. Free kick. An early shove by Khan Hadan, taken quickly. Play stopped again by the referee. Yeah, good to see the green shirt smiling. It's uh, been a tough day at the office so far. Jacob Williams having a giggle with the referee. That's a top kick by Michael Jones, the kind of had a fullback to get the ball back to the ref. And not a bad kick from the ref either to no. kick it off. He'd have had the bird if he'd scuffed that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Sanharan, time to defend, put Cal can they challenge this blue wall? They've struggled to do for the first hour of this contest. Stepping back inside. Sanharan, have the measure of this Port Cole attack, shoving them back again. Hands in the ruck. Port Cole needed that and the pressure. And at the moment, it's a shame to say, but it's difficult to see how Port Cole are going to get into back into this contest. They've, they've got a, a line out that is broken and uh, a pack that are failing to make dents in that and had on defence. Yeah, at the moment, they're struggling to make any inroads in the game in any facet. I think. You know, Josh Woodbridge out there has been an absolute warrior. He's in the heart of a lot of good that uh, Porth Cole are getting. But uh, Clan Aaron are comfortable. You know, with the scoreboard as it is, they can not compete in breakdowns or choose to if they wish. Yeah, we'll be looking for player of the match, of course. Uh, sponsored by Go.Compare. At the moment, the uh, likely candidates are wearing blue. Although, as you mentioned there, uh, Chris, uh, Josh Woodbridge has certainly uh, put in... a. Uh, Quite a huge shift for Porth Cowell, the number seven. Yeah, Josh White hobbling, isn't he? He's taking a bump for his efforts. He may well have twinged his hamstring. Now then, that's uh, an improvement. They've got possession from the line. Gives themselves a platform. Again, the short angle, Ben Roach. Tanharan, solid in defence. Williams, the jackal attempt fails. Tanharan making a mess of the breakdown, are they? they Disturbing the possession, the chip through, the chase. Trying to put Michael Jones under pressure, has to take it out. That was better from Porth Cole, though, you know, a clean line out. Able to get the ball into the hands of Ryan Jones to make an inroad. That was far better in terms of how they can get some attack platform in this game. Yeah, Josh White is in some uh, discomfort, isn't he? The Porth Cole outside half, he still wants the ball, though. Yeah, my kick may not be the wisest of options if he... Goes for this, he may make his, himself a, have a, an even bigger mischief. He's put his side in prime position there, six or seven metres out. And Porth Cole, you feel they have to score here if they're going to challenge Llanaran in any way, shape or form. Well, there's a long way to go in this uh, second half if uh, Josh White is going to remain on the field of play. 
Oh, it's another one that's overshot the jumper. Antlan Haran, escape again. And there is room outright into open field. Two on one, they exploit the space. Well covered. Adam Lewis pushed into touch. Woodbridge again. And it's Woodbridge. Not going to work. He somehow got over, still chasing. You could criticise him that his head's on the wrong side, but fair play. How much work has Josh Woodbridge got through? Uh, he's playing his heart out, doesn't he? And uh, Josh White finally has to call it a day. Well, he uh, was spotted, I think, by the uh, St. Haran back division there. They targeted him, and uh, Josh just fell in front of the uh, ball carrier. Might have given away a penalty, really, for no arms. But at the moment, he's got no legs. <laughs> He's hanging on in there. Yeah, so a change with Josh White coming off with Iwan Power wearing 20, replacing the fly half. He's struggling there. The port call ten. Let's have a look at the third score for San Haran. Was that forward? Maybe the question is. Referee was on point to have a look. And the finish. Top draw by Joe Davis. And with the swan dive finish. Made famous by Ashton. The former England winger, that is. And that line out, doesn't matter where the ball's thrown into, is just not working. It's crumbled under pressure of the Division Two Cup final. Well, that's how you do it. Martin wins it in the air. And the rest of the pack. Yeah, they've had a long game supremacy at the set pieces, haven't they? They don't mind the odd indiscretion. Oh, they're in space again. One more pass, they could be in. Is it going to be another score in the second half for Joe Davis? There's nobody ahead of the winger. And he's over again beneath the sticks. Loses his shorts for his efforts. But he won't mind. Dan Haran at up to 30. All too easy. The dummy runners, the blockers. Taking too much attention of the defence. Yeah, Michael Jones up again from fullback, opening the door and a simple run in this time for Joe Davis. But it all started at the line out and a problematic line out for Port Cowell. But it uh, clicked again for San Haran. Yeah, when you consider both of Joe Davis's tries have come from faulty Port Cowell line outs, those two earlier on that they missed early in the half, they made a mess. Of the previous line out that gave possession to Clan Haran. Scott Jones converts. Yeah, it's definitely fed Clan Haran, isn't it? But then you've got to compliment Clan Haran on their execution. You know, in cleverness of bringing their wing around to make it the extra player here. He kicks out, creates a two on one, and that's perfect execution, isn't it? And this yeah. lad can move. It's an easy score in the end. Fourth call, three, San Haran, 32. And Scott Jones, they're going to look to exploit this left-hand side again. Scott Jones in some space, he's going to fly past his opposite winger. The scorer, is he going to be provider? 
and the scrum half, Leo Burton, is over. Now that's a super coast to coast try. And Shan Haddan really strutting their stuff. Yeah, working the extra man again. Michael Jones up from fullback. Joe Davis, powerful left winger. Jones for the second time. Burton's been pretty quiet of late, but he's taken his try well. And that's a fifth try for Shan Haddan. The floodgates have opened. Scott Jones lines up the conversion. And with about 15 minutes to go, he starts to feel for the fourth call players. Long hold, second half. Jones takes his time, but gets his points. Fourth call three, Shan Haran 39. There's 14 points for the outside half. All too easy for Joe Davis. Jacob Williams really struggling to keep the lid on the left winger. And uh, to give you some statistics on the day here today, we've had a combined attendance of 5,665 here for the Division 5 to Division 2 men's finals day. A healthy crowd coming out from the towns and villages to support their teams. Thank you very much to everyone for coming here to support the Road to Principality series. Supported by Go Dot Compare. And we will be discussing the Player of the Match award. In five or ten minutes or so, I know Chris Owen has been jotting some names down already. When I know you've got a few stars by a few names as well, I'm sure. Well, they're all wearing blue at the moment, aren't they? You know, you've got to look at uh, Scott Jones in particular, orchestrating things behind, but it's the forwards that have laid the platform. Some changes for. Pod Carl, I think that's Joe Davis. Yeah, loud cheers for Joe Davis. Two tries, well taken. And this Jack Pring, who's on the field, I'm assuming here, I'm guessing, somebody may co correct me if I'm wrong, related to number eight, Yeyan Pring. Yeah, I think Yeyan was the first down for breakfast, if they are related. <laughs> He had seconds by the time <laughs> by the time Jack was downstairs. Interesting fact on Jack is uh, a former Love Island contestant, so he got the looks as well. Ah, he spent time in the mirror. So is that your choice of television at uh, at night? Is it <laughs> Love Island? Win, Tommy. It's his, uh, <laughs> it, it's his guilty pleasure. <laughs> the truth is out. <laughs> Now, Postcal, what can they string together? Nathan Harren. Defence has been unbreachable. Offside. So there'll be a chance to go for the corner, but... Oh, do they want to, I wonder? <laughs> yeah, but is there a choice? Uh, Postcal play for pride now, aren't they? That's a good kick by Sam Comley. Puts his team in the position they want to be. But now then, can they just hit a line out in an attacking position? They have a change in hooker. But have they got a change in result? They go to the front, they find Woodbridge. Ryan Jones has the ball. Ryan Jones breaks away, straight down. Scott Jones' channel, the fly half, flung out of the way. 
Now then, here's a chance. Jake, Holland, Holland! Oh! He's lost it. It's knocked on. Well, if we, had, if we had the TMO, we'd be looking at that for the next five minutes. Yeah, I think it's the correct decision at the first glance. But yeah, you're right to win. I'm sure the TMO would be rocking and rolling that one. They've gone again. They don't trust the line. Oh, and they've forced the pass. They've lost it. The knock on. Well, full marks for Endeavour. Well, that's the closest they've come, really, to scoring a try. Yeah, Jacob Williams playing some NFL with how he scooped out between the legs. legs. If I saw a photo correctly, he's talking about the NFL. Lewis Rizamo back in Cardiff today. Was he up at, at the mat or entertaining some young rugby players? Where did I see him? He was in the crowd watching a game somewhere. I can't remember where it was. Did you see it? He was attending a football match, I think. The Chelsea Man United whispered in my ear. Correct. A shocking result. Man United were robbed again. <laughs> <laughs> As they've been all season. <laughs> Chris was happy with the Everton result, I think. Yeah, I'm very happy with that, to be honest. When I think that keeps us up after we were harshly done with uh, points deductions, <laughs> but <laughs> let's not let's not go over that no. now. <laughs> Supposed to be a scrum down on that far side for Llan Haran before they empty the bench to give everybody a run out here at the Principality. The cup is on the way home to Llan Haran. It's uh, beyond doubt. Jones with a clearance kick. No nonsense, finds touch. So here come the rest of the cavalry. Yeah, both Kaul and will get close to Jones uh, all afternoon, have they? Oh, showing some class out there. Hassan Haran just been far superior in every facet of play. But it's the line out in particular that's been the main point of difference. Fourth call, a creek cracked and crumbled. We just haven't. Able to get a platform. Again, that's not straight. And it's difficult to search for words to well, console I mean, them. That is down to the hooker, isn't it? I mean, you, you try and uh, defend the hooker more often than not because it's the call at the line out, but on that occasion, it was crooked. Go for the juggler win. <laughs> the hooker's fault. <laughs> no, in that occasion, slipped out of the hand, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a technical area, isn't it, with timings and movement. Burton, the scorer of the fifth, feeds his scrum. Solid as a rock. The back line again. Challenge the right hand side and the offload at the back of hand releases. Lewis into some space. Ball still alive. Weaving into the 22. Blue shirts queuing up. Brooks juggles the big centre. Beats the uh, first two green shirts. It's still on here. Oh, gets his hands out of the tackle. Five metres short. Is it a sixth try? Seems inevitable. And it is a score to Joe Buckle. 
Yeah, even when they get things wrong, they get it right, don't they, uh, San Aran, if that makes sense, because it all appeared to uh, break down in midfield, but they had time on the ball, patience, and in the end, it was Buckle crossing. But this is a nice break, lovely offload initially. And this guy again coming off his wing, looking for work, that's Adam Lewis. And that's that last pass lift by Sam Richards, wearing 17. Just draws the tackle, flicks the pass. And you're not going to stop the big man from there. They're just all on the same page, aren't they, Flynn Harren? They're comfortable. Uh, obviously, with the scoreboard as it is, you can try things, but it still needs to be executed, and they've done it well. The uh, bench has come on and added to that, I feel, also. So, yeah, it's a pretty comprehensive score at the moment. Yeah, Buckle scored a try in the semi-final win over Penarth, 23 points to nine, as did Jack Walker. Both on the score sheet today again. We've got a couple of players down in the line of the kick in front of the posts. Now this is the, the score again. Your four blue shirts out wide could have been easily any one of them. But when you're a second row, you're not going to pass, are you? No, when you're that tall as well, you could reach from there. Well, if you dive from the 22, I think it would cross the try line. Scott Jones lines this one up. Yeah, slices it by the near post. Porth Cowell, three, Llanharan, 44. Again, you have to compliment Josh Woodbridge. He chases that conversion like it's the last uh, point to be chased for. He's been an absolute engine all day long. Yeah, and I, it's difficult to pick a green shirt as the player of the match. And with about three, four minutes remaining, Josh Woodbridge has been an absolute standout for Porth Cowell. And another day, maybe he would be play the match. But it's difficult, maybe, to select the green shirt considering the the one-sidedness of the scoreboard. So, when your nominees? Well, uh, yeah, Scott Jones certainly for Sanhara and that outside half. He's pulled the strings, hasn't he? Um, we've seen flashes of brilliance as well from Jack Thompson at uh, flank forward. The front row down there. Jack Walker's been busy uh, in, in the uh, front row. Yeah, and he's been squeaky clean in the line now, isn't it? I think the pack as a whole are just dominated. Uh, it's difficult to maybe select one forward from that eight. They've just been a unit, haven't they, around the park. They've done their job. Chris, yourself? Yeah, I think the back row for St. Aaron have just been like a wolf pack all day. They've hunted everything, haven't they? And they've really frustrated Porth Cole in that contact area, especially um, Joe Davis. His influences have had uh, touches of brilliance and he's taken his tries well. Josh Woodbridge, I've got to mention him again. I think he's been an absolute star in a losing cause, in fairness, and he's been a real credit to Porth Cole. Porth Cole, can they get a consolation score? Can they get a try? to lift their spirits on the bus ride home. Woodbridge, you would be surprised if he gets the score. Beat two first up tacklers. And uh, Pothkal have had to rearrange, haven't they? Uh, Matthew Ellis, the scrum half went off, and Jacob Williams has come in to do the duties uh, at nine. Pring again gets his hands on the ball. Got off his feet on that occasion. Penalty taken quickly. The door is ajar. Jacob Williams up towards five metres. Needs some help. Ball's there. Green shirts out left. Thomas Wilson. Sanharan fighting for the ball. They're not going to give up. They're not going to allow Porth Cowell to get a score. Now they're, they're away. It was half a chance. Again. Blue shares flooding forward. The try scorer pops it up. Oh, dump down, but he gets the ball away. High tackle in there. No, says the referee. He 
Here we go again. His space out left. And here come Can Haran. This silence because we try to decide the player of the match between us over here. But it's knocked on. Half a second, Portcal were thinking that away. McNally opening his stride. But it's intentional knock on, so it's going to be a penalty for Can Haran. So number eight. Number eight here, yeah, I'm will get it for Canada. Eight. Have we come to a decision, gentlemen, on the it, player of the match it, uh, it award, the go.compare player of the match? It, it, we, it's been a healthy discussion off mic, yeah, hence yeah. the silence at times. It's been difficult to, to come to. A part of me wants to give it to Josh Woodbridge, number seven for Port Cal, because he's been a, such a standout yep. performer. But because of the landslide results, Scott Jones, as an individual, is the the team. But I think it's been the pack of Hanharan that has given the platform for those backs. So, for a team performance, and the NM Pring has been fantastic early on with the jackals, he's carried hard. I think we've come to an agreement that Yen Pring, the number eight, Deserves to play the match award. Yeah, I think he's been the heart of everything that Van Haren have been good about today, and he's led that energy as part of a back row. But I think him in particular has been superb in the amount of turnovers, how he slowed possession down, his, his uh, work around the park, and even his continuity link up as well. So, yeah, deservedly so. Yeah, and part of that pack that's really dominated Port Cowell as well has been the platform for this one sided victory. And how desperate are they to try and get to that 50 point mark as well? Always oh, nudged oh. forward on the floor. The scrum half won't thank him for that though. Is that going to be a reset? What's happened here? It's going to be. Yeah, reset, Lan Haran ball. So one last chance. The clock would be would red if we were had one on the screen. <laughs> Williams, uh, who's come on to uh, the scrum half position uh, from the left wing, well, he has played that scrum half um, over the years, but he's certainly enjoyed the, his, uh, if that is the right word, there's always a smile on his face. Portugal get the nudge in the scrum, the first time maybe they've won a set piece battle Jones again plenty of space and depth in this attack using the width of the field cutting back inside is Jack Pring onto the left wing Jones there again orchestrating the attack plenty of numbers out wide on the right Need some help on the floor. They come left, they go right, they go straight. A chip into space. Oh, the bounce nearly gathered by Adam Lewis. The penalty was there. Again, lots of hands on knees. Particularly so in the uh, Pothkal ranks. Yeah, they're out for the count, aren't they? Yeah, beaten but not unbowed. Not the best of efforts by Scott Jones, not the easiest of maybe kicks to try and place in the corner from the centre of the uh, 22. Some work for the forwards. 15 metres out. He 
goes to Taylor. It's won by Portcal. Probably the only line out they've won all day. And Jordan Fox carries out. No, Portcal will have a go. Yeah, they're not going to kick this dead or it'll be game over. They're going to have to go from their own 22 if they're going to get a, a late try. It's going to be tap and go. Last chance saloon. Woodbridge. Again, he's been a machine. That's better. It's gone forward. Shanharan. Nobody wants to stop. They're having too much fun. They're looking for the 50 points, aren't they? Oh, that's a step. Half a break. The offload. Jones has gone back. He's gone forward. Now then, Portcowl. Are they going to put it dead? I don't think so. Ryan Jones, you've seen flashes of the number eight. Well, that's the final play in this Division Two Cup final. And it's been a super Saturday in the road to Principality. And Sanharan in this final game of the day have dominated their opponents, Port Cowell. Six tries in all for the Dairymen and a comprehensive victory. It's Port Cowell 3, Sanharan 44. So many congratulations to Sanharan, the Division 2 Cup winners, they're unbeaten. Record continues as they march on in their quest to get to Division 1. And they've secured the cup en route. And Paul Cole, well, they've still got business to do in the league, of course. And they'll come back fighting another day under the guidance of Ryan Bevington and Tom Pridey. With it to win, Gair or Ran Llanharan. Yeah, in the Oh, it's got more to bear. Gan y blaen wyr yn benodol yn chwarae fel uned. A gan nhw bod hefyd bod yna ddiffygion yn elfen egosol Port Cawl. Hyd yn orffan nhw oedd a Llanharan yn eu camgymeriadau. Oedd Llanharan yn gwybod y gallai nhw ennill y leini, ennill y sgrym. Ma mae'r leini wedi bod yn trafferthu sy'n eu unig i'r ddau di mewn mae'n gwirionedd, ond drwy'r dydd. Dwi ddim yn gallu rhoi mis ar baham. Ie, mae'r rhywun yn tybio, mae dyna dynor elfennau mae'r blaenwyr yn y marfer fwyaf yn ystod y rwythnos a'r leiniau. O, oedd y gwahaniaeth i bob pwrpas rhwng y ddau dîm Llanharan yn gywir hefo rhai nhw. A pam y cael port cael i cyfleoedd y mysodol yn colli'r meddiant a Llanharan yn defnyddio'r meddiant anisgwyl yna i sgorio o ddyfnder ar Rhwbio'r halen yn y briw. Ie, yeah, meddiant glân ac yna rhyddhau i'r olwyr dawnus mae Asi gyda nhw a Scott Jones yn tynnu'r llyn yn ewrth gwrs ond rhaid y sôn am chwarae o'r y gêm Ieian Pring. Oedd yn hobman yn dod e yn ar afi pêl Porth Cawl ac yn troi'r bêl drosodd. Chwarae o'r arbennig ar nôl fan un am yr eildro wrth gwrs ac yn ennill y llws. And it's great to see, we talk about the community game all too often you see the international team here performing in front of 70,000. But it's great to see the community come together and Shanharan come down here in number to support the team. It's going to be one big party back at the clubhouse. It certainly will, you know. It, all finals today, we've seen an unbelievable turnout. You know, the attendance of over five, five and a half thousand says that. And it's a great day out, as you said, Oz. I think both call will live to fight another day i know they'd be disappointed but they could be super proud about where they've come from in the last few years to what they've achieved to get here van haren i'm really really pleased i got to mention gareth nicholas what a great rugby person and uh, particularly pleased for him uh, and what he's achieved he's done so much in the game and uh, his, his work with his coaching group at van haren has proved that they uh, he's building success again yeah, and a word to the referee as well for well, the refereeing party led by the referee spencer chase on their contribution to the game as well. And Gwyn Bowden there, presenting the medals. And 
Mikel and John, who's up in the commentary box for the second game, is down there somewhere as part of the presentation team with Kerry Frey, the trio. And it's going to be Porthkau who will step up first to receive their runners-up medals. Yeah, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow. But then again, if you are going to lose in a cup final, sometimes it's less painful to, to, to lose by a score like this than lose by one point, because you then think about what ifs and what mays and that single point that you could have got somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure they reflect, and at the end of it, they came up against a good opponent today who were clinical. There were errors in their game. I'm sure they're disappointed in that led to some of those scores. But I said earlier, you know, they could be super proud about what they've achieved. And this is the start of something else for Porth Call now. And they've, they've got uh, a good future ahead of them with the thriving club, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah, Porth Call coming up to receive their runners up medals. And just a, a word, just whilst we've got an opportunity. We must uh, congratulate the early winners as well in their respective cup finals. In the Division 5 competition, Sam Sisters beating Dinas Poes. Tona and Newport Saracens in such a close contest in Division 4, point separating them. Newport Saracens, the winners there. And then Cardiff Quinns taking the spoilers by 24 points to 21 against Blaina. And now the Division 2 winners Jan Haran beating the Greens of Portcaul. And Portcaul, of course, uh, can boast the fact that they have the current uh, Wales captain as uh, a former player in David Jenkins. They could have done with him today. <laughs> Certainly could. But these young lads, they played their hearts out. But they came up against a very competent, confident, well drilled Jan uh, Haran side. Hardly put a foot wrong. Yeah, the mullets back in fashion for the seniors as well. We've seen a few with the juniors. I only wish I could grow one. I'm expecting one next year, Chris. <laughs> it might be a struggle. <laughs> That's great respect shown there by uh, fourth call to Flanharen. A lot of these boys will obviously know each other well. Yeah, not too far from each other, really, are they? Distance-wise. Just a hop, skip, and a jump down the M4. And everyone, to a man, you could argue, man to man, they were the better team. You know, they had the, <laughs> the nudge on their opponent. And uh, one or two have lost their shorts somehow. I'm not sure how that happens. Was it a day? So here we are, Scott Jones about to receive the Division 2 Cup, which hopefully will be safely back in the trophy cabinet by the end of the evening. Just wondering what's going on. Is he asking for the champagne for the in the cup? I don't know. I think Gwyn was just finishing off a conversation with uh, the legend that is Bobby Newman, who's the scrum coach at Llanharen. There they go, Gwyn Bowden presenting the cup to Scott Jones. And here we go, it's all about to kick off here in the Principality. Sanharan 
the winners of the WRU Division 2 Cup Final. Son Gwerchada Adversal, Llan Haran, Pen Campwyr, Cupan Atlandai in the Rugby Cymru with a Dathli in the line. And here in Norse, celebrations will go long into the night. But let's have a look at the highlights of this Division 2 Cup Final.